biggest tournament South American FC has to offer. It's the Conobol E Libertadores 2024 Grand Finals. It's a pleasure to be here. Myself, Richard Buckley, joined by current FC pro player, Pablo George Popolis. I'm struggling to hear myself in here. It is so loud. Perhaps it's an incredible two days of action. What can people expect from home from this tournament? I mean, this is the biggest tournament in South America, and the top 16 players are here to battle for the eternal glory. And also, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to be qualifying. Top two is going to qualify to the FC Pro Championship, Richard. Absolutely. I can't wait to see what the next two days of action have got in store for us. You might have just seen down below there for you to get involved at home as well. All the social media will be flashing up throughout the next couple of days. Right now, you can see it, uh, Instagram, Twitch, and also YouTube. Get involved in those chats and let us know who you think will be taking eternal glory on Sunday evening. Well, if you're new to the Conobol E Libertadores, let me catch you up with what you might have missed. This is what you can expect over the next couple of days. This is the format for the tournament. As you can see, we're gonna be playing over two days. Let's have a look at that format right now. It's gonna be a day one of group stages with four teams in each group, A, B, C, and D, very simple. Top two go through, bottom two go out. And then we go on to the day two playoffs, quarterfinals, semifinals, and the grand final. It's not only eternal glory that they're playing for, there's some cold out cash on the line as well, perhaps. Yeah, there's a lot of cash on the line, and I mean, First place gets $35,000, Richard. Second, 25, third and fourth, 12,000, five and eight, 3,000, nine and 12, 1.5, and 13 and 16, 1K. And at the end of the day, the first and second have to have the eye on the FC Pro World Championship. Absolutely. This is something that they, these players are looking to, you know, keep their career standing and make it all the way there. And it's potentially the last chance that they're going to get to play at the FC Pro World Championships as well. Well, I said we've got two days of action, and this is how both days are going to take shape. On day one, it is the group stages. You can see the times there local to us, us here in Sao Paulo. Basically, in, what, 10 minutes' time, we're going to be having the first set of excited upper bracket that, semifinals. Very excited, Very excited. For that. You can see uh, the rest of the day as it unfolds. As we go into the Sunday, this is when it all gets just a little bit more serious because that's when the knockout bracket takes shape. The knockouts is just a different level, isn't it, Pabs? What can we expect? It is, it is. I mean, we're going to expect goals, celebration, tears for the players that are going home. And at the end of the day, everybody wants to be in Championship Sunday, Richard. Let's have a look at Championship Sunday. We can see what we can expect there. It's going to be the quarterfinals taking place first, simultaneously, and then on to the Saturday uh, and Sunday late evening. The semifinals and finals will be taking place individually. You can see it right there on your screen. Do the time conversion and uh, make sure that you join us for the 5.40 kickoff. Well, let's have a little look as well at the unbelievable partners and sponsors who make this Conobol e Libertadores tournament what it is, the biggest tournament in South America. Thank you to all the sponsors. You can see them down below for their continued support throughout the Conobol e Libertadores. And I know what you're thinking at home. How can I get involved? How can I have a little bit of something back for watching? Well, we do have live viewership rewards, as always, in all the major tournaments, and the Conobol Ilum Tadores is no different. Let's have a look at those live rewards right now and see what you can be getting at home. If you watch for 15 minutes, it's a team player's pack, and if you watch for 60 minutes, it's going to be a jumbo premium gold pack. As always, link your EA account to Twitch or YouTube to earn those rewards while watching the live stream. You've got your Twitch account linked. Yeah, I might be standing here with you, Richard, but I definitely have the Twitch chat open because at the end of the day, I want those packs. And who knows? You might get an R9. You might get, you know, Cafu. You, you, you might know. get a South American icon. Who knows? At the end of the day, those are the packs that we have, and they're definitely going to be rewarding. Absolutely. It's not only myself and Pabs who's going to be joining you over the course of the next two days to break down everything. We're going to head over to our commentators, Ryan Pessoa, Casey, and Brandon Smith. Thank you very much, guys. Welcome to Sao Paulo. We are here for the next two days of action, guiding you through all of the games. Of course, Casey Ryan Pessoa, myself, Brandon Smith, will be part of this team. I mean, guys, we're in Brazil. 
We are in Brazil. The weather is hot, the competition is going to be hot, and I'm here for it. And Ryan, don't lie, the last two days you've been laying by the pool. It's been like 30 <laughs> degrees here. <laughs> yeah, it's my first time in South America, no better place to be. And yeah, I can't wait to get started. Absolutely. Well, look, 16 players have made it to this stage in the tournament. Thousands signed up online. They've been through rigorous processes to get to this stage. There was a qualifier that took place at the end of last year with thousands of players. Then that got whittled down to a phase two tournament just a month or so ago. And now this is your 16 players. We'll kick it off first and foremost with Group A. There'll be names in this tournament that you will be aware of. And there'll be some new names in there as well. This is how Group A looks. Nathan SR in there, Greco, Zazinio and Ram so we have to turn our attention first and foremost to a name that we know first, Casey, and that is Azzinho, previous Foot Champions Cup winner, still hungry for an E-Limited Dolores. Yes, I'm excited to see him compete in this tournament. He's a veteran in the scene. We've been seeing him compete for a while, a while previously with Ducks, but now he's playing for his home club of Gremio. He was, he was talking to us earlier, and he's very, very excited to be home in Brazil, playing with his family here, and I think he's going to do well. Absolutely. Well, on the other side of that, there's another name in this group that we have to keep a close eye on. He used to play for SPQR in the EA Sports Cup. You may remember him from last year. Ryan Pessoa, Nathan SR, he's moved a couple of clubs. He's now with Netshoes Miners, yep. looking also to cause some havoc in this group. Yeah, absolutely. He's a seasoned professional, well known, of course, throughout Latin America and, of course, in Europe competing as well. Coming into this, he came through the winner's bracket in the qualification system. So he's technically unbeaten to this stage through the winner's bracket. So hopefully he can continue that form today. Yeah, he played in this tournament three years ago, was group stage then, looking to go one step further. Over to group B now, to our next four competitors in the Condobal E Libertadores. Our most veteran, I should say oldest player, which sounds crazy to say, Casey, 26 years of age is Resende. You've got Giuliano in that group as well. Ger Crack, the only Colombian here in the Condobal E Libertadores, and Gabriel PM. But Resende is the oldest player of the tournament. He's only 26. 26 is insane, but we do have 18 year olds competing as well. So he's been in this scene for quite a while, and I know that he's looking to crown himself again as a champion because he has won this competition before. He has, it was the first ever time this tournament run. He was an Xbox champion there. That was played online since then. This tournament has been to Paraguay, Buenos Aires, and now here in Sao Paulo. There's someone else in that group, Ryan, that does deserve a mention. Gabriel yep. PN, always in the conversation, but maybe a little bit too far away from some silverware. Could that change this weekend? Definitely could. Of course, he's a player that we've known throughout the years of, of competing. He's someone that scores a lot of goals. He's very forward. In terms of the way he plays anyway, he plays on the front, front foot, aiming to create a lot of chances. So yeah, hopefully for this weekend, we see more of the same. Yeah, well, that's Group C concluded there. 12 players in the way of the competition. Now there are four more to have a little look at here. As we said, the way it's going to work today, we'll go from 16 down to our final eight. Tomorrow, we'll be back for Championship Sunday. The craziest part is, last year's champion, Bashada, he's not even here. We'll speak more about that in a second. But first and foremost, Group D looks as it stands this way. They'll be in action in just a few hours time as Richard and Pamps was saying. You may rec recognize this young man, young of Tuzzy Esports. You may have seen him in the FC Pro Open playing against Anders Vergang. He's in this group, so is Edson uh, Fonseca and Dudu, a former runner-up in this competition. But we have to start off with Young, a player who is in fine form from South America, Casey. Fantastic for him. I really did enjoy watching him play in the FC Pro Open this year. He's a very attacking player, so we're going to see a lot of goals from him. And honestly, he's the most confident that I've ever seen him this year. Well, speaking of experienced players, maybe lesser experienced players, Ryan, every year in South America, there's always a new name from Brazil, Argentina, somewhere in South America, a new name appears. Baldo is, is that player. Yeah, there's a, there's a few names, of course, there's Edson as well in this group. Group C, a young player, one of the youngest players in this competition. And of course, he scores a lot of goals. He likes to, to create a lot of chances through skill moves. He's intricate in the box and he's not afraid to celebrate. Sally isn't indeed. He got himself into this competition on the last stage. For some reason, I thought we were in Group D. <laughs> we're in Group C. Sorry. There is still four more players. This is Group D. Uh, Young is in Group C. This is our final four players here in this year's competition. Uh, Sebastian Leone comes back again of Tuzzy Esports. Didn't used to play for Levante, in fact, in e La Liga. He's now back here in South America. Uh, Gubarz, Gubarzo, if I can get that out. And then Baldo <laughs> is the name that I was going to ask you about, Ryan. Yep. And another FC Pro Open name that we know is Faku Cohen. We'll come on to him a little bit later, but first and foremost, one of the other Argentinian players in this group, Casey, in Sebastian Leone. Yes, Sebe Leone is definitely a contender in this competition. One of five Tusi Esports players, so they are kind of rocking this entire competition and dominating, but I'm excited to see him. 
Okay. I don't know how many players Tuzzy Esports have got, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, Last time I checked, they're about 16. Yeah, um, they've got very I, did, I did ask them if they would sign me. They're going to let me know at the end of the weekend. <laughs> um, maybe you can get a <laughs> That's cheap. Maybe man. you can get a contract <laughs> as well. Um, someone else we need to turn our attention to in this group as well, of course, is Baldo, a new name in his debut season. Right? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's performed well. It's his debut season in the E-Libertadores, but last year ended up winning a Global Series qualifier in Latin America. Describes himself as very offensive. I haven't personally got to see too much of him. But yeah, hopefully I, he performs as well as he's described. Well, if there's a way to show yourself, Ryan, it's on this stage here. Top 16 in South America. There is so much pressure on this tournament because if you don't make top two, your season's done, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, their season could be done today, it could be done tomorrow, but I feel like today they're just focusing on the top two, win those two games, and then make it as easy as possible. As Casey said, it, it sounds easy. Win two games, Ryan, you're in the top eight. Win yep. another two games, you're in, the, you're in the World Championships. Yeah, literally, as you said, it's just, it, it's in touching distance, but yet it's so close, but yet so far. You obviously, obviously have to overcome a lot of top competitors in Latin America, but all these players, they'll be backing in themselves, they'll be believing they can do it. And yeah, let's see. Well, let's have a look at the fixtures then. Kicking off play here today in Sao Paulo in terms of our matchups that are coming your way. Group A fixtures will look as it stands here. It's an interesting group stage, this one, Casey, because it's not a case of everyone plays everyone. Well, they could. It's more of a bracket. The group's been broken down into a bracket, hasn't it? It is a bracket. So we only have four people in each group. And if you lose twice, you're out. But it starts off with one person in the upper great upper bracket going against someone in the lower bracket from the previous qualifier. So the first round, I do think that there might be a little bit of a difference in terms of the score lines, but as soon as we get into that second one, that's where it gets a bit mixy. Well, let's have a look now at the Group A matchups that are coming your way uh, very soon indeed in the next five minutes or so. The way this has been matched up is you've got Nathan SR who came through the upper bracket in the qualification. He takes on Garico 10. Uh, in his first match. And then Cezinho, as we know, the seasoned veteran, takes on Rampazzo. Whoever wins in both of those games will be one win away from qualification into tomorrow's Championship Sunday. Over in Group B, the same story follows there. All of these games will be taking place at the same time. We'll be jumping around the matches. Resende against Giuliano, another Argentinian name. And then Gurkrak from Colombia up against Gabriel PN. For Gurkrak, what an opportunity, Ryan. Only yep. Colombian in this tournament. We saw a Chilean player last year in Darkadash. He was unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's always a great tournament to be able to just propel yourself into greatness. We've seen a lot of players in South America. This has sort of been like a springboard to further success. We've seen with Piet Zinn, Resende, Matias Bonanno, who's won the Libertadores years before as well. So yeah, this could be a great event for him. And it must be hard as well, Casey, to get in front of so many Brazilians. You look at that bracket, out of a thousand Brazilian players, there's about 900. <laughs> 85 of them? Yeah. Right, I mean, at that point, they're playing for their country in a different country. And so this entire crowd here, there's so many people here. The majority of them are probably rooting for the Brazilians. Absolutely. Look, this is the fourth time this tournament's taken place. Many years ago, it started online with an Xbox, of course, and a PlayStation champion. And since then, it's been all over South America, this tournament, from Paraguay to Argentina. Now it's in Brazil for the first ever time. And this lot in this room are loving it. Um, I mean, look, we're, we're ready to go. The matches have been previewed. We've looked at all the 16 players in the group. We're going to go to a quick video to explain what could be coming up today here at the Condor Ball E Libertadores. You're not going to want to miss this. Significa para mim jogar na Comebol Libertadores um, um sonho realizado. Sempre foi meu sonho desde que eu comecei a jogar, jogar esse campeonato e vou fazer de tudo para sair com a taça. Para mim jogar na Comebol e Libertadores é um grande sonho, porque já competi em várias competições, mas agora é, competir presencialmente com os melhores da região e poder representar um time que é tão forte nessa é, competição como o Grêmio é um grande orgulho para mim. É, a diferença é muito grande, porque jogando em casa você está ali só você, é, um presencial é uma outra história, você Tem ali a torcida, as pessoas torcendo pra, por você, acompanhando, tanto de casa como presencial. Então é um sentimento indescritível. Não, não me sinto mais pressionado, mas eu acredito que seja mais difícil você jogar um presencial do que na sua casa. Eu acredito que é especial sim jogar, principalmente como em Boa Libertadores. Então, para todos os brasileiros ou é, os players de outros países aqui da América do Sul, vai ser algo especial e todo mundo já tá bastante focado ainda. Para lidar com essa pressão, é, eu acho que é jogando todo dia, tá sempre no meu mais alto nível, que na hora, no momento, eu vou tentar replicar o que eu faço no treino. 
Hace mucho no gana un argentino y creo que ya viene siendo hora que gane un argentino. Salir campeón de la Comebol y Libertadores en Brasil siendo argentino sería algo único. Los deportes para mí eh, son hiper importantes porque viví gran parte de mi vida adulta eh, ya jugando competitivamente. Me llevaron a conocer varios lugares, a competir contra mucha gente y competir contra mis ídolos eh, dentro del juego también. Eu acredito que o maior sonho de todo jogador de UFC profissional é ser campeão mundial, mas para você chegar lá você tem que estar tá focado nas competições anteriores, como a Comebol Libertadores. O jogo é a mentalidade, ter uma boa mentalidade, não, é, não desesperar, -se. estar tranquilo, melhor dito, para poder levantar essa beleza que está aí atrás. para o mundo, para o Brasil, eu em português, Richard em inglês comentando com a rapaziada lá, tá todo mundo, Richard, everyone like is hype, Brazil is loud. It certainly is, I don't have a clue what you just said, but it sounded great. Um, it's a pleasure being here, it's a privilege being in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, and such an amazing tournament, I simply cannot wait to get this started and we're right around the corner. É, a gente já vai começar, estamos prestes a trazer os jogadores. Tá todo mundo pronto aqui? Torcida de PN, torcida de Yang, torcida de Resende. It looks like the fans are ready. I'm ready. I'm ready as well. Should we, should we get this going? Yeah, let's get it going. Que venham então os nossos jogadores, as estrelas do final de semana. Chegando com Nathan Gerick para a primeira partida. Up next, Rampazzo versus Zizinho. Temos também o duelo de Rezende e Juliano. Aqui é confronto internacional. And your featured matchup of groups A and B: Gekra versus Gabriel Pien. Jogadores vão se cumprimentando, tá todo mundo pronto. A galera na torcida animada. Teremos Resende, teremos Juliano. PN vai assumir o palco principal. Ó, oh, não é por nada não, mas ganhou, tá? Aqui, ó, na minha versão aqui, o PN já ganhou. O argentino saiu fora, então acho que o Brasil já levou. Estamos prontos, Juliano tá voltando. Estamos prontos, jogadores preparados. Nós estamos preparados. I guess we done. Let's say the We're ready. Case. Let's head on over to the commentators for both the English and Portuguese stream. É isso aí, vamos lá com o Os gentlemen, yes, it is getting very, very loud here in São Paulo. <laughs> yeah. And it's getting very, very hot. Um, what, a, what a welcome to this incredible tournament here in the heart of South America. These fans. I can't explain, the room's only half full at the moment. If this room is completely full tomorrow, we've got a big problem. Yeah, honestly, they're loud, they're passionate. I love the celebrations as well of the players when they're walking out. I can't wait to see players when they score. We've, it's all, we've be... always known it's about a South American yeah. run. The players get so loud yeah. when they are scoring goals for fun. As we said, we've got our first round of fixtures coming up in a second from Group A and Group B. Uh, we'll be guiding you all through the action today. Myself, Brian Swift and Ryan Pessoa will be fixing it and changing the commentary desk across the next two days. I think we're ready to jump into our main featured matchup. It's going to be yep. Gabriel Pien against Ger Crack. I mean, look, this is interesting because you've got someone playing in their first ever yep. Con the Ball e Libertadores from Colombia in Ger Crack against Gabriel Pien, who, yeah, he might not have a trophy or two in, in his 
resume in the, in the last number of years, but this man's been on the block since 2019. Yeah, he's, he's been, been at Foot Champions Cups. Yep. He's been at so many tournaments and he's traveled around the world doing this as a career. Exactly. Do you know what I found a bit interesting is something he said earlier is that he feels as if he prefers playing at home. And I think obviously that could come down to the nerves perhaps of playing in person. Of course, your opponent sitting directly opposite you, the crowd are behind you, cameras, you're on stage. Obviously that plays a factor as well. For Gurkrak, he said he wants to remain calm. He's 18 years old, joint youngest in this competition. The only representative from Colombia. The new kid on the block. Came through the winner's bracket as well to qualify. So he's unbeaten in the knockout stages. He's got nothing to lose, really. If we're being honest, Ryan, he's, he's got no pressure on his shoulders. It's his first time he's been to this tournament. And as we saw last year, Bishada, he was new to the tournament. Exactly. Completely new to the con the ball, Elibertadores. And he went and won the whole thing. On the other side of things, 23 years of age of Tuzzy Esports. It is Gabriel Pien. Top four in the Foot Champions Cup. That came a couple of seasons ago now. Yep. But still, he has been here, there, and everywhere in terms of this competitive infrastructure. He was actually a couple of games away from the World Championships last year. Actually made the playoffs yep. in London. We have got some squad building requirements that we have to let you know at home, Matt. You keen Ultimate Team fans will be keen to know what requirements we are following here out in South America? Well, the good news is, Ryan, there's no budget. You can use any player you want yep. within a certain quantity because when it comes to icons, you can't use any icon nation, can you? No, the icons are only allowed to be from Latin America. Of course, that includes Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, you know, the list from South American countries. All other players can be from any other country. Competitors may use loan items in their squad and they are prohibited from using five and three at the back formations, which for me, I think that's a great thing, using full back or full defenders, as to say, in your back line. I mean, it stops the... Uh, the maybe the, maybe, maybe the more boring games. Yeah, and we know with, with <laughs> the outpouring of emotions from South American players, they like to score goals, they like to go forward, they like to be skillful. So I think the four defenders could help that as well. Absolutely, well, I think we are ready to, near enough to get into our first game here. And we are loading into it right now. This is the 2024 competition here in South America. Con the ball, Libertadores is officially underway. And we are kicking off things here in Group B. Group A also underway. And one thing that has changed also from last year, Ryan, is the format. It is nine minute half, single legged matches. There is not two oh, legs as maybe pros have been used to in previous years, but the good news is they've had quite a lot of time to get used to this new format. Yeah, they've had the, the majority of the season so far to adapt to nine minute halves. Of course, as you mentioned, previously being used to six minute half, best of two, this will be played across one leg of FC 24, nine minute halves. Interesting to see, you see Zergzi lining up there for Gabriel Pien. He pushes forward. Looking for his first chance in the game. Oh, no, and will be a familiar face that will be scoring quite a few goals across the next 48 hours here in Sao Paulo. Alex Mateus, couple of step overs, finds Bruno Fernandes, it's clever, back to 1-9, it will fall again! Oh. Five minutes in, we are getting a small flavour and a taste of what South American FC24 offers. I remember it last year in Buenos Aires, Ryan. It was just attack, 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 attack. Some of the score lines will be remarkable this weekend. I think it's the best way to, to obviously view FC24. A play, it's in behind, it's on side. Here's Hansen now, Van Dijk is left in no man's land! Six minutes in! He said it was a new kid on the block. He does leap by goal to Neil Gurkrak from Colombia. End to end game of FC24 this is. <laughs> yeah. I think we're what, seven minutes in, we've seen three attacks so far. Decisive from Gurkrak. In on goal there, doesn't hesitate. Doesn't question himself. Green times it across goal and he takes the one goal lead. 18 years of age as well. One of our joint youngest competitors in this competition. He's only been able to compete for the last couple of years. What a finish it was. You can see both sides of the POV here. One man very disappointed with that. If there was any nerves, perfect way to settle them. We will do our best to just break down a handful of these ultimate teams for you from home. There's Haaland in the box. You expect to see a lot yeah, of him. That's the one. Good block there. Last ditch. It's interesting to see Gabriel Pien. Looks as if he's playing a 4-3-2-1. His right back is Joshua Zerxi from Bologna. Six foot four, I believe. Aerial plus play style, power shot play style, I forgot, but he's gonna be used. Hello, Haaland! I mean, 
It didn't take long, did it, Ryan? <laughs> Quick for what? Erling Haaland to make his mark here in the Condable E Libertadores. If you're a keen Ottoman team player at home, you will know the havoc that this man has been causing ever since he got that team of the year item. Yep. His price is risen. He's caused nightmares for so many of us, even at a casual level. At the near post, 10 minutes in, we're all square at 1-1. Even with the recent patches and changes, he's still going to cause problems, Ryan, that Haaland. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like that decision was, was sort of made clear when that crack committed the goalkeeper from the corner to try and anticipate a cross falling into the keeper's arms. But it's fallen to that man, Erling Haaland. And as you mentioned, the, the meta, of course, playing the, the likes of Erling Haaland, just the players that have aerial plus play style, the, the height in game. It's very, very effective. Another corner. This time, watch out for... Well, it's Haaland on Haaland. I think that's the only way you can defend it. I think a lot of people are still looking for the, uh, yeah, if the defender. Back post, Haaland was... the back post. Yeah. Oh, my! I was going to say, if he goes back post, I feel like that's a guaranteed goal. Take note if you're watching from home. Erling Haaland, two goals here about... Three in game minutes, both from a corner. You just left <laughs> sat there, Ryan, thinking, how do I stop this man? You can't really guard against it. It's in quick succession, two corners. We're not even 15 minutes in and we've seen three goals. Got crack nose, you can see the shake of his head. There is genuinely nothing you can do to stop that. Well, I mean, you mentioned the right back choice for Gabriel Pien. That's his hopes of doing something to stop. Yes, but of course, but for Gokrak's position here, the other side, the right back he's chosen is on a um, body, the team of the year item in game. She's very small compared to Erling Haaland. So I think that's a, a clear mismatch that I think Gabriel would, would try his best to play into. But on the other side of that, Ryan, she's unbelievable going forward, of isn't course. she? It's such yeah. a it's a trade-off, isn't it? Is Xerxy. Gabriel PN's idea of trying to stop that and in Haaland aerial dominance. Falls back to Bruno Fernandes is a cheeky chip. Forward, Alfonso Davies, right place, right time. To get in the way, and I can confirm that's a look across. All four matches have now kicked off in Group A and Group B. We'll keep you up to date as soon as we can with everything that's happening, especially in recent days, as Enio's matches. Pace from Mbappe. You know where he's looking. Just tries to hold up that attack, Bellingham. Into Haaland, still, falls back to Hansen, oh no, and will reverse Elastico his way around, it's some massive save from Alisson. <laughs> the crowd here supporting Gabriel Pien genuinely celebrate that block, or that save, sorry, as much as they did the goal. There Hernandez, back to R9, who's yet to score his first goal! <laughs> Mbappe happy to arrive though. And they are absolutely loving it. Remember, two wins is all you need. Two wins and you will be going through to Championship Sunday tomorrow in a top eight. And you'll just be two games away from an FC Pro Open World Championship sport, which only a handful of players have already through their sport. And of course, the four from the FC Pro Open, the two from the recent EMLS Cup that took place. These will be the next two players from South America joining that roster of talent, which we'll continue to build over the next couple of months and weeks as more leagues conclude from around the world. Here's our nine looking for a goal back. <laughs> wow. Five goals, Ryan Pessoa, <laughs> in the first 45 minutes. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I was looking at all of the score lines from the qualification. You're looking at nine sevens, 11 fives. 14 8, 15 7, 12 8. <laughs> it's just... One thing that we know in Brazil, they don't really like keeping clean sheets. Yeah. It's just not in their DNA, is yeah, it? Yeah, there was actually a, a form sent out to the players on how would they describe their play style offensive or defensive? 14 out of the 16 described it as offensive, and it's, it's clear to see they attack with impetus, they attack with the means to go and score as many goals as possible. That goal, though, stemmed from the player look from Gurkrak with R9, played it into space or ran into space, then played the pass. And, Brian, you see the contrast in, in celebrations from the crowd, of course. Gabriel being Brazilian in his home country, they're cracked from Colombia, so he's playing against the crowd as well as his opponent as well.
Got a couple of updates I can see just to the side of me. Zazinho 2 1 down against Rampazzo. Resende leads by a goal to nil in his game. And Nathan SR leads by a goal to nil over in his matchup as well. We could be on for an equaliser here already. Harlow, one more into Bellingham. Oh, it it. Still could be a lot of. Oh, oh it's brilliant! Oh. From the Colombian! Woo. See ya. Oh my god. And those Brazilian Ooh. fans suddenly have all just sat down and they've not got much to say. <laughs> oh my goodness. That roulette is unbelievable. Unbelievable. A uh, crack. Welcome to the FC Pro Seed, my friend. His first big breakout tournament on the international stage. There is no better place to showcase your craft and everything that you've been working on to get to this point. It's the step over, the speed boost you get with Mbappe. Surely not, 4-3. Yeah. As we said with the score restrictions, you are allowed to use South American icons in the team. Other than that, you're allowed to use any other player that you choose. Hence why you are seeing teams just fill, or four, I should say, of Team of the Year players. There'll be a couple of small changes in there. For example, Company does feature his hero. In-game item Look comes on the, the side of Gerkrak, who we'll have to try and stop this one. Lofted this towards it. Erling Haaland in the air, oh which... Oh, my goodness. Wow. On a battle, just... She uh, fought there, to be fair. She, she did enough just to stop him. I think that's the opportunities you're going to be watching. There's the triggered runs, the ball's over the top in behind just to catch a defensive line off guard and then of course the back post crosses to Erling Haaland a, a common theme I'm expecting to see throughout this weekend you can see Zerti again but say has fancied a shot from 30 plus yards was always asking a lot I think she's another option the, the thing about FC 24 is that you of course have to watch the, the player locks if people play a lock and they could potentially cancel it you have to watch um, for Travellers not so much as before the patch but Travellers are still somewhat effective if you time it we've got a goal update though Brandon Rampazzo against Zazino. It was a penalty that fell the way of Rampazzo down the middle. 3 1. The player from the lower bracket, Rampazzo. He's on a rampage against Zazino, making life difficult for Great him. Ball. We're back into this game now, live now. Here's Gabriel PM with De Bruyne looking for a four for to save for Ease. Company just about does enough. It falls back to Haaland. R9 happy to juggle it Ooh. around the box, still in possession. A nice step over exit from Erlen Haaland. A couple of ball rolls in there. Wins a corner where uh -oh. Gabriel Pian has it. been deadly. <laughs> yeah. Could it be three out of three? He hasn't committed the goalkeeper as far as he did last time. Oh, he's there. Hansen does enough. Mbappe on the volley. The ball oh. over the top again. Here we go. There it is. There's Mbappe. Lloris takes it out of the hands of the goalkeeper. Well, some live scores coming your way right now. Rampazzo 3 1. I pick up against Zazinio. Sorry. Resende. The old guard leads by two goals to nil in his matchup against Giuliano from Argentina. Nathan SR still in the lead. One goal to nil. It's Eric. His first ever on the ball. E Libertadores. This is half time in our feature matchup. 3 3 is the scoreline from our Group B matchup. I mean, Ryan, your first time in South America for <laughs> yeah. a tournament. Are you enjoying yourself? Yeah, goals galore so far. We've seen six in the first half. Heading across to our game going on, well, another game going on, sorry, in Group A. How was this only in the 30th minute? Yeah. Now look at the score. Zezinho, Rampazzo, four goals scored in the first 30. Rampazzo up, three goals to one. We saw the most recent penalty. Rampazzo on the attack as well. What can you do here? Haaland flicks it on. And as we are in our second half in our feature matchup, we're happy to introduce someone else into the commentary booth. Pabs, welcome. How How's everything? What a game, right? What a first game that we had. Yep. Only halfway as well. It's incredible. I mean, we expect a defensive play style, Pabs. We've had much more than that. I'm going to be interested to see what the goal tally is by the end of play today because we've just seen goals going in everywhere.
It is Eric now looking for an equaliser in this game. It was early Harland. Harland. Which is surprising, he didn't actually use his head for a change early in Harland. It was something that we're not used to seeing. Of course, if you're not familiar with Georges Papakopoulos in the commentary booth, current EMLS player with LAFC, you've been in and amongst the American top flight league for quite a period of time now, Pab. It's obviously this game and this level of competition that we're seeing across all the virtual leagues have such high stakes on them as Resenda looks for a third. Oh, oh my, how's oh, that got in? He's done it. That's the it. Set the lack of the That's the, the cancel shot. I mean, it's all these players, all of these players have the qualities and the techniques of every, you know, at the end of the day, they are looking to maximize the shot. And he needed to do the croqueta shot because he did not have an angle. And he's finished it. Well, the question I wanted to ask you before Resendo rudely interrupted me with a, with a third goal of that game. How hard is it right now in, in these competitions with so, I guess, little spots to the World Championships? We know it's the big event of the year. They have to be split around the world because we can't give everyone a spot there. How much pressure is on these players? How was it in America? I mean, in America, you only have Great one competition to be able to make it to the biggest stage in the FC24 ecosystem, and that's the EMLS Cup where we saw Hafonso of New England Revolutions and K1 John from Inter Miami. I was very happy about Inter Miami, to be honest with you, Brandon. I've, I'm, as an ex Inter Miami, I reached the quarterfinals, but K1 John has done the impossible and reached the final and the FC Pro Open spot. Back to our main featured matchup now. 3 3 is the scoreline here. The different group stage play here. It's not the case of a round-robin group, it's a, a bracket within your group stage. Win two games and you will be going through to tomorrow's championship Sunday. Here's Gurkrak. I saw you jump off your chair pubs when Gurkrak scored that roulette goal. Um, he's got nothing to lose really, has he? It's his first time he's been in this tournament, 18 years of age. This is the biggest event he has ever been to. It could either go one or two ways. He could be super nervous. I don't know what Allison's doing there, punching that one away, or he can just relish the opportunity in front of him. He has nothing to lose, Brandon, and everything to win. And to be to be fair, I'm, I'm actually very familiar with Gay Crack. In the, you know, I live in Miami, and I've actually played against him in rivals. And seeing this player in this first land event, it's something that at the end of the day, you know, it makes you it makes you proud of this player because of all the trajectory that he's had. And to be fair, he went down three-one. He's probably the underdog, and now the game is three-three. Looking at Hansen on his on his team, Ryan, it's something that we're not going to see often. Yeah, exactly. I think the, the player selections, of course, with the squad the squad building restrictions, I think the common theme you'll see amongst a lot of the squads, Arno and Ronaldo with the icon from Latin America, but... Speaking of Arno, edge of the box, finds Bruno Fernandes. I don't think he's going to fancy his chances from that far out. Mbappe, an interesting skill, but as you were saying, Ryan. Yeah, I think there's a, a common theme amongst the squads. You'll see the likes of Mbappe almost a guarantee, or should be a guarantee in all the squads. Erling Haaland as well. I think perhaps maybe you can agree with me. The question was sort of on the personnel choice we're coming at fullback. It will come at fullbacks and at centre backs. Yeah. Um, definitely the midfield is definitely a lock between Jude Valleham team of the year, the De Bruyne and Putellas. Putellas, yeah. yeah, I mean, Putellas provides you absolutely everything and she's very skilly in the ball. And, and, and at the end of the day, these players are looking to be one step ahead of their opponent. And Alexis is basically the person that would be able to do it in the midfield for you. Well, we heard some talk about Jude Bellingham maybe as a fullback. We were actually talking to Resende. Oh, my goodness. There's a mistake. Where, where have we gone? I don't know what's happened. We're seeing both games on screen. Gurkrak has just scored. Gerkrak. A massive goal on Resende. We did see that goal live. It's 3 nil up in his game. Gurkrak. That was a horror mistake. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. I think that he was trying to switch the ball yes, from yeah, outside yeah. back to outside back. Yeah. And then Gurkrak just, you know. At the end of the day, he's basically able to get the ball and finish the second pass. Yeah, we're going to be able to see a replay of it. I don't know if he put enough power in the switch of play with a lofted pass. I'd love to see it again just to make sure. But that is a, the comeback complete as it stands from Gurkrak. Three goals in a row without response. And the studio has gone quiet. Silent. 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 I'm pretty sure there's not a single Colombian fan in the room. There's, there's one. I see one there's standing one. up every time. I think every it might be a, a relative or a friend of, of Gurkrak who's joined him. But it must be so hard, perhaps, to play in that atmosphere. And as we see it now, Jude Bellingham right back for Gabriel Pien. It's like he could hear us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it could be a commentator curse. However, Jude Bellingham a right back. He is the complete player. He could win the ball over the head against Haaland. I don't know if he's going to win 10 out of 10, 
but he might win five out of ten, and th that five out of ten might be the one that, you know, at the end of the day will be a clear and you'll have possession. And you're going into such a pressure cook here if you're Gabriel PM, Ryan, because you were playing Elimination FC24. If you lose this game, you lose yep. again, your it's season's done. Exactly, absolutely. I think I've been impressed with the way Gurkak started this second half. He still kept the initiative to go forward and, and try and keep possession in the, the final third offside oh track. Oh, my God. Just, if he passes the ball, he's in. Holland! Wow. He's oh, done it. Oh. Look at him, the celebration. He has to stick and yep. post. Every time he scores, another person jumps up as well. I think he's slowly building a little bit of a entourage here in Sao Paulo. 5-3, Gurkrak leads. That offside trap, that is a crucial mistake. That's two mistakes in a row. That's two mistakes by Gabriel Pierre and Gurkrak was able to capitalize on every single spot. I mean, that's that, that just stats work, Ryan, yeah. right? That's just stats work. You gotta pass it, you gotta square it, and you gotta tap it. Of course, yeah. And I think when you if you offside track with the likes of Mbappe on the edge of your defensive line, all it takes is just a turn and a step over into space. The quick step play style is just Mbappe with his speed boost this year is, is near enough impossible to stop. However, we do have a 5-3 score, but it is minute 70 in-game of FC24. There is a ton of time for Gabriel Pien to come back. And look at the studio giving Gabriel Pien the support that he needs to try to come back. Yeah. He needs as much support as he can get now. Across our other games very quickly, Resende. He might not be on the main broadcast, but he's going about business as he wishes to. He does lead by three goals. Now, he could be one win away from another championship Sunday. He's been in quite a few in his 26 years of competition. Nathan SR still leads Garrick by a goal to nil. Uh, and Zazinho, so maybe surprisingly, some could say, 3-1 down that against Rampazzo. Still trailing 3-1. Wow. That one is in the second half now. We might have a, you know, a big contender of the competition going into the lower bracket with Zazinho going down. Well, we mentioned that Nathan SR is leading by a goal to nil, Ryan. This is how he went up by a goal to nil. If we can play the replay now, 50 minutes into this one, Bellingham. As he's done it, Gabriel Pien has, has scored the ball. Every time we go and away. Every time, <laughs> every time we leave the game. It was a, that's a weird one. Again, I'm interested to see the replay. It looked like Mbappe was off balance on his left and manages to and find the corner. he's finished it. That's well, why Mbappe has to be in the squads for me. I think he's a cert. Him and R9 and Haaland, I think those three going forward, locks. Well, Gerd Craig might have something to say, Ryan. He has Hansen up top. Yep. Which is the player that he doesn't have? Because he, he has Haaland, R9, Hansen, and Mbappe. He yeah. plays with two midfielders, De Bruyne and Jude. So he's playing kind of like a 4-4-2 formation right now. Well, he knows the pressure that's on this game as well, that he has to go through and win it. Look at Haaland at the back post. That goal will certainly oh, give it him some wow. life. Could be in for a 5-5. It's defended well by Vincent tackle. Company. A lot more space opening up because of the the pushing forward from Gabriel, but Pab, you played this year, in these moments in nine minute halves, you don't necessarily, in my opinion, don't need to go guns blazing straight away. You, you have time to, to build up your attacks. Nine minute halves make it a lot, I will give you a lot more time, sorry, to get back into the game as that attack comes to a close. Yeah, 100% Ryan. I mean, at the end of the day last year, you know, you were looking at minute 70, you might be putting pressure after possession loss. You yep. might be putting pressure after heavy touch. Now, minute 70, you still have a ton of time. Yep. Players might now trigger the press whenever they're one goal down, two goals down, minute 80, Was and they still on? have a ton oh, of time. Oh, that is... Here, the cue, the pass for Gabriel Pien, here we go. Yep. This is the pass that, you know, he might be looking into constant pressure. He might be looking into pressure after heavy touch. He, nah, he needs to push up the lines because Gary Craig, at the end of the day, he's going to try to keep the ball, switch it from outside to outside, and then, well, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. He just has to try and manage these moments in the match now, doesn't he? He's in his final 15 minutes. What a springboard this would be for him. It'd be one win away. Ooh. But he has from to be very play, careful with here this, comes Brandon. the pressure. It will come straight back at him now. 5 4 he leads. Great Gabriel Pien has That's different ideas. Step. Defended well. Look at the second base. Second I mean, post. Haaland. Mbappe to Haaland needs to up in the play locks there. The goalkeeper's just been teased out to try and cause it. a yeah. problem, and he's just done enough. This is the nerves. This is the nerves, Brandon. First land event here for Gary Crack. He, he's not been in this position before, and he had to square to Haaland, and he's not done it because he thinks that, you know, he has to keep the exactly. ball. He yeah. had to keep the ball. It's minute 80 still. He could have gone for a goal there and gotten a two goal cushion. Look at this. I mean, you guys are able to hear the studio here. We might have had a little... Just just the pause, just yeah, the pause just a between pause. the two players. The pause that he needed, Gabriel Pian needed that pass. I'll tell you what, we could be on for a comeback for Zazinho. Zazinho 
is only 3-2 down now. I think we could be going to his game live now. Yes, we are. 25 minutes away. What a ball. From a result ball here is Azidio. Trying to get things going. Into a pause menu, we shall go again. We won't show that at home to give away any tactics or lineups of these players. And back over here, we shall go. This is live now. Zazinho might be trailing, but another familiar name in Brazil, Resende, who uh, has actually got his teammate commentating on him this weekend. PH in is here in <laughs> Sao Paulo. Yep. He's part of the Portuguese broadcast. Someone who else has also won this tournament before is Resende. He's had that experience of lifting this trophy. You know what's a funny statement here, Brandon? Last year, Resende was commentating on he the was. Portuguese broadcast <laughs> yeah. with PHZ in playing, yep. and now PHZ is commentating when Resende is playing. And I actually spoke with, with Piet Zin, and he, and he told me that there's a couple players that could give a run for the Resendez money here. Oh, that's and he's done it. It's Mbappe, great save wow, from Alisson. He needs Into something, and he needs something quick here. Balls will go now. As soon as we can, we're going to jump out to our featured matchup, which looks like it's just about come out of its pause now. There is only a couple of in-game minutes left in this one. Gerkrak against Gabriel Pien. What a ball. Last eight minutes. Gerkrak can find another one. He is going to be on his way to an upper bracket final in his group. As we see the introduction of 92 Fairland Mendy as right back. Big up for Mendy right there. Look yep. at that. Massive win on Ter Hernandez, who is trying to get forward. He has to control the pace here. He needs yep. to stay in the corner, maybe get an open spot. He'll take that. That's He'll take that all day. Wins another corner. If he had a little bit of the skills that Gabriel Pien had in the corners to score the two goals, the first two goals, he could have gone for it. But however, it's minute 84, one goal up, he has to go back and keep possession. He cannot make mistakes here. Travello! And he's done it! Wow. <laughs> he didn't even need to Look time it, Green! Celebration. Wow. We said another goal would be very much welcome just to give him a two-goal cushion. <laughs> Gerkrak. We've seen Travellas go in this year. Not so much after the patch. They especially, said that it was bad. Yeah, not so much, <laughs> especially not because that wasn't green time. I did not genuinely expect that to go in. That is a, a key goal and all important moment in the game for Gerkak. It would take a monumental effort and collapse. Gabriel Pien had to move the keeper there to be able to stop that. And I believe he did not. Yeah. Because he did not think that Gary Craig was actually going to go for the Traveller there. Well, there could be more to unfold in this game as Gabriel Pien will throw everything forward. Last four minutes. Plus additional time, and Mbappe will remain onside. onside. Oh, it's no. off, it's off. He's offside. That's a key moment there. Yeah, Craig might be three in-game minutes of FC24 oh. away from one step closer to eternal glory, Brandon. Another name leading on from the likes of Bashada last year. We must say the defending champion isn't here. What's more interesting as well is out of the 16 players that are in this competition, of course, only Resende has been a previous winner in this tournament. There is an unbelievable chance that we will be seeing a new name on the trophy. Well, Pamps, we're going to let you go. You're going to go and get an interview with one of our winners, I believe. Thank you, thank you. I'll be back, guys. Discipline here from Gerka. He knows he doesn't need to go forward. The game is more or less complete. He secures himself around in a spot in the upper bracket final of this group stage. Of course, as you mentioned, the group isn't played as a traditional group format. It's played as a sort of a knockout between the four players in each group. And he's now one win away. Arland. Arland. That will do us. What a result. What a, a welcome. What an introduction to the FC Pro scene. Gerkrak. After going down so early as well, Ryan. What a result. What yeah. a game. His shoulders mental fortitude is about back, especially conceding from two corners in quick succession. And the energy in Sao Paulo is immense. The only Colombian in the competition finding his first win there. It was the first goal as well. This was the one that put Gerkrak in the lead. And this was the response from Gabriel Pien from the corner, running with Haaland at the near post, the header into a an open net, and this is a very similar situation. Haaland from the corner to put Gabriel 2-1 in the lead. He then responded again to make it 3-1. And that was a sensational goal, Brandon, there from Gerkrak. That sort of shifted the whole game. It gave him a lot of confidence to go forward.
and the goals just kept on coming in that game. Full-time result there, if we can. Let's see if we can jump somewhere else, because I know there's a couple of other games that haven't concluded as of yet. We know Resende was cruising his way through to an upper bracket final in his group stage in the same group, which he will actually be playing against Gurkrak yep. if it stays like that. Resende against Gurkrak could be on the card. So before that, there's other matches to conclude in Group oh, A. Nathan SR passing. was one the up. Now he's 2-1 up against Ger 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 Jericho. Yeah, Gerdic, throughout the online process to get here, throughout the knockout stages, he's actually the top goal scorer amongst all the players involved. He's, only, of course, only scored one goal in this game, so it's very unlike him, but there's still 10 minutes left to be played as Nathan pushes forward. The experience, of course, does favour Nathan. Oh, great ball. So, oh, my oh penalty! Oh, wow. And this is where it could all go down here. Nathan has sort of a golden opportunity to find a two-goal cushion. Up steps Alexa Pateas. 3-1. Net shoes Miners pro player will lead as he looks to cruise his way through to an upper bracket matchup in Group A. It's one of those, Ryan, isn't it? Silly mistake to give away, whether you're meant to press the button or not. But the animation just didn't go your way. Now you're two goals down, and Nathan SR, it's just all about game management. Yeah, exactly. He's had the experience across the years to know how to see out games like this, but we've mentioned previously, you still have to echo the statement of nine-minute halves. We've still got a little bit left to be played. He has to be remaining focused to try and defend the kickoff and the quick response from Garrick. And if he manages to retrieve possession and just be calm and composed, I see him seeing out this game. Well, the other 18-year-old in the tournament is Garrick. Might be on his way down to the lower side of the bracket, but regardless of it, we still remain in this group. Just eight in-game minutes left. De Bruyne, Mateus, Mbappe intercepted eventually by a fellow French Look national at the team, Mateo well. Hernandez. Oh, big mistake. And Nathan he can, capitalized. He can conclude, now. conclude the game oh, now, Harlan. Oh my goodness, what has just happened there? Bit too heavy on the touch, I think. That's another massive win by Mbappe. Potentially a three on two hit. Happy to take minutes out of the game. That's the mature performance we are seeing from Nathan SR. He doesn't need to score again. Just needs to keep oh, possession. Harlan! Oh my goodness, it's a shocking mistake. But an even worse miss. Should wow. have been punished. To the run. Jude Bellingham in right back. Haaland in the box there. If you can whip it. Haaland. Haaland. Game on. Well, Haaland misses an absolute gift down one end. And for Jerick. Suddenly. He finds himself back. In this tie, potentially. To the pause menu, we shall go. Last change is being made. As we look across the other matches, and they are still all live right now. Rampazo against Azidi, and that one's still playing. Resendo. Just has to keep possession here. Easier said than done. You can see the pressing. Two minutes added on. You're playing in no man's land here. You've got to be brave and you've got to make the right decisions. Oh, it's a great Oh, wow. Bellingham's out of position. R9's in so much space. Does he need to score again? He'll just look to take all the time that he needs. He can't lose it here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Get it past the halfway line. The attack will play. Look at the run here from Mbappe. If you can see. He's, he's off. This could be last minute drama. If this is forward. perfect, Ronaldinho, the fellow Brazilian himself, oh falls back to Mbappe. It's so kind that no, it's it fell back. <gasps> Chance, but to oh Hansen, massive gosh. save from oh Alisson. Oh my gosh. It's a 
<laughs> and the referee plays the corner. No way. Okay. He can't go too far outside the box. He has to sort of. He has to be direct. The, he has to. He has to play for the cross in here. Mbappe finds Ruben Diaz, player. the wrong player. Back to Hansen. The ref's gonna blow. Yeah, ah, you have to go chance forward. Chance goes back in, and what an unbelievable wow. moment that was for Jerick to score a last-minute equaliser with Hansen. It was also perfect, right? Another day potentially it could have <laughs> yeah. been a 4-4 four, four match up. We are starting to conclude games here at the Connival E Libertadores. As we said, it's only our first round matches here in Group A and Group B. <laughs> We're doing all right so far, aren't we? <laughs> sort of lost for words. The drama, the goals, the celebrations. It's been a if great we've start. We've just gone from zero to 100 in no time yep, at all. Literally. And literally. I think that's because of how these group stages are being played. It's not a round robin. Every game means so much because if you lose your first game, you're in an elimination game in your next one. So there's so much to play for you and so much cash on the line. Let's have a look at some of the highlights from the matches we have just been guiding you through across our first opening games here in Sao Paulo of day one of the competition. This is highlights from Zizinho against Rampaza. Rampaza did take a two goal lead in this game. No surprise, it's all coming through. The big six foot plus frame of Erling Haaland. Zizinho did get himself a goal back in the tie. That was 15 minutes in. And when we joined the game, just after 30 minutes, Ryan, there was a third goal. Yeah, this was a penalty from Rampaza, given that safety blanket of a two goal lead. Zizinho had a corner towards the bad and heads it back across in an incredible acrobatic effort from Erling Haaland. You can take a look, Brandon. Group A standings. Nathan SR, we saw that win against Gwedek 10. Of course, that puts him into the next days, the upper brackets. Zezinho lost two goals, or three goals to two against Rampazzo. So it'll be Gwedek and Zezinho in the lower bracket. Nathan versus Rampazzo. Winner of that game qualifies for tomorrow. Alongside that as well, guaranteeing yourself some decent prize money too. This is Group B as it stands now. Resende, no surprise there, on fine form. We mentioned that the Brazilians keep clean sheets. Yeah, I was Apparently just about to say that. That is probably the most impressive thing. A clean sheet in that game is massive. And of course, we saw our main featured game, game Gerkrak up against Gabriel Pien. Gerkrak winning that six goals to four. He's in the winner's bracket and he's got a massive, massive task to overcome Resende. Yeah, exactly. Before we know it, two players will be already through to our top eight and then two players will be eliminated. He was here not that long ago. Pablo Georgiakopoulos is now joined by Gerkrak. I've got to ask him myself, Pabs, how is the Colombian feeling? He must be feeling unbelievable. Champion of the first game. I mean, Gerkrak. What an unbelievable experience to come back against Gabriel Pien. I'm going to I'm gonna talk in English first, guys, and then actually I'm, I'm going to translate it to Spanish. But I'm going to ask him, how was it the game against Gabriel Pien to be able to play as basically away, because we're in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and the whole studio was at versus Gary Crack. Gary Crack, jugando away, jugando de visitante. ¿Qué se siente estar acá y ganar el partido contra Gabriel Pien? Una locura, una locura. La verdad es algo que me alegra mucho por lo que llevo practicando por todo el tiempo que llevo jugando y locura más de visitante más mérito todavía todos en contra mío entonces pero feliz 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 por haber ganado he's basically saying that this is absolutely insane to play basically away here in the Copa uh, Comebol y Libertadores Brandon and at the end of the day he put in a lot of work to be able to do this one more question here. You were down 3-1 versus Gabriel Pien. What did you do to come back for the game? ¿Qué hiciste cuando estabas 3-1 abajo? Mentalidad. Todo mentalidad en este juego. Me hizo dos goles de cabeza que no podía hacer nada. Uno en Mbappé patea, pero todo es mental. Entonces, si, para el siguiente partido estar igual, mentalidad y la sacamos adelante. Well, he's basically said, Brandon and Ryan, that at the end of the day, it's everything about being confident and in the mentality game, he was actually stronger than Gabriel Pien. He did get scored on two corners that he was basically not able to do anything. However, he stayed composed and he was able to keep going and actually be able to make the comeback. Um, I mean, one more question here. How does it feel to be going in the winner's bracket when everybody counted you out? ¿Qué se siente seguir en el winner's bracket cuando todo el mundo básicamente está en contra tuya? No, una alegría que no tiene ni en el peor sueño, ni en el mejor, uno se imagina eso, estar acá en las grandes ligas, como se dice, porque es un torneo de los mejores 16 de Sudamérica, entonces, de locos. 
una experiencia muy emocionante. He's basically saying that this is an unbelievable experience to be here in the top 16 players of South America. And at the end of the day, he, he, you know, everybody counted him out. However, he's here in the winner's bracket. He's here to stay. And let's see, your, first, your next game is against Resende. What do you think? El siguiente partido es contra Resende. ¿Qué piensas? Pues con cualquiera. Con cualquiera, si queremos quedar campeones, con cualquiera toca ganar. Ganar o ganar. Y la misma mentalidad de siempre. Este juego mental, entonces... Vamos con toda y vamos a ganar. He's basically saying that he's actually going to do the same exact thing that he did versus Gabriel Pian. Stay confident with himself. You know, at the end of the day, come out to win the game. He's not going to sit back. He's going to go forward and he's looking to stay in the winner's bracket. One last thing, uh, Ger. How was the trajectory coming here to Sao Paulo in your qualifier games? ¿Cómo estuvo tu trayectoria en los partidos decisivos en los qualifiers para llegar acá? Fue de loco, de locos. La verdad, para llegar acá estuvo muy complicado. Fue algo que yo no, yo no tenía equipo, yo no jugaba solo con sin manager ni nada, y se logró. El primer día fuimos 5-2, el día 1, y al siguiente día nos fuimos invictos, y jugando siempre a 200 MS. Entonces, una cosa de loco. He's basically saying that this was absolutely insane, the trajectory all the way here through the Swiss format. He went five, he went, he went five and two in the Swiss, and then in the day two, he actually went undefeated to make it all the way here to Sao Paulo, Brazil. He actually was playing a 200 MS in, in from Colombia, right? From, from Colombia. And at the end of the day, he's here to stay. Winner's bracket, head crack. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Wish you the best of luck. And well, guys, at the end of the day, I'll see you guys in the next one. We're going to go to a short break. Take care, guys.
Gustavo, tenho 18 anos, sou de Vinheiro, Brasil. Meu nickname é Gerick10, meu time é O Plano. Natan da Silva Ribeiro, é, tenho 24 anos, jogo pela Miners. Meu nome é Vinícius Sampazo, tenho 24 anos, sou de São Paulo, é, de Rio Claro, São Paulo, e represento a Miners, né? Shoes Miners. Eu sou o Henrique, tenho 24 anos, mais conhecido como Zezinho no jogo, e represento o Grêmio Sports. Meu nome é Gabriel Pérez Nunes, eu tenho 23 anos, sou brasileiro, meu nickname é TZ Gabriel PN e meu time é Atuzi. Mi nombre es Gerson Neide Roja Fuentes, eh, soy colombiano, 18 años y salgo como Jerkra 30 y represento R10 Team. Soy Juliano Olivieri, soy de Argentina, tengo 22 años, mi nick es Juliano 2013 y represento R10. Meu nome é Pedro Rezende, tenho 26 anos, sou brasileiro, eu jogo atualmente pelo Ajax. Meu nome é Eduardo Souza Ola, eu tenho 20 anos, sou do Brasil, meu nickname é WPS Dudu27 e eu jogo pela equipe WP Swallows. Meu nome é Edson Pedro, minha idade é 19 anos, sou do Brasil, minha equipe é SM Sports e minha tag é SMX29. Meu nome é Matheus Fonseca Rabelo, tenho 21 anos, sou do Brasil, meu nick é MGCF Fonseca e represento a MGCF Sports. Meu nome é Gabriel Freitas, tenho 21 anos, sou brasileiro, meu nickname é Yang e o time que eu represento é a Tuzi Sport. Meu nome é Matheus, mais conhecido como Baldo, tenho 21 anos, sou de São Paulo e represento a Tuzi. Meu nome é Facundo Cowen, tenho 20 anos, sou de La Plata, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Minha ideia de, de play é Facu Cowen 2203 e minha equipe é Tuzi. Guilherme Barros, tenho 20 anos, é, moro no Brasil, sou do Brasil e jogo pela Nestos Miners. Sou Sebastián Pérez Luoni, jogador de Tuzi Esport, tenho 22 anos e sou de Argentina. Well, welcome back to Sao Paulo, Brazil for the Carnival e Libertadores. You join myself, Richard Buckley. I've jumped from the stage into the booth because it's just getting too good by the be be beautiful. I was going to say wonderful, beautiful. It's, thank you. It's, it's a either. compliment. Take it. <laughs> you don't you, care much you. from me. I'll take it. Um, Casey, what a first round of action, we've got to say. And you've been crunching the numbers. You've been having a look at the stats. Um, I have. I have an interesting one. It blew me one. away, this one. Do you want to take it away? So, first person to score in every single match won the game. Impressive. It is. Very impressive. If you did miss anything in that first round, we've got you covered. We've got all the highlights from this opening round of fixtures here in Group A and B. Let's have a look at it and we can dissect what went down in the first round. This was Gurkrak up against Gabriel Pien. It was Gurkrak in an unbelievable affair. You've got to say the crowd definitely onto the Tuzzy Esports uh, man's favour in Gabriel Pien, but Gurkrak just came out on top in the end. He did. It was very, very end-to-end -end match, a lot of goals. But at the end of the day, he was talking about it in his interview. It was the mentality that got absolutely. him to that 90th minute. And he absolutely dominated the entire time. I will say that Gabriel Pian gave him a very, very good match. But Gurkrak, he is coming in strong. He went through the upper bracket in qualifiers, and he's continuing to win. One more game, and he's through. Absolutely. This was Zazinho up against Rampazzo. Rampazzo was in a really good position. He went through in the end with a victory against Zazinho. Um, he did pull it back, Zazinho. However, Rampazzo just too strong in the end. We're in a very hot country. It's 35 degrees right now. However, it's ice cold because there's a certain Norwegian who is dominating, it seems, every single game. Erling Haaland has been a menace. And I think that's not going to stop anytime soon. Look at that bicycle kick. How do you stop Erling Haaland or do you just accept it? I don't think you do. I don't think there's any way to stop him at this point, which is why we're seeing so many goals with him. But I will say that bicycle kick, very realistic. Yeah. Just saying. That's what he does. That's <laughs> he what does he it. does. <laughs> Let's have a look at Group A matchups coming right around the corner. You can see the group there and this is how it is currently stacking up. Nathan SR with the victory and uh, he will take on Rampazzo. That's a qualifying matchup. That is where our attention is going to be turned. However, we'll be keeping up to date with everything that is happening. Guerrick versus Zazinho, one of those two competitors will be, unfortunately, eliminated from the tournament. Resende, 3-0 win against Juliano. I just had the opportunity to speak to him backstage and he said it was quite smooth in the end. It was pretty simple for him. Um, he's going to be taking on Gurkrak in a sublime fixture. 
when you start to look ahead, that winning two, it seems so easy, it seems so simple, but it's so important. Because if you go down here having to play another match in this tournament, especially after you're going to be then losing a game, you're playing against someone who's just won, it puts you in a really difficult position. It does. I think that winning these two games, it may look easy on paper, especially after you win, but you're going against another winner as well. So they're coming off confident. So it could go either way for both of these and you don't want to be on that losing half. And speaking of winners, we can't forget Resende, a previous Conobol e Libertadores champion. 2021 had the opportunity to watch him victorious beating PhD in the grand final. Well, well what is coming up? We've got the qualifying matches from Group A and B, and also the elimination matchups. I hear you asking, where are we going to be watching first? What's our featured game? Well, I can reveal to you right now our featured matchup of this second round of action. Um, I believe it's going to be Nathan SR versus Rampazzo. It's going to be a really, really good game. Both players winning 3 2 in their previous matchup. I don't particularly think there's either that will come in feeling like they've got the upper hand. No, I don't think so either. I think that we have Resende who is coming off a massive win. This is definitely not the case. Very, very close match. And so I think this will be another very, very close match. Yeah, I remember Rampazzo as well. Um, I believe he was in Paraguay in the 2022 Conobol Il Libertadores. Finished top eight on that occasion. He's always been a name when I've been watching South American FC. He's in the conversation, but he's never quite lifting the trophy. Could this be his year? Could this be his tournament? Well, he's got a tough task ahead of him in Nathan SR. He was top six placement in the 2021 Conor Ilipadores. They've both been there before, but they've not quite got over the hill. Which way do you potentially see this one going? I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to give you a oh, prediction. Man. Where do you see it going? Who do you think is going to qualify? I can't give a prediction at this point. Maybe ask me later when we're on a, a later stage, because this honestly could go either way, especially looking at those first two matches for both of them. Both Brazilian. They're Honestly, I'm curious how the crowd is going to weigh on this one, both being Brazilian, because the first match, we had Colombia versus Brazil. Very weighted one way. We'll see. No Tuzzy Esports in action in this particular this feature one. matchup. However, <laughs> both players, Nexium Miners representative. So it'll be very intriguing to see if it's quite split down the middle with the audience here in Sao Paulo. I don't know if it's coming through to you at home, but it is electric in this arena. The noise when players are winning, players are scoring. I even saw a standing ovation for a tackle earlier on today when Gabriel PN was in action. And you just see if you can see the main stage there, but there's a lot of fans that have moved over to the right hand side, right near us. Thank you very much. It's going to be very noisy the vibes over will be here. A <laughs> um, little bit of information there about Nathan SR, 24 years old from Brazil, as both competitors are in this featured matchup. And uh, his best achievement there coming in a previous EA major event. Rampazzo just getting everything set up. It, these stages are quite important before you kick off. You can see his uh, 2v2 world ranking there, 23rd, to make sure that everything's right, to make sure that you've got the settings, to make sure you've got yep. the camera angle, all that sort of stuff. If you get that wrong now, and it costs you 10 minutes in the game, and you can't get a pause in, you go 1-0 down, you're the one to blame. And it can throw off your mental Absolutely. for the rest of the game. Say you have the wrong camera angle, you're meant to be on telebroadcast, but you want to be on co-op, then you're having to shift around instead of keeping your head in the game ready to go that could cost you the entire match, which is kind of insane, especially because it's nine and a half. But mentality is everything going into such high level competition. If you're wondering what's coming up later on this afternoon, uh, Group C, Young Edson, Francesco, Seba Luyoni, and Faku Cohen, a selection of players that's gonna be underway. We are waiting for this matchup to get kicked off. The other two matches that we have to remind you of, elimination games as well. Uh, Gabriel Pien against Juviano and Zezinho against Querik. I'm surprised by that one a bit, to see Zezinho go down in the first round. I think that we expected a lot out of him coming through the upper bracket as well. He's definitely one of the veterans too. It was a close match, 3-2, yep. but I was surprised to see him go into the lower bracket here because he's got he's to fight his way back to the top. Yeah, uh, on the other side of it as well, Guerrick uh, played for Old Plano, 18 years old, quite a youngster. It's his first ever time qualified for the Conor Ilibertadores. He finished third in a recent online cup, the Gab Gold Cup. 
So he's got a little bit of confidence coming into it, but it's going to be really, really interesting to see who at this stage, at this early stage, is eliminated. Zezinho and Gabriel Pien could both be knocked out in the opening two matchup. It's going to be enthralling watching here. Our featured match we are hearing is right around the corner. Kickoff is imminent here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And that is the match that we're going to be watching first. Nathan SR versus Rampaz. We're placing the top eight and a chance at eternal glory is at the fingertips for both competitors. Let us know in the chat at home who do you think is going to be victorious in this game. It's going to be a cracker. You're joined by myself and Casey to guide you through every swing of momentum during this affair. They're locked in, looking at their player cameras now, and it is about to kick off. Here we go, Rich. From left to right, it's going to be Nathan Esar all in white, and from the right to left in the black and white strip will be Rampazo. Nathan Esar, early attack here, and Erling Haaland, Kevin De Bruyne. It's a partnership that's worked many a times in real life, and on the virtual pitch, De Bruyne to Haaland, it seems a pretty formidable duo. Looking at the teams, is there anything Two out of the ordinary, not that I can think. Bruno Fernandes always in the heart of that centre of the pitch. Long ball pass plus and just a menace. You know, oh. Rich, one part that I love about watching this specific competition is how much they move forward in comparison to the other leagues. Yeah. I think that they are so offensive and constantly pushing forward. It makes it for a very, very entertaining watch. We were just watching the games sort of in the, in the backstage area and it was so evident seeing the difference in a lot of the European leagues. I think that's certainly it, the switches of play, the possession-based offense. In South America, you get the ball, if there's a pass forward, you play the pass forward. I think they take a lot more risks as Absolutely. well, which can well, be good Even with the offside traps as well. Yes, I know we saw that one mistake earlier. There was a goal because of it, but it makes it interesting. But sometimes it does create unfortunate situations for some of these players. But as a viewer, it does make it very, very entertaining to watch. Could be an early chance here for Alexia Pateas inside the box, just up against her team right there. On your back there. Jude winging the ball high up the pitch, but as he tried to release Erling Haaland, it is just intercepted. I think the teams, I mean, there's probably like nine out of 11 locks in the teams. You look at Van Dyke at the back, you look at a lot of the full backs. There's a little bit of confusion at the back here. Mbappe threw on goal, Allison with a huge save. You've got to say, Rampazzo should be one to look right now. He should. And you were saying that there's only a couple variances. I do think that the three attackers are the same throughout the yeah. majority of the teams. We have Mbappe, Holland are always there and probably R9 yeah. as their South American icon. Yeah, we have, you have to remind you as well the squad body requirements. It is any player available in the regular items. For the icons, you're only allowed to use South American icons. So. Ronaldinho, I think we saw coming off the bench. Pele, potentially. R9 is a lock. No Vieira or Hullet in this particular tournament. Yeah, we don't see too many Argentine icons here. It's pretty predominantly Brazilian yeah, icons. I'm not sure if Raquel is going to get a run out. Yeah, I don't think so. Nothing to write home about as of yet here. 15 minutes gone. So a qualifying matchup. I will say, Rich, one additional aspect of the restrictions is no five-back formations. Yep. Why do you think that is? What makes that so overpowered in terms of the game? Uh, why no five or three back? I think for the the entertainment, I think it, it, it was a change that was implemented very early into the season, and it made a lot of the games a lot more Speeds entertaining. Speeds it up a bit. Absolutely, yeah. And when something becomes so prominent in a meta that everyone has to use it, something has to change. Right. Uh, and I think we recently saw the nerf with some of the playstyle pluses. Um, aerial plus, I think Tiki Taka plus as well, long ball pass plus. So there is that constant balance of readjustment, and we even saw it with the Travellers a couple of months ago. It's a very fine-tuning process, and the five and three back, I just think it, it was a change that simply for me had to be made, it had to be implemented at the time that it did. 
And I do think that the players that are able to be the most adaptive are the players that are able to succeed. Because like you said, as the game changes, as the metas change, they have to adapt Absolutely. every single time. And Harland is still a menace. Like, he's still winning headers. I think he will be the whole year. Yeah. Theo Hernandez winning the ball high and wide there. Good press from Nathan SR. Bears down towards goal. Nothing in his way. It's just going to strike at goal. It's a little bit scrappy. It comes off the post in the end. Both players having good chances in this game, but the goal still unable to be counted. Scored. Scored. <laughs> That's a good word for it. Great one touch play. Lucio, he's one of those positions, the centre back next to Van Dyke that is up for debate. I saw company with Ruben Diaz. Lucio now getting a run out. Next to Virgil van Dyke. Long throw from Hernandez straight into Haaland. He's going to win the flick. R9, what does he have in the locker? Just deciding to recycle. Dinked up to Haaland, a little bit scrappy. Patez finds the back of the net. Rampazzo with first blood here in your qualifying matchup from Group A and B. Fantastic patience from Rampazzo there. He was able to head that ball, little tap over to Alexia Poteas. Fantastic finish from Poteas as well. Which, by the way, I love that I've seen her on a lot of these teams because her item in game is fantastic in the midfield. But also, she's out here scoring all the goals too. Yeah, she's incredible. Truly incredible. All the matches currently underway right now. We'll give you the goals as they go in, but Rampazzo potentially on a rampage as he comes forward here for a second. Switch of play, just opening up the pitch, and now you see Haaland, you see the man on this occasion. He is but with the ball to his feet, he's less effective in those areas. R9 versus Van Dyke. You would imagine Van Dyke's going to walk away with the ball, not on this occasion, however. And Ronaldo Nefario. It, ticking over, De Bruyne, Mbappe, twist, turn, step overs. A block in there from Ruben Diaz, Mbappe still gets it, and the combination of two centre-halves does clear the danger. Great defending there from Rampazzo, but he does give it back here. His press has been really good, Nathan Essar, but he's not been able to capitalise on winning the ball in high areas. Now, I am curious, Rich. We did mention before, although our nine Plus. might be on a fast break and he can't quite get it to Holland. I'm curious, Rampazzo scored first, if that will stay consistent yeah, is, through this game. Is the trend going to continue? Mm -hmm. Holland just sliding the ball through to R9. He went near post on the last try. It's a penalty. It looks a little bit scrappy inside the box. Van Dijk stuck a leg out. Mateo's over it. Three bars of power, dink down the middle, cool as you like. No reaction from the ice cold, Nathan SR. I respect it. Down the middle, no reaction, no celebration. He means business. I think he probably feels as though he should have scored already. Like Those couple of breaks that he had, he won the ball twice. De Bruyne and then Theo Hernandez, I think it was, on two separate occasions. He was unable to register anything of note. Rampazzo will feel a little bit disappointed as well. Whenever you give a penalty away, this was the Penenka straight down the middle. Just watch Rampazzo's face come there as soon as it went in. He knew that. I've, I've dove, I've gone early. And it's a Penenka straight down the middle. Back underway. Ten minutes to go before half time here. Nathan SR against Rampazzo. The other match is taking place. Gurkrak versus Resende. Sunday, who was commentating last year on the Cotterball Ilipidores this year, is in a qualifying match for top eight. Just goes to show how times can turn, and even though he could be in the back nine of his career, he's still one of the very best and most feared players here in South America. And now his teammate is the one commentating. commentating. Yeah. It's a little switch. Gabriel Pien against Juliano. That is a elimination matchup. And the final game of this round that's taking place right now. Fethinho in action versus Werrick. One touch football around the box. It's actually gone wide. I thought he saved it for a second. A little bit disappointed with that one. This is a, a match between Juliano and Gabriel Pien. 
And it was a bicycle kick from Erling Haaland. You said you liked them. There's another one there, doubling there we down. Go. You absolutely love to see it. We've seen that IRL, Man City versus Dortmund in the Champions League last year. And so it's a very realistic thing to see. That's Gabriel Pien, 2 0 down in an elimination matchup. One of the favourites coming into this tournament could be eliminated before he even got a chance to unpack his bags. Patea sliding through to Mbappe. Chance for Rampazzo. Near post. Is it on? Three timed off the post. I'm disappointed if that situation happens to me. I green time my shot, hits the post. But at the end of the day, you can't let that sort of situation upset you. You cannot lose that calm, cool collectedness in this competition because they have so much time to go. Absolutely. In nine minute halves, you're playing a, a new game in the second half. Dinked into the air. R9 wins it, but it's not convincing at all. And Duke Bellingham, again, very scrappy. The ball just bouncing around. No one really able to take control of the situation. And the referee blows us up for half time. All square between Nathan SR and Rampazzo at this current juncture. Three other matches all taking place. You might hear a celebration or two from the crowd. Let's have a look at what else is happening around the grounds at this current moment. As you can see, Resende in action versus Gerkrak, but it is Zazinho versus Guerig. Inked into the back post, Haaland wins it, Allison saves it, Mbappe off the post. What on earth am I seeing? I think this is live. It's not a highlight, this is live. Insane, absolutely insane. Oh, we're about to see a goal. Zazinho and Gabriel Pien, both in losing positions in elimination matches of FC. R9 for Guerrit, green times, past the keeper, 3 0 up. Absolutely insane. I don't think that anyone would have anticipated for Zazinho to be going out after round two because he went through the upper bracket. And I think that he was very, very dominant in the qualifying stage. But he's going up against fierce competition. And I will say, Guerrit. He went through the loser's bracket. He lost first round of qualifying and then won out all of the games. He's the only player to do it after losing round one. And I think that that is almost an impossible task. If you, have, if you ask any FC player how it is to go through that lower bracket, especially after losing round one and losing that morale, motivation, he's got the mentality and he's able to do it. And you could see it here against Zizinho. You're well and truly in the trenches. And I think the confidence, the composure that you just spoke about, it's just drained from you because you also know such a slog that you've got going forward in the remaining matchups. It is currently half time still in our featured game. Nathan SR and Rampazzo. Slightly staggered kickoffs here in Sao Paulo, so we can bring you all the action from all the matches. And we are back underway for the second half of FC. Nathan SR versus Rampazzo. And I do believe that we might be getting a special guest in the booth as well for this second half of FC. 48 minutes on the clock. Dink team. A little bit scrappy again. I think that's a word that I've used a couple of times this game, Casey. It's just not, it's not particularly being cultured or composed from either player. No, it's not. There's a lot of bounces that I'm unsure about. It's there's a lot of ping ponging around, and I don't think that's intentional from either of the players. He was just having a little drink. He was supposed to join us at half time. Three minutes later, Ryan Pessoa, what you made so far between Nathan and Rapazzo is just been. I think you can, nerves, I think you can tell. Yeah, recently as it stands, I think he's overall five goals, zero conceded. He's been keeping clean sheet after clean sheet. And just there, if you're playing Put champs if you're playing rivals, even a qualifying game, you take a little bit more care over that. It just seemed a little bit 
rushed. De Bruyne out wide to Pateas. Finesse off the bar. Chance after chance, goals begging. The press is good. Rampazzo just out on that occasion. Alexia Pateas dinked in. Ah, nine! <laughs> Maybe we start to get a little bit of confidence now. That's what I like to see. <laughs> they see the finish line. This is this could be their last match of the day that qualifies them for Championship Sunday. I think maybe that's where some of the nerves came from because this match is literally everything. I'm sure you've been in both situations, in the loser's bracket and also in the winner's bracket, Ryan. Maintaining that unbeaten streak and not having to go down, from your perspective, obviously we've had the chance to commentate it, myself and Casey, but when you're in that situation, it's just, how, how does it feel when you know that you're going down and you've got to play another game, maybe even another two games? I'm sure when we, we've had the opportunity to, to watch you as well, Ryan, it might have took you an hour or so to get warmed up, so going down to a loser's bracket <laughs> did help. First time pass on your Vettel in the way. I'd like to see a couple of changes, potentially. Do you know who I saw on the bench? This is... Talk hold on a second, this is getting launched into the box. Haaland against Van Dijk. Keepers come out. Wins the header. Oh. Ruben Diaz just about does enough. Me and Casey were watching the games. Yep. Rasmus Hoyland. I guess it's another option offensively. Look at the ball in behind. Mbappe, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, goes round, Alisson. Oh, my gosh. Closes down the angle and just about does enough. That's a crucial chance there. That's one that you don't really want to look back on after the game. It, Casey, it seemed as if it was almost a guaranteed goal. Almost a guaranteed goal, but the goalkeeper was right in there, ready to take that ball straight back from him. I mean, even the ball roll couldn't get him quite past yeah. him. Just touching on your point there, Richard, again, about the super subs or, or impact subs from the bench. Hoyland, of course, his stature in game. We know the way the metro of FC24 has sort of shifted towards having players that are able to compete in the air. Very, very important to have as an option to bring off the bench. When you hear a noise like that in the background, just think it's probably someone from Tuzzy Esports who's just gone. Because Tuzzy Esports have brought 70, maybe 80 people here in attendance. They filled up some thirds of the arena. Yeah, we see a lot of Tussie Esports jerseys as well, so they are fully merged out, ready to go and cheer on the players. De Bruyne, green time, just go for Mbappe! Oh my goodness. Allison again! MVP. Wow. Look at the reaction from Rampazzo as well, the headsets come off. You press circle there, it's a guaranteed goal. Yeah. You think of the celebration. Nathan's hanging on. Corner, going to be delivered, we've seen how dangerous they can be. Whipped in off the bar. Alexia Pateas will bring it clear. Erling Haaland over the top. Is Mbappe on side? No, not on this occasion. And a pause will come in. Nathan, SR and Rampazzo. Rampazzo will feel really hard done by to not be leading in this particular series so far. But if you don't take your chances, potentially the only person left to blame is yourself, Casey. It's kind of hard to believe that this match is still 1-1 going into the latter half of the game. I think there's been so many chances that as a player, I would have anticipated it to be at least 3-2, 3-3. And it's an all-out battle. And at this point in time, Ryan, I don't know who could possibly take this. I don't know if momentum will shift, but yeah. what are you thinking? It's a tricky one because from experience when playing in Rampazzo's position, when you're you're on the, the front foot, you're the one creating the majority of chances and it's just not going in. Sometimes you play in your head a little bit. You think, all right, he's destined to score that, but they're going to end up taking the lead. But it's just about maintaining composure, belief, and just sooner or later, chance. Oh my goodness. Again, there, like the, the, the cursor didn't swap to the, the attacker there. I felt as if that would have been another chance that potentially 
Van Persel could have scored from. But again, it's just about the mental side of the game this, at this point. Just having a look at the fitness of some of those players as well. Subs have come on. Jude Bellingham fresh off the bench. By the looks of it. I think he's playing right back. Yeah, it's not the first time that we've seen Bellingham deployed at right back. Frimpong as well, he's fresh. As well as CR7. Ronaldo Nathario over the top. Oh Harland, goodness. Jude just, and I mean just about does enough. Van Dijk taking a risk and plays out in the end for Rampazzo. Great. Is she on side? She's on. Graham Hansen just going wide. Back to Mbappe. Oh. Extra pass. He's overplaying oh it. God, he's overplaying it. What's going on? It's Is it like his own head? His attacks are they're very set in stone in the sense that he already maps out what he's going to do. Instead of reacting to the goalkeeper movement or the defending scenario, he's just reacting to what's... Well, he's preemptively building up his attacks. This is a highlight. It's Juliana up against Gabriel Pien. It's dinked in. It's Haaland. Oh. Gabriel Pien. Could be eliminated. It, it, he's 15 minutes away from having his final involvement here in the Carnival Ilipidores 2024 as Juliano will be eliminating him unless this Tuzzy Esports pro crowd can get behind him and give him maybe that extra 5% that he needs. Rampazzo, step overs, Mbappe, Haaland, Hansen! How many chances is Rampazzo going to create? Unbelievable inside the box. Insane, he's almost too patient though. He's looking for too many extra chances when he's yeah. actually through on goal. Haaland, player locked, near post. It's the defensive Haaland that's got back post here. being offered up to him and Erling Haaland towers, but flies over the bar in the end. Seven minutes left to play here. Extra time and penalties are in use and we very well could be needing them to find out oh, who will be great ball. Just off. qualifying into the top eight. I think that's a similar thing you have to watch out for when defending is the the triggered runs from the fullbacks. You can just lob a ball in behind. And just turns defence to attack, just a snap of the fingers. Good press once again from Rampazzo, winning the ball high up the pitch. Is this the one that he's been waiting for? It's a player locked pass, but just asking way too much. Nathan SR will feel fortunate to be still in this game, but the Old hard truth is, he's in the game and Here he only needs one chance. As Ronaldo gets the right side of. Uh oh. Go, oh, oh, Haaland! He was always coming, he got the right side of his defender. Van Dyke couldn't get to him. Dinked it up and made no mistake. Green time header. Yep. It was coming, Casey. The moment the ball was in behind, you saw Haaland at the back post, the dink. Despite bringing on Jude Bellingham, he just doesn't have enough to stop Haaland in the air. Sometimes the easier option is the one that you should actually go with. Yep. In this case, Haaland was the easiest option, and that is why Nathan Assar is doing it, because Rampazzo is going for the harder route, and it's just too much, and it's just not quite working. Look at them stats right there. I don't know if we can pull oh. that up. 14 shots. To six. To six. The possession stats as well in favour of Rampazzo. It's been a dominant performance, but the scoreline tells you otherwise. I dread to think the XG. And so many chances. We saw a game it's earlier ridiculous. when I was looking at the stats actually just backstage. Um, Zazinho, who went on to lose his game, had yep. a 4.8 XG. Wow. And I think his opponent had a 2, maybe a 2.1, 2.2 yep. XG. He had to get something out of the game and he didn't. And Rampazzo is in a very, very similar predicament. The only difference is Rampazzo won't be getting eliminated. Zazinho very well could be. Yeah. Looking at. Uh, couple of the other matches here in the arena live in Sao Paulo slowly filling up throughout the day it's gonna be a full house tomorrow for our grand final statistically you would think that somebody well I think somebody has to be here from Tuzzy Esports <laughs> I think in one group there's three three Tuzzy Esports yep. representatives we are jumping on board here with Juliano versus Gabriel Pien just very quickly we'll get to that game at the end, that's why we stagger the kickoff so we can show you all the full times here at the Cotton oh, E Libertadores. The rushed pass trying to through wooden attack as a dink in behind. Nathan could be calm and composed, trying to up the key possession. The I think it's a I think it's a perfect time to. I wouldn't go forward here. 
Even with a nine minute half? Yeah, it's only a minute or two of regulation time. You've got added time as well. Of course, you start to panic if it's maybe plus Ooh. three. I don't like it when it goes to FIFA. Plus two. It is definitely. Oh my god. And it's not for Rampazo, but it very well could be. Mbappe into Drew Bellingham. Ronaldinho off the bench. What does he have up his locker? Theo, twisting, turning. He's just running out of space. Oh, play the going? pass. <laughs> just... Oh my goodness. Fringpong you... will turn out and Fringpong will clear the ball long for Nathan Essar, guaranteeing his spot in the top eight. The noise that you can hear right now is because, from my understanding, Gabriel Pierre has just levelled up. No way, wow. Let's have a look at that game right now. What is happening? It's not, it's Guerrick versus Zezinho, 4 2 up. 15 minutes left to go. Gabriel Pien has levelled up against his opponent. We're going to go over that game right now. It was just in the pause. Let's just see this attack play out. Mbappe twisting, turning, edge of the box. Ronaldinho, De Bruyne. Oh. No, let's go over, let's go over to where all that noise is coming from. He was on the wow. verge of elimination and he's pulled it out. You can hear the noise. The crowd is absolutely enthused by Gabriel Ian right now and he does have a chance to win it. I would. He's up! Oh! <laughs> Wow. How would you feel if you can, when you're playing, you can hear that? <laughs> Surely that puts you up a little bit. Uh, to me, I, I think a lot of players, you sort of revel in the fact that if you're Juliano here, you know that they're sort of against you. So maybe oh, that could you want it to be the, Yeah, 100%. Give them a big shush. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> it's almost like you got a chip on your shoulder. Yep. Oh, much. Palmer getting a run out in Sao Paulo. One last chance here. Elimination FC. Winner continues in the Carnival Ilumtidores, the loser. Their tournament will be coming to a close and potentially their season. Left back. There Switch it is. of play. Hernandez. Ryan Pessoa called it. Gabriel Pien delivered. Just What's ran out of play. On? Overran it. There's time. There is time. That could be a massive mistake running it out of bounds here. Cole Palmer dinked over the top. Hansen is on Back side. Cold. And Haaland is waiting eagerly. Woo! Mbappe reversal. That's the goal! Oh! He silences the crowd! Incredible. You could hear a pin drop in Sao Paulo. Wow. We haven't seen many celebrations. I think that's our first, first big <laughs> yeah. celebration that we're seeing, because that match, that goal, is probably one of the most important moments that we've seen so far. Sensational goal as well. Oh Take my goodness. Giuliano building up. We know KSB spoke, it's the last attack. He had to go forward. The L1 stop into a reverse elastico across the face of goal there. Great, great finish at a great time for Giuliano. What you're seeing now, because Haaland is such a presence, you you're not even watch, looking. You have to you're not looking at Mbappe. Part. Yeah, yeah, yeah and he gets the ball, you then have a little bit of creativity. The reverse elastic goal, beautiful. But you're so fixated on, there's this six foot five giant of a man at the back post, yep. who I need to right stick switch, keeper. someone back, I need to move the keeper, yep. and you're just not switched on. And then you have to also cut the lane for the extra pass in the yep. box if they play it inside. There's so many variations or ways to, to create chances in the box. And Giuliano does it in an incredible, incredible way. Incredible. R10 will continue in this tournament. Dutty Esports and their fans, it, it's... There's conversations happening in the arena. <laughs> it's silent. It's unbelievable, I've got to say. What I could see right now in front of me, <laughs> it, it's magnificent just seeing this arena, the emotion. Gabriel Pien did everything he could. He got back in the game. He overran the ball. Yeah. With Hernandez. He overran it. He turned possession over in a crucial moment. And when you need a little bit of ice in a very hot country, Casey, he delivered.
Liliano. Ice is exactly what he had in a room that maybe did not want him to win either. I'm sweating. <laughs> I, think, I think we're all sweating. <laughs> Unbelievable, it really was. The other games that are currently taking place, I'm just looking over and I can see one game is still underway yep. right now. There's one game that is still live. The full times, as we understand, uh, Resende was in a good position. Rampazo won, Nathan SR2, and we just saw Gabriel PN breaking news, eliminated. He is out yep. from the Conmebol e Libertadores. One game left right now. Let's have a look at that bracket to see how it is all taking shape. Zezinho lost three goals to two, as did Huerich versus Nathan Essar. Nathan Essar beating Rampazo, which means Rampazo will play Huerich in the final chance game. He beat Zezinho five goals to two in what is a truly unbelievable result. You could say that two of the favourites yep. have been knocked out as you can see, Resende, he's the man in form. He's the man keeping it cool, calm, under pressure. Seven goals scored, zero conceded. Is it very simple, Ryan? That really is just levels to this game. He's been around the block, I think over $230,000 of prize money. He's won this tournament before yeah. as well. And maybe, I don't want to do him a disservice, but maybe when his teammate is potentially taking a little bit of the limelight in PhD. This is his chance to go, I'm still here and I'm still ready to win. Yeah, exactly. He's a man on a mission. He's got points to prove and he's showing it. He's yet to concede a goal. I think that's incredible. Seven goals scored, zero conceded. Already qualified for tomorrow. So yeah, if he can continue that form, he's going to be an incredible task to overcome. Only two rounds down and he is absolutely scintillating here in Sao Paulo. Our very own Pabs is catching up with the man of the moment right now. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm here with Giuliano, the winner between Gabriel Pien and Giuliano. Giuliano, I mean, what a crazy like turnabout of events, right? I mean, you were playing away, you scored a minute 92 between a reverse Elastico from Mbappe, not green time second post, but it's still winning. How does it feel? Hiciste un reverse Elastico al final, minuto 92, la clavaste en la prepa al final. ¿Qué se siente? No, la verdad que estoy muy contento. Eh... Yo control, siento que controlé todo el partido y que me haya empatado el partido como que me cayó bastante mal, pero, pero bueno, por suerte tuve la, el minuto 90 que hice una muy buena jugada y por suerte pude ganar. He is extremely happy that he had the last one of the game on a reverse elástico from Mbappe, second post. I mean, at the end of the day, he said that he controlled the game. However, he did get scored on a minute 85. He, he, he got a little bit of a sour taste of it. However, he still had the last shot of the game and he was able to capitalize. One more question here. How does it feel to be playing away, basically? Because, you know, in the studio, everybody's from Brazil. You're from Argentina. How does it feel? ¿Qué se siente jugar de visitante? Está todo el mundo de Brasil. Tú que eres de Argentina, ¿cómo se siente? No, no, increíble. Me encanta, me encanta que la gente aliente. Bueno, en este caso estoy de visitante, pero me, me encantó. Disfruté mucho el partido y, bueno, ahora vamos a ver todo en el último. He's very excited at the fact that he was playing away basically here in Brazil. He is from Argentina, however, that basically gave him a few to come back into the game in the last minute. And I mean, now your game is against Her Crack, Colombia versus Argentina. What do you think about that game? Ahora te toca contra Her Crack, Colombia contra Argentina. ¿Qué, qué te parece ese partido? Sí, bueno, la, la verdad que me pone contento porque los dos somos jugadores de R10, entonces sabemos que uno va a pasar, pero bueno, eh, que pase lo que tenga que pasar y voy a tratar que sea yo lo que pase. Well, it's actually pretty happy the fact that both are from R10 Esports. However, only one player can stand, and he, uh, whichever the result happens, hopefully it's you or hopefully it's Crack. At the end of the day, he's going to be very happy because they're both from the same team. Thank you so much, Juliano. Best of luck. Guys, we're going to go into a break. Stay tuned. para todo mundo aqui que é da América do Sul brasileiro, argentino, seja quem for. Quando a gente olha para a Comebol Libertadores, a gente tem, sempre tem um sonho de ganhar, que é o nosso principal torneio. Então eu acho que se você sonha, se você acredita em você mesmo, tem uma boa mentalidade, você consegue. Então eu acho que é isso. Meu nome é Paulo Henrique, mais conhecido como PHzinho. Tenho 20 anos e sou jogador do AFC Ajax. A sensação de ser considerado uma lenda da Comebol Libertadores é algo que deixo muito lisonjeado e orgulhoso porque é, consegui escrever minha história nessa competição que é a maior do nosso continente. Então é, eu fico muito feliz e é, espero poder voltar, talvez no futuro, poder jogar mais e ganhar mais títulos. 
Mas 2021, como foi a primeira, eu queria muito ganhar, não consegui, perdi nos pênaltis. A segunda eu consegui e a última eu perdi também nos pênaltis. Então eu acho que as minhas ambições para todos os torneios que eu vou jogar é sempre ser campeão. Então eu acho que só algumas vezes acontece, outras não. Eu acho que só o que diferencia é que talvez em 2022 eu, este, eu estava mais preparado que em 2021, com certeza. E eu acho que isso que me fez ser campeão em 2022. Para mim, sendo favorito ou não, meu foco é o mesmo na final e eu só quero ganhar sempre. A sensação de ter ganho esse UFC Pro Open 2024 é... Eu acho que é, é muito, quase impossível de explicar a sensação que eu senti. É o, torneio, o maior torneio que eu já ganhei na minha vida, na minha carreira até então. E foi algo que eu precisava, que ganhei um título mundial assim. 1v1, um um, que eu tanto buscava, e se ainda é o primeiro do ano, o primeiro UFC Pro Open da história, então, é, como foi a primeira Libertadores da história, o primeiro UFC Pro Open, meu nome vai estar sempre lá, então, quando voltarem, daqui a uns 5, 6 anos, quando olharem para trás, ver quem foi o primeiro, vai ser eu, e também foi muito especial, porque eu estava com a minha família lá em outro país, então foi algo que eu sempre sonhei, e achava que seria uma coisa quase impossível de acontecer, de ganhar um torneio como esse, com a minha família perto, mas é, com certeza isso é, foi a, maior, a melhor sensação que eu já senti competindo foi ter ganho a Pro Open. Escolher um jogador favorito para mim é muito difícil, porque é, essa aí eu acho que eu vou ter que deixar passar, porque eu tenho muitos amigos, então eu também tenho meu, meu teammate, o Rezende, que é do Ajax. Então eu também, é, se ele ganhasse eu ficaria muito feliz, mas também tem outros jogadores que são meus grandes amigos e se ganhasse também eu ficaria feliz, como o Young. Então eu acho que... É, yeah. Young, ou Rezende, ou Zezinho, os três me deixariam felizes. Acho que vai ficar aqui no Brasil e eu acredito que os jogadores brasileiros têm muitas chances de levar.
Welcome back to Sao Paulo here for the Conval E Libertadores. The first time this competition has ever taken place in Brazil. And it's safe to say it's been a very loud and noisy day so far here in day one of the competition. Of course, myself, Brandon Smith, joined with Pablo Georgiakopoulos for the call of this match up here. We are really in the big round, aren't we? This is the last round of Group A and B. We've already said goodbye to two players and we've already said congratulations to two players that are already in Championship Sunday. The same applies in this round, though, Pabs, doesn't it? Yeah, 100%. I mean, two players have gone home, two players have qualified. Resende, you know, big name coming out of this. He hasn't conceded the goal. He hasn't Resende conceded has the goal. not conceded a single goal. He might be the old statesman in this tournament, only 26, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but he won 3 0 and he won 4 0. He's in Championship Sunday already. His teammate, Paolo Neto. Uh, Palonetto, his teammate, PhD. PhD. Um, we'll be very happy. <laughs> we're Palonetto, missing, we're missing he's, not here. Here. he's not here, unfortunately. <laughs> well, let's have a look at the highlights from that last round that has just concluded here in Sao Paulo. There was plenty of goals, plenty of drama, and more importantly, some last minute winners. This is the game between Nathan SR and Rampazo. Rampazo did take the lead in this game, but it was Nathan SR that did come out in top pass. With the Panenka to say, right there down the middle. The referees enjoying giving him a pen. He's had two penalties in two games and he's not missed them both. Yeah, I mean, he's Panenka down the middle. That's That takes a lot of, a lot of confidence down to do it. You know, at the end of the day, if he did not make that, he might have to be going home. Well, this is the other game that took place and it was very heated what off a game. stage. Look at the bicycle kick by Haaland. Argentina versus Brazil, Giuliano of R10. That's Ronaldinho's esports organization up against Gabriel Pien, who used to play for R10, now of Tuzzy Esports. This game was end-to-end, end, perhaps. It was a 3-3 matchup until, I think, like the last couple of closing stages. We were Men watching it off stage. I mean, you even got to have a chat to, yeah, I actually to, spoke to, to, the, to the winner himself. Yeah, I actually spoke to Giuliano, and he said that, you know, he actually got the last touch of the game. He, you know, Gabriel Pien got very lucky here with Alexia Puteas. However, Giuliano in minute 85, well, actually, Gabriel Pien ties it in minute 85 with this goal from Alexia right here. Beautiful step over into an R1. And in minute 92, the act, basically the last one, look at this skill right here with the reverse elastico, second post, not green timed. What a goal right here, Brandon. You have to be so composed, don't you, in those areas to try and pull out a reverse elastico in the last kick of the game. Massive result though for Giuliano. He remains in the competition in another elimination game. Um, Jerick, in this game was what a unbelievable. Finesse Alexa Mateus, time green, finesse on the edge of the box. And for Zizinho, it's just not been a tournament to remember. Unfortunately, he crashes out of the competition. And for me, that's something I wouldn't have expected. 100%. And you think that Zizinho would have made it to Championship Sunday. However, he is out of the competition with this with, with this loss over getting 10. This was, you know, this was very back and forth because at the end of the day, Zizinho actually made it 3-2 right here with this goal from R9, second post finish, not green time, but it is the right foot of R9. Yeah, and it's crazy to think that that was all before the 40th minute in the game. What a game. As well <laughs> between those two. I, I'm sure we'll have a goal tally at some point of how many goals we've seen across all of the matches so far here in Sao Paulo. That was to make it four goals to two, and by that point, Jerek was able just to run away with the tie. Obviously, he does enough now to go into another elimination game. He's going to take on Rampazo in this round, and we are going to see Ger Gerkrak against Giuliano. I mean, where, I do, where, where do we speak about oh. Gerkrak in this game? Because, you know, Gerkrak had an unbelievable opening game. He was entertaining and he was really end to end. But then this game, he just couldn't really get a, he couldn't get a sniff. He couldn't really get going against Resende. And Resende won this game, not one, not two, not three, but four goals four to nil. I mean, he's the only player that's actually kept a clean sheet. That's a big statement. That's a big statement about Resende and Ajax Esports. I mean, they won and win this competition and take the eternal glory back to the Netherlands. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, PhD was, what, a champion? How, how long ago? Two two years ago? Two years ago two in years Paraguay, ago. won that competition. Paraguay, and now Resende is here to do the exact same that his team had actually done in the past. Absolutely. Well, if we can have a look at the brackets, if possible, for how this Group A and Group B is going to conclude. There's only one game left in our first half of play today and then it will be all attention over to Group C and Group D. As we said, there's still plenty more action to come here from Sao Paulo. Here's Group A's bracket and this is how it's going to look. There's only one game left to be played as we teased you. Rampazo takes on Jerick. I mean, they've both been on very different bracket runs, haven't they, in terms of for Jerick, he's had to play two elimination games back to back. Lost to Nathan SR, three goals to two. Went down to play against Zizinho. 
pushed him away five goals to two. And now he has to come up against Rampars, who will be gutted after losing that qualification game to Nathan Esso. Yeah, I mean, Gerig actually had the chance in order to send Zezinho home. However, here we see Group B, Resender versus Giuliano, 3-0. Resender versus Herkrak, and that basically qualifies him to tomorrow, the top eight. And now we have Herkrak versus Giuliano, Colombia versus Argentina. I mean, they're, you know, I actually spoke to Giuliano, Brandon, and he said that he doesn't care about the outcome. However, he wants to win, but both players are from R10 Esports, so it would be good as a team-based Accomplishment. Well, I think he only signed a couple of days ago for uh, for R10. Did uh, did Ger crack? It's yeah. his first time in an international tournament such as this. There was no surprise. He put pen to paper with an esports organization. He before. did say he did say that he played the whole tournament as a free agent at 200 ping all the way from Colombia. He went five and two in the Swiss, and then in the day two of the tournament, he actually went undefeated. And and to do that with those conditions is so hard. It, it is it is a great accomplishment. Here's the match that, as we said, that are coming up your way right now. One person goes through to tomorrow, and the other one, unfortunately, is out the tournament. You can honestly argue, perhaps it's the end of the season. It's basically the end of the season for them because at the end of the day, if you don't make it to day two, your season is basically over because you don't have a chance to go to the FC Pro Championship. That's over in Group A. Over in Group B, as we've said, we'll be looking at Gerkrak against Giuliano, two teammates of R10 Esports and two non-Brazilians in the competition there. We're looking forward to seeing how this one plays out. It is a spectacle of a venue here Beautiful in Sao stage. Paulo. It's been so loud, so noisy, and this isn't even Championship Sunday. Yeah, it isn't even Championship Sunday, and here we are. You can hear the studio, and I mean, this is a Brazilian contenders going against each other. This is The, the studio is actually going to be divided, because at the end of the day, we are in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Well, Net Shoes Miners have already got one player over the line into tomorrow's Championship Sunday. Just spoke to the coach in Kaku and he said, Look, I'd love to get another player over the line. I need this. We need this. We need to get these FC Pro World Championship spots, which are only available for two players come tomorrow night. They'll be joining obviously the two recent EMLS uh, top two over there. Kaywin John, John and Jafonso. And then the top four, as we saw from the, uh, the FC Big Pro names. Open. I mean, it's already looking like a stack competition, isn't it? And every week when we go to a different major league, more names will be added in to those FC Pro Open World Championships. And whenever it'll be in the summertime, it's going to be an insane competition. Only 18 years of age, this man. He's been playing ever since he was able to at 16 years of at age. 16 and he was years getting it, reminds those of Anders. it reminds me a little bit of Anders. You know, he had to wait until he was 16 to compete. However, Gedek here is a top two regional qualifier for South America and FC24. This is, you know, it's, it's something to play at, in, at your home and now playing at a LAN event, it brings a lot of nerves, it brings a lot of stress. And these are nine minute halves that these players have to go through. They're very long halves, aren't they, for a lot of these players? <laughs> I could tell you, I could tell you from personal experience, Brandon. Hence why I think we've seen just so many goals in the games as well. There's just so much time in them. It's his first ever Libertadores, is it? For Garrick, he'll be looking to see what he can do here. These are the squad building requirements for those that have been following this competition from wherever you watch it from around the world. Of course, we are playing an ultimate team, but there is no budget on the team at all. You can use any player. It's just the icons that it gets a bit more interesting. You can only use icons from South American countries, which have been labelled out as followed. You'll be uh, not surprised to know. We've only seen one Brazilian icon, and he goes by the name of Ronaldo Nazario. And I think he'll probably be the only icon that we're going to see, perhaps. R9, I mean, he's the one, he's the the, the, the man upstairs, along with Haaland and Mbappe. We saw actually Herkrak use Hansen away from, you know, all the, the three usual suspects. But here we are now, R9 is the icon for each and one of these players. Rampasa versus Garrick. The, the, I mean, this is the biggest stage that they probably have been in their life. This is the biggest game of the season. This is the biggest game of the season, and this is the game that they want to win. Nothing else matter unless this game. Well then, here we go. Rampazzo against Gerrick. Rampazzo kicking from left to right in that wide strip. Gerrick from right to left. We might just see a 4-3-2-1 versus 4-3-2-1, Brandon. It is the very meta formation for this sort of competition. We see Ona, a right back for Rampasso. He has to be very careful with Herik actually doing the same thing that he's been doing right now to be able to go second post because Ona might not win those balls over Hallen. I mean, it, she, she's an interesting choice. Obviously, she's got that team of the year in-game item, which was ever so popular towards the back end of the FC Pro Open. Bouncing around the box. There's our nine on the volley. What a save from what the a keeper. Movement. Matched up well by Allison. 
We're going to see a ton of this, Brandon. We're going to see a ton of dinks to Haaland because he has an aerial threat plus. And, you know, it is something part of the game that actually leaves the next player, the second ball, very open into the goal to shoot second post. And we might see a set play here from the training ground. Watch out for Haaland. That's what you need to see. Haaland against Haaland. There he is with once, the player lock. Look, defending. going second post. What's about post? Alisson, two hands in the air. But back to the point we were speaking about with Honor at right back. I mean, look, she's not the tallest of players, but going forward offensively, she's... So good. Unbelievable. And that's something why some players are happy to take that risk. 100%. I actually had her in my EMLS team with the LAFC for Ellis 2 and the group stages of EMLS Cup. And she was actually unbelievable. We had a 12 million budget and I spent, what, 1.5 million on her? <laughs> she was just so good. We will be seeing a few more different case studies for right backs that can stop Erling Haaland. I'm sure you'll see them across these next two days. Mbappe, is he onside? Yes, he is. Gerrick in the box. Haaland against Virgil van Dijk. will be a battle that will continue. And you can see the choice of right back here for Rampazzo, Ona, and then the right back choice for Gerrick is the new Mendy 92. Mendy might win those balls a little bit more than Ona. However, Ona going forward might be a little bit better than Mendy. Slightly peculiar as well to see Furlow Mendy at right back. So used to seeing him. I mean, with the five star, with the, the left hand yeah, side. with the five star weak foot, Mendy just basically is the complete player. You know, what a cross! Here we go. So much to think about defensively, perhaps. I mean, as a, a pro yourself, only a few weeks ago you were playing in Austin, the MLS Cup. You're trying to you're trying to protect yourself in so many ways. You're trying to stop a cross. You're trying to stop an edge of the box, Travella. I mean, how are you micromanaging all of these mind games? Yeah, I mean, you have to stay very composed because at the end of the day, you see a trigger run into Haaland's second post. You might think that the other player is going to cross it. However, he might just borrow inside and just have an incisive pass down the middle and, be, and basically leave you one-on-one. -on -one. We see the choice of Bruno Fernandes for Rampazzo. I actually, you know, Bruno Fernandes, I was being told that he's a very good player in, in FC24. However, the legs of Jude Bellingham, Putellas and De Bruyne, might have to be coming over him. However, Rampasso cho uh, the choice of Rampasso was Bruno Fernandes. He offers you such a good switch pass as well, doesn't he, Bruno Fernandes? Such a complete centre midfielder. This is a beautiful build-up here. You might look into Haaland's second post. Haaland, he's going to get it on the second time of asking Alisson. Just about gets a punch, and that still could be alive for Teus. Another Trickles one. back to Mbappe, a couple of ball rolls inside. Mbappe still to Hernandez. These guys, these guys are going after it. You know what's one of the things, Brandon, is that to be able to defend the crosses and the dink second post, the defensive player actually player locks into the center back to get in the way of where Haaland is actually going to do the second pass. It, it just takes so much concentration. To try and do that every time, perhaps, it's, it's near enough impossible. <laughs> every single time is impossible because at the end of the day, Haaland is going to win a ball and he's actually going to thread the pass into basically leaving R9 and whoever it is in front of goal one on one. Hernandez finds him. Bappe potentially waiting in the box, Harlem first, then Pateas, couple of step overs, great idea, just to cut back inside, Pateas still, eventually it trickles out for Alisson. You know what's going to be crucial here, Brandon, as well, it's the goalie movement. We saw the Trevellas get, a, you know, a little bit of a, of a nerf, a little bit of a patch, however, the finesses of Kevin De Bruyne and Jude Bellingham have to be blocked. Surprisingly. I can't believe I'm actually saying this, that we've had no goals for 20 minutes. It doesn't feel right saying that in this competition so far. That was a dangerous tackle. Bappe just about wriggles his way around a couple of diving bodies there from Ruben Diaz San Virgil van Dijk. Rampasso playing without headphones in this hectic arena. I mean, it's going to take a lot for him to concentrate whenever he's in front of goal. Rather him than me, because... Look at this, second post. He's so loud. Pateas back post looking maybe for a cross back across. Touches weren't heavy in the pressure. This is him only for a split second. Bellingham. To the pass queued. Rampasso might not be comfortable with something here. Look at Mendy. Just wins everything. New item in the game. Max Price, 7.4 mil. Quite a lot for a fullback, isn't it? <laughs> it's quite a lot for a fullback. However, these players have unlimited budget in unlocked accounts at FC24. As we see the pass queue for Rampazzo, you know, he might be talking to his coach. Hey, look, something's going on. We, we're, we might not be comfortable here. How, how, about, how about we go and we change a couple of things? And we'll see what's going on in game two.
Well, we mentioned there was another game taking place, and it seems like this one's following suit because it's also nil-nil. This is live now for you. And it's a winner to go home. The Colombian, in his first. The, from the ball, E. Libertadores. This is the same scenario as well on the other side for Giuliano of Argentina. Team R10, they are both teammates from the same esports organization. You for sure got to understand that these players definitely what? Get five, ten friendlies a day against each other. And now they're probably in the biggest game of their career here playing against each other. Well, they probably would have been expected one to play against each other and two hope that they wouldn't have had to be in this scenario. That basically comes into play as well in Group D. That you know, you have to stay tuned for Group D because we have Seba Luoni and Faco Cohen from 2Z Esports. Basically, not, they're not going to be playing each other directly. However, if both of them win, they're definitely going to be looking for a spot for Sunday. Look at the dinks into Highland. He wins them all. That one was there from Harlem, but another cue of the pass. Find anything on it, Harland. You gotta feel that these, the nerves are, are kicking in for both of these players. This is definitely where they wanted to be in a qualification game for Sunday. And I mean, it is 0 0 minute 28. However, these guys do not want to give anything to each other. We have Mbappe, maybe a dink second pose. There Here's he what we were talking about. It. There's the cutback on the volley, potentially just scuffs the ground. R9 trying to pick up the pieces. Brilliant, great little fake shot. Through Bob. And Bob, a beautiful step over to go down the line. To go on her own, does the Spaniard. A problem again. It's no surprise that this is the most nail biting game here in the tournament so far, and it's backed up with the amount of risks that both players are taking. Both don't really want to take any risks at all. As we see Davis go down the way and with the player lock into Haaland. I mean, these players are bringing everything out, Brandon. He goes for a corner. Here's the pass that he was talking that we were that we was queued. pause menu we shall go now there is a small technical pause in our other matchup on main stage that was still nil nil there was a slight technical pause there we'll get it back underway for you as soon as we can players looking for a spot in tomorrow's championship sunday we hear the game is actually back underway over in that featured matchup still nil nil last time we saw it 27 minutes live now as we're seeing Mendy now on the left back position. Oh, but they're switching. Look, you can see Mendy going right back and they're coming to the left back position now. The player at the moment. To find a way through. Is he on side, Haaland? I mean, it'd be a miracle if he was. We see that first time through a ball back, something that we used to see back in the 22 version of the game. Mendy. The ding second post. I mean, that would have been into Potea's. I don't think that's where he wanted to be. <laughs> yeah, anywhere near that. <laughs> More in the air. You can see everything happening. You see the click in the R1 to trigger the player back, L1 to trigger the player forward. A mistake here. Goes through. It's a very different scenario. Tuned in. This is the con the ball. Dores. It's the first time it's been held here in Sao Paulo in Brazil. It's the fourth time this competition has run. The FC Pro Open landscape this year. Two spots to the FC Pro World Championships on the line. It's about hundred thousand dollars. This is the biggest tournament in South America. You can understand why it means so much to every single competitor that's this made be good. It in this competition. Ball finds his way back into Mbappe. Interchange as well with R9 still. Tiki Taka right here. Alive. It, it was moving so fast there, Paps, and then it's all slowed down all of a sudden. We've got an update. There has been a breakthrough for a goal. It's the gone Columbian. the way of 
Sure, crack. We might have a slight issue with this replay. No, we have got it still for you. One goal to nil, 35 minutes in. You teased. Back to game one we go. Well, maybe this is the goal. No, this is game one. As we see Mendy, you see Haaland second post. He might be a, a ding second post to Haaland. However, he's not in the position. So he might have to build up on this. That replay as soon as we can in the other game. De Bruyne, oh, there it is. Green time. And once again, that is the clear difference here. If you time a shot green, there is no way you're getting in the way unless you've got some unbelievable goalkeeper movement. And Rampasso thought that De Bruyne was just going to do a pass. However, getting just holding the R1, the hour button in order to be able to just be able to take it one forward and then green time a second post. That is 1-0, Garrick. Rampasso has to answer now. Moment this will be for Garrick. Only 18 years of age. First ever time in this competition. Top two in South America qualifier. You could tell that his level has been consistent over the whole season. To this point, he's made five thousand dollars in prize earning. If he was to just get to tomorrow, he would uh, he would equal that and go one step further. <laughs> Top four would be twelve thousand dollars. Come second, you get twenty-five thousand dollars. If you win the competition, you also get that ticket to the FC Pro World Championships and thirty-five thousand dollars. It is the biggest payday here in South America when it comes to pro competitions. For sure, these players have that in the back of their mind. However, I'm pretty sure that their eyes is on the FC Pro Championship spot for the qualification. Mbappe still pulls some sort of issue. What's the, uh... He loves that first time through ball. Sergio Van Dijk and Mendy. Look at Mendy through ball right here. He has to win it. Just about does. Wow. This item. Second pose. There Oina versus Haaland. Waiting for it again. That is one of the things that I saw over and over at my MLS games last week, Brandon. Think second pose into Haaland. And now we have it. This now we have it. Goal. Oh, her crack to I zero. Mean, has there been three goals in this game? No, this, this will game? be the two-one. Sure crack. Wow. It was two nil up in this game. Giuliano has pulled a goal back in that one. That was two-one. That's just going into half time. As we have Rampazzo now, player locking. Oh, no. What's oh, he mistake? doing? The pair lock. Absolute gift for Rampazzo. And it's a goal. The nerves. The Jerry will not want to see again anytime soon, probably anytime this year or in the future. The nerves of the player locking into the other side. And, you know, sometimes the game does not reward you, Brandon, for player locking. And that, this was one of the times. It's 1 1 Rampazzo Herrick. Well, half time in this matchup now. I mean, it's a big game, so we needed to get a big third commentator in the booth. Richard Buckley, welcome in. I mean, what's happened there? I, I, I'm not sure what's happened there. It's a terrible goal to concede, but this game is all square at 1 1. Yeah, no comment <laughs> regarding the goal. Um, it's, uh, it's not very nice to look at, but it could mean everything in the complexion of the tournament being completely honest i mean there are also the moments i'm sure you've been in a few games perhaps where you've conceded a goal like that it could break you it really could you could lose focus you lose mentals and you just find the game it feels like it's going against you and then you concede two or three you're out of it a hundred percent and i mean he definitely did not mean to do that he just conceded and now he's giving rampasso a lifeline you know rampasso now is like okay gary gave me a goal now i have to go and get my second one in order to be able to go through tomorrow. Well, in the other game, we didn't unfortunately get to catch that live. You can see it on your screen now. 2-1, Gerkrak of Colombia leading against Giuliano, who's just come through one of the craziest games against Gabriel Pien. I thought we were going to extra time in that game, but it was a 4-3 winner. You had the chance to speak to both of them too yes. in interviews. How do you think they're dealing with the situation? Both got huge wins in respective games, and I mean, do you think either of them potentially seem more settled, more composed coming into this game after you had the chance to speak to him? I mean, I think that Herkak actually had the second game against Resende where he lost 4-0 and Giuliano actually comes a little bit hot more, like more, 
because he played basically Gabriel Pien all the way onto minute 92, and he did a reverse elastico with Mbappe's second post, and he created a lot of tension. And once you build up on that, you might build a little bit more momentum. However, Gerd Crack is up 2-1 against him, and he might be cooling off a little bit. We'll do our best to keep you up to date with that other game as that also unfolds. We'll keep a close eye on this one, though. Rampazzo against Jerick. He was not cooling off. Us. It's warm. <laughs> it's hot. Here in South Island, Brazil. It's been a very hot few days, hasn't it? Here in Sao Paulo. They'll continue to heat up as we get closer and closer to eternal glory. Especially with eternal glory around the corner for these guys. We see the switch of play every single time. This is something that for FC24 is very effective where both outside backs are unbalancing your instructions. And I mean, with the legs of Mendy and the legs of Team of the Year, uh, Teal, it's, it is absolutely great. Is Jarrett feeling nicely into to Bellingham of all players who's looking to get forward. Unfortunately, that goes out for a goal kick in the end. I really like the play for Werrick. You look at the, the build up. The switches. You're starting to see De Bruyne take a little bit more of a, a prominent role in these games as well. I just love the finesse from De Bruyne. Either side, it's really, really strong, but it's not used all too often. De Bruyne. Mbappe in a battle. He's got a score on oh, no, and he will. Just right place, right time. It's as simple as that. This is the one where Rampasso, where I said he has to go and get the second one. Get it. Got very unlucky there. He wanted to pass it. However, Mbappe got a foot on it. Gives it a one-on-one -on -one versus R9. Nothing to do for the goalkeeper. Two to one. He had already moved him. I don't need to stood near post when it fell to him. Very fortunate, but he's not going to say no. If it's one man that you want in front of goal, it's... It's Brandon Smith. I was going to say R9. However, we definitely want Brandon Smith in front of goal. What would you have done there, Brandon? You would have shot a second post, first post? <laughs> exactly what I would have done. <laughs> Open up the body, left foot, pass into the corner. Yeah, exactly that. Richard knows me too well. <laughs> I know what Richard would have done. He would have skied it. <laughs> Get your legs just through it. Yeah. Yeah, Brandon would have not green time to there. Well, speaking of comebacks, we might be seeing one. I see the finesse here. Teased it with... Kevin De Bruyne and that finesse at the end of the box was a little bit too predictable though. Tries to disguise that pass in the background. Still could be alive. R9 back to Haaland. It's just bouncing around the box. The nerves are kicking in for these two players. You can see a little bit of, you know, playing hot potato with the ball there. And it might fall in the wrong spot. You've obviously played in huge games, perhaps, across your career. How does the nerves, because we say nerves affect players, what does it actually do to you in the booth? Are you second-guessing yourself? Are you... What is it? Like what? How? What is nerves? You're definitely second guessing yourself. You're definitely thinking that, hey, look, maybe I should not do the easy pass. However, in football, you have to be simple, and you have to be very simple as well in FC24, and you have to be one step ahead of your opponent. But nerves definitely do kick in, and you might make a couple mistakes here and there, and that's what Garrick. That's what cost Eric uh, Garrick in the first goal. 18 years of age, in the biggest stage of South America. He hasn't looked too phased, has he? We see the, the left stick of Ona, which he moves so well down the wing. Great ball. Oh, what a ball. Not what you expect from Haaland, playing passes like that, but he's got it in the locker. Bellingham looking to twist and turn. Great defending there for Rampazzo. Staying yeah, composed, not pulling players out. Way as well. Went the right way. Well, let's have a look at an update. This is the goal. Yeah, this was the, the goal, the 2-1, just scrappy, really scrappy on the edge of the box. And no particular positive reaction. It was quite negative, to be honest. So Rampazzo, on the other hand, locked in. Locked in, did not even celebrate. I don't even know if he scored. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in from Garrett with the last 25 minutes left on the clock here. Remember, whoever loses is out of this competition. It looks like there's been a switch of gear from Rampasso. I feel like he's more in control Pulling now that down. he's yeah. yeah, that he's two one up. He does not want to take any chances. He I mean, as they say that, <laughs> as I say that he thinks it, he thinks it to Haaland and Haaland does not win it. But you can see the trigger run by Mendy here. And now Bellingham. So fast he's as well, go. isn't it? Yep. Bellingham again, Ooh. still just hangs on to that. Wants to go back outside. Haaland is in the wrong spot for the dink right here. But look at him, he's going second post now. 
He might do it now. Turn. And there's toe to toe as he looks just to pull the French fullback out of position. He's done it. There's the Haaland flick on. Oh. Back to De Bruyne. It would be nice on the volley, but he's not going to take it. Build up is still nice. He's taking his time. Went to corner for his efforts. Into the pause menu we go. Let's jump across if we can to the other game. There's also in the final 25 minutes or so. Beautiful studio here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Look at the fans. They're all just, you know, the nerves are basically everywhere here from Gerrick and Rampazzo. What's it like playing in an atmosphere, perhaps? You did it in Austin. Honestly, it's just, it's, it's what you basically play for. It's what you play for. FC 24, it's a game where you want to be playing in front of people, and this is it. And these are live shots here. As we see 2-2. Two, two. Go crap versus Juliano! Is that Cole Palmer? Big goal! Cole Palmer. Second post finish. He was popular in the MLS, wasn't he, Cole Palmer? For Alfonso. And we're seeing how important he is here in Sao Paulo. It's the Chelsea man, believe it or not. Alfonso might have started a trend here. And speaking of finesse. What a finish. Finishes, how about that one for the collection? Three goals to two. Giuliano now leads. Has he turned he was 2-0 down. Yeah, he's turned it around. 2-0 down against Gurkrak. There's a ton of game left, though. Just, you know, these nine minute halves. The game is not done yet. Minute 70, back in the day, might feel like minute 50. Could be on for an instant reply, though. The player lock. Just tease, that's the mind game. Salison. Happy to take it there and still play out of what was a dangerous position. Now we jump back to our main stage game. 20 minutes left on this one. Gerrick looking for an equaliser from this attack here. Alan is not on the spot where he wants to be now. We see the introduction. It's for this! Kevin De Bruyne! Once again! What a finish. Pulling out Bruyne. all the stops. He didn't green time it. Did he green time it? I don't think he did. He didn't, he didn't. Five star week for Kevin De Bruyne, Finesse Plus, playstyle coming into place. Let's have another look at it, because he deserved another look. Let's go crack earlier on today. And unfortunately, if you are just joining us, Gabriel Pien eliminated from the tournament. A truly remarkable player, but his tournament does come to a close as we back on board here with live shots of the Condomol Eliminadores. We've just had so many goals today. 2-2! Two, two. We just wanted to show you everything that's been going on from around the grounds. This is also happening live now. Giuliano. How did Gurkrat get here? He beat Gabriel Pien, as you just saw in the earlier round. But his tournament could be coming to a close right now unless he's got something to pull out of the fire. Well, there'll be two Argentines that will be sitting in the background hoping that they can see their fellow national teammate pull through. Facu Cohen, Seba Leone. They're in action in Group D. We see Tony Kroos getting or so. introduced. Tony Kroos getting introduced into the game in the biggest stage in South America. I normally see him in a pack and he normally goes straight into an SPC. <laughs> Fighter. All, all day. <laughs> He's just not fast enough. <laughs> this card could be, though. He could be the designer. Well, we haven't seen extra time properly yet here. Connevoi Libertadores, we could see it now. Unless Ronaldinho has got other ideas. Cutback finds Haaland. Haaland still drops the shoulder. Bellingham, brilliant V. Allison with an even bigger save. Had yeah. to shoot with Haaland. Yeah, the L1 heel to heel, though, by Jude Bellingham there. He had to green time a second post in order for it to go in. We're going to see another ridiculous 30 yard plus finesse shot. What ball? That one could be flick it down as well to get it back. That was very composed to by Rampazzo there. On the 12 minutes in this game. Has to be very careful here. You do not want to lose the ball there. As we know, Nathan SR is only one player that's gone through from this group, eh? who will be joining him in tomorrow's Championship Sunday. Only eight players can be there. And only two of those can book a ticket in the FC Pro World Championships later this year. 
The switch is always on, and as, as we see Jude Bellingham get introduced at right back position now. Chance. And Paul's out. Loves the dink. Looking for the dink. Allison just about. Got two hands on that in the end. Last nine minutes in this game. This game looks to finish. Potentially before the other game. Hernandez on the way to try and find this more important. Winning goal, Bellingham, Finesse. De Bruyne. The angle not quite there, could be on now for Mbappe. Big save, Alisson. Come huge. And Parzo just hanging in the game still. Jerick, there it is, flicks it on, Alisson, big punch. I've just been watching this game for a little bit, taking a seat back. There seems to be, I'm going to say, a lack of composure in the final third. Not greening shots, waiting for the goalkeeper, shooting the side that the goalkeeper's moved to. Just one person, one player, Rampazzo, Guerrick, just take an extra touch in the box and just hold it and wait and take your chance when it comes. Time's running out. There might be just enough time for one more chance for either of these two. It might be Rampazzo who will get the last attack off the game now. Or not. Mistake. Massive win there from De Bruyne. There's the back Delivery. post. He's going to fall back to Haaland on a plate. You can hear it. You can see what it means. Just took his time. Didn't shoot first time. Let the ball come to you. Wait for the goalkeeper to come out and finish. It's not rushed. As we're going to see the final moments. We could be on for an equalise. This is the last attack of the game in our other matchup. Are we on for an equalise from Gerkrak? No. No, we're not. He's going to fall out the tournament. The Colombian falls out the tournament. Giuliano of Argentina. And Team R10 goes on through. For tomorrow's Championship Sunday. And he has had a difficult run of games, especially that Gabriel PN 4-3 win. Here's some highlights from our main feature game, which is the last game to conclude from Group A and B. As we say goodbye to four players and congratulations to four more. Here's where you see the cue of the pass. Where you see the constant pressure come. Uh, Rampaz is actually probably going to have one more where he has to be composed. He has to listen to Richard and be composed and let the player, the other players step up and be able to finish. And that's what Garrick did. He actually shot it with Haaland's right foot. Yep. But it's team of the year, Haaland. But it's just taking that touch as well, just holding it, just waiting when the ball comes to you. He didn't try and pass it first time. He didn't try and win the header or yep. shoot on a volley. Here we are. It could be Rampazzo's last minute. Oh, we got one, maybe even two attacks with the nine minute half. Massive switch on. Only Cruz. He wants to try and use it. Ten, and there's, where's that oh. ball? There it is. There's a the step over. Big, big tackle. Ruben Diaz. From the Portuguese defender. The press is in. Yep. Oh, he's won it back. High up on the field. Even Wendy Reynard's involved trying to. Get possession back in the hands of Rampazzo. This could be it. There's the flick on. Just just needs to take his time. And it looks like Jerick is going to be in a championship Sunday tomorrow. The joint youngest player in the competition has had to go down Far to the lower side. bracket. Yep. And he's on his way into that top and eight he's done it. guaranteed. 18 years of age going into championship Sunday, Brandon and Rich. Look what it means. Just look at those scenes in the crowd right now. Jubilation, adulation for Gary. Rampazzo frustrated, devastated. Because in both games that he's lost, he probably should have won. He probably had chances and he will look back as his own self that he expected better from Espe him. Especially for Rampazzo as well, because Rampazzo, he won his first game. Yep. Then he was one win away from qualification tomorrow. He had to go down to the, the lower bracket, get a second chance, a second bite of the, uh, the cherry, and he just couldn't do it. He lost 2-1 against Nathan SR. One goal. Penalty five, as well. Yeah, one goal this time around. This is the gift. You have to feel for Rampazzo here, because Gary actually gave him a goal, and he still ends up losing the game. I mean, just comes to tell you that you got to be very careful with Gerrick tomorrow.
Well, he is in the top eight guaranteed. We've just found our four players that will be going through on this side of the bracket. Juliana and Resende come out on top in Group B and Nathan, SR and Gerrick from Group A fall through. You could argue some big shots in there as well, especially for Zazinho as well. Just wasn't out of the races today, was he? Zazinho and Gabriel Pien for me, two big shocks to be eliminated. I don't really think we like we've spoke about Resende too much, but yes, we're going to the goal. We're going to get a chance to speak about him tomorrow because he'll be there. And I think he probably goes far 100%. in this tournament. He looks really cool. He looks really composed. And I said it earlier when I was here with Casey and Ryan, and I'm going to say it again with you two. I think having PhD as his teammate who has gone on to achieve unbelievable things this year, there's just that little bit of extra pressure on him who goes, I'm on this team as well. I'm part of Team Ajax. Don't forget about me because I can win and I've done this before. I won't be surprised if he goes and lifts the 100%, trophy. 100%, 100%. I mean, he's probably in the shadows of PhD right now. PhD is the champion of SC Pro, but however, he wants to make a statement here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. He has to as well, because look, in the, in the nice way possible, he couldn't play in the E Divise because those spots were already taken. What? He hasn't really had a league to play in, has he? This is this is his way of getting to the FC Pro World Championships. And uh, look, he's been a two-time world finalist before. He's been a E Nations champion too. He's done it all, has Resende. I mean, look, he's in the top eight tomorrow and we are looking forward to seeing how he is going to get on. Here's some of the highlights then that you may not have seen from that matchup. Well, Gurkrak was actually 2 0 up in the game, Richard, and went on to actually lose it 3 2. Yeah, he certainly did. I think when you look at the small margins, the individual moments, a little bit of luck, a little bit of nerves playing a factor as well. And that's for me why I was so surprised not to see one of Gabriel Pien or Zazinho progress through because they've been here before. They've lifted trophies, they've been in high, high pressure situations, and and they, they and know what it takes to yeah. get a win over the line. And they've played FC, you know, before in many different difficult places from Romania when it was FC Champions Cups. They've done they've done it all and they will be absolutely gutted that that is potentially their season done and dusted there. Of course, you are tuning in to the Condable E Libertadores. We've just concluded Group A and B. We found four players that are through to tomorrow's knockout stages. Juliana and Resende from Group B. Uh, we'll have a look at the brackets to remind you of what has happened. We'll have a look at Group A first, if we can, to give you the lowdown there. Those are the players that have qualified. Nathan SR, previously of SPQI, you would have remembered him from the uh, EA Sports Cup early last year. And then uh, Jerick through to the knockout as well, one of the youngest players in the competition. First ever time in the Elliptodores, Richard, and he's in a top eight. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really well done, Nathan SR and Guerrick. Let's have a look at Group B and see how that has taken shape and who will be going through as part of the final eight tomorrow. It's Resende and Juliano. That's how it broke down. Resende beat Juliano in his opening match before taking down Gurkrak four goals to nil. Juliano in the loser's bracket, Gabriel Pien, and then a huge win, as we just saw, live on the main stage to get his spot at Championship Sunday. Well, the best part is, Rich, we're only halfway there. We've we still are. got Group C and Group D to conclude. However, there was Pablo here. He's disappeared. He's actually gone to go and speak to Juliano right now. How's he feeling? He's in Championship Sunday. He is in Championship Sunday, Brandon, and here we are with the winner of what? Group A? Group B? Group A Group B? Group A. Group A. And, he, you know, he actually beat his own team at R10, Her Crack. And, I mean, what does it mean to be in Championship Sunday. ¿Qué se siente pasar a la ronda de mañana? No, no, increíble. Eh, la verdad que no lo puedo creer todavía. Eh, mi primer presencial y ya que haya pasado de grupos es una locura. Eh, así que nada, estoy muy contento. He is very happy at the fact that he's in Championship Sunday. It is his first LAN event and he's actually done it and make it all the way onto Sunday. Here we are again against Hercrack. ¿Qué se siente haberle ganado un, a un compañero tuyo? What does it feel to beat one of your teammates from Arts and Esports? Eh, creo que es un sabor medio amargo, ya que es alguien de mi equipo. Eh, no me gusta gritarle los goles a la gente de mi equipo y eso, pero bueno, es algo que sale dentro de mí. Somos de Sudamérica y, y bueno, eh, lo mejor para él, que es un gran jugador. He actually has a sour taste in order to be able to celebrate his goals against his own teammate. However, you know, at the end of the day, we're from South America and, he, you know, every single goal matters. And he actually made a comeback into 3-2. You were losing 2-0. What did you do in order to come back? You were losing 2-0. What did you do to regress to the partido? Eh, arranqué bastante mal, eh, iba 2 a 0, puse una pausa y mi coach me ayudó, cambiamos un par de cosas y creo que eso pude llevar adelante el partido. I was actually losing 2-0, we made a pause, I actually spoke to my coach, we made, a couple we made a couple changes here and there and it actually ended up paying off. Juliano, 
Congratulations, best of luck to tomorrow. Wish you the absolutely best. Guys, stay tuned, we're gonna go into a break. You do not want to miss Group C and D. This is just getting started. Take care. Welcome back from the break. We're here in Sao Paulo. My name is Ryan Pessoa. I'm joined by the lovely Casey. We've seen some top action across Group A and Group B. Last minute goals, celebrations all around just in, this, in the um, arena with us today. There's been a lot going on. A lot of energy, a few upsets, a few situations that I did not anticipate. Zizinho going out early, Gabriel Pian going out early. Yep. I've enjoyed every second of it. I've yep. been on my toes the entire time. It's two of the household names that have pedigree, not just in, in South America and in Latin America, but throughout the whole of the FC24 scene. They're players that have performed well. They just didn't, I guess, reach their level of standards or res rel level of recent performances when it mattered most. And I think on the other end of it, we have a player like Resende who is coming in yep. here and absolutely dominating. He makes it look so easy. Has he conceded a goal? No goals conceded. Seven goals scored, zero conceded. He's been flawless in his games. And he's just, if he continues like that, genuinely, it's going to be almost impossible to stop him. He's been incredible. And we can take a look at some of the highlights from the games we saw before the break. 
We also saw Rampazzo up against Gredic. This was the goal. The less said about it, the better. I'll be honest, it's a shocking goal to concede. And this was a goal, again, from Rampazzo. A slice of fortune to win the ball back. And this was a finesse shot from Gredic. 20 minutes to go to get himself back into the game, Casey. He's tend to, he tends to tee up a lot of those finesse shots from outside the box. He does. He absolutely loves the finesse shot. We've seen some very, very good goals and a couple uh, iffy goals right there. Easy shot with Holland. We've seen a lot of Holland chances here as well as we see him celebrate that one. We see another goal off of the corner. He goes short here. Quick back pass with De Bruyne up top with Holland. We've seen it so many times, Ryan. Yeah, they're the ones that they're almost impossible to stop. Harlan with his, of course, his physical presence in the air. The aerial plus play style comes into effect. We see the play a lot cancel there towards the byline from Gerkrak. The Lacroqueta cancelled through the legs of the goalkeeper. But it was Juliano with the response. He was 2-0 down in this game. And it was an important goal just before halftime to get back into the game and give him a lifeline. Cole Palmer off the bench. You could argue an obscure choice. But he was the man to whip that ball in, headed down from Harlan, a touchdown from R9 to find the back of the net. And Casey, this was the last goal. This was the last goal, in fact. And here we have Cole Palmo running into the box and he just takes it with the finesse. He doesn't even pass it in. I wouldn't have anticipated that to happen. I maybe would have thought it was going to be the extra pass, but he took it. Yep, opted for the finesse shot. And this is Group C that's going to be taking place very shortly. We have Young up against Edson. Fonseca up against Dudu27. This is a top group. A lot of South American players, all, of, all the players in this group are Brazilian. That's a common theme. You'll see that a lot of Brazilian players throughout this tournament, 12 out of the 16 that have made it this far are Brazilian. Casey, this is a top, top group. Another great group happening alongside this one is Group D. Yes, so we do have a top and bottom player here. Seba Leone topped his group going into qualifiers. Guy Barros was the, in the bottom group going through. Baldo was on the top side. And Faku Cohen was going through the bottom as well. We've seen a lot of Faku Cohen. Yeah, I'm, FC Pro. exactly. I'm really excited to see how he plays coming into this tournament. Of course, FC Pro, he narrowly got eliminated in the group stages. But his, I thought, for me, he performed at a level that was honestly good enough to progress further on. He narrowly missed out. I believe it was goal difference because he ended up retrieving the, the points in the last week of the FC Pro Open, but he needs to redeem himself. He needs to bounce back and show himself why he's one of the best players in Latin America. I think he can as well, because one thing that I love about Falco Cohen is that he's going to be scoring a lot of goals. Yep. We might see a lot of goals being conceded as well, but I think that's pretty consistent across the South American gameplay. Like yep. We have seen so many goals. I would love to have a total goal it's, count, so if anyone wants to let me know, let me know in the chat, but we've seen so many tonight, and it's been an absolute joy to watch. Yeah, talking about joy to watch, we do have our very own Richard Buckley and Rodrigo ready to walk out or to watch all the players walk out. We're going to get into that very, very shortly um, with the players they prepare for groups C and D. But yeah, let's head to a video just before we do that. Para mim jogar como é bom em Libertadores é a realização de um sonho. Sempre treinei a vida inteira para chegar nesse momento, então me sinto preparado. É uma coisa que eu sempre sonhei e esse ano eu consegui realizar. É o torneio mais importante da América do Sul, então fico feliz de estar aqui pela primeira vez. Eu comecei através do, do meu pai. Meu pai jogava muito futebol virtual e ele, eu sempre fui vendo ele jogar. A gente foi evoluindo e chegando no cenário competitivo. A diferença de jogar em casa e presencial é, comple é completamente diferente. É outra, outra parada. O jogo é completamente diferente. Você tem a vibe da torcida junto, do público. Primeira vez que o, é, minha família vai poder me assistir em um torneio presencial. É, participei de outros e não, não pude estar com eles, então isso vai ser bem especial para mim. Então tem que manter a cabeça sempre no lugar e é muito diferente jogar. Só quem joga mesmo sabe a diferença. Na verdade, é uma adrenalina que, que me gusta, ter a tua rival em frente, poder gritar os goles, escutar que te los gritem também. Acho que aqui é onde verdadeiramente se vê quem são os melhores. Para mim, o favorito é Yang. Um rival que não, não me gostaria de enfrentar é eh, Yang. Já nos hemos enfrentado presencialmente há pouco. Eh, foi um partido para cada um. Sinto que são partidos muito peleados e prefiro jogar a, jogar a outros jogadores. Acredito que eu estou num nível muito bom hoje. E se eu fizer o meu jogo, manter a calma, manter o mental, acredito que eu posso ser campeão. A experiência de jogar em 2022 foi, foi muito boa. Fiquei em quarto lugar. Então acho que eu adquiri experiência suficiente para chegar nessa edição e conseguir conquistar o título. A sensação de jogar em casa, né, no próprio país, é muito, muito boa. Poder ter amigos, família, indo assistir você jogar é algo muito maravilhoso, assim, sem, sem palavras para descrever. 
Creo que, que este torneo se juegue en, en Brasil es algo muy bueno. Nos beneficia más quizás a los argentinos que a los brasileños porque ellos tienen la presión de que tienen que ganar sí o sí y nosotros estamos visitantes, entonces creo que todos queríamos jugarla acá y, y es lo mejor. Favorito a competición soy yo. Creo que por mis actuaciones en los torneos recientes eh, no vengo a buscar otra cosa que no sea el, la Copa. Espero mucho que domingo esté levantando la Copa y conseguir la gloria eterna. Voltamos aqui com mais Copa Gomebol e Libertadores, diretamente de São Paulo. Temos torcida, temos mais jogos, temos animação. Richard, the hype in Brazil, it's real, people are excited. You still excited? This atmosphere is electric, it's been unbelievable all afternoon long and we're only halfway there. We've still got eight incredible players and uh, I cannot wait to see what happens this afternoon. We have more players coming. A gente tem mais gente vindo. Mais uma vez, eu estou pronto. A torcida está pronta. They look ready. I'm ready, as always. I'm You're ready. still ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Let's get them out. Vamos chamar os jogadores, então. Começando com Cebaluone e o Guimarro. É a Tuzi, mais uma vez na disputa. Tuzi com o um jogador argentino. Temos o Gui Baus da Netshoes. E up next, Baldo e Facu Cohen. Mais dois jogadores da Tuzi, é muita gente. Dudu e Fonseca. E, finalmente, o featured matchup from Group C e D: Young vs. Edson! É o Young, o Edson fazendo a disputa principal. Teremos mais quatro partidas, todo mundo pronto. Richard, vamos get them going! Vamos get it ready! Estamos seeing the final handshakes on the stage right now. Tos the esports have been loud all afternoon long. Will that continue? We will wait and see. But this is going to be an incredible set of games. Temos mais jogos. Os jogos serão emocionantes. A Tuzi está em peso. O Edson é da CM. Todo mundo pronto. Thank you, Richard and Rodrigo. They've already teed us up for our featured match. That's going to be Young up against Edson. A huge juggernaut in the South American scene, Young. He's performed at many events globally. He's won competitions in South America. He performed at the FC Pro Open earlier on this season, and he's shown his ability. But for Edson, his opponent, relatively, I wouldn't say a, new, a newcomer. He's been at events before, but he's definitely going to be the, the underdog in this matchup. Yeah, one thing I will say about Young is that he has taken down some fierce competition going into the qualifying stage. I'm talking the likes of Paulo Neto. Yeah. Gabriel Payan in the qualifying yes, stage. Yes, exactly. He did not have an easy route to get here. And I think that that is motivating him going into this. Stage. Yeah, absolutely. He's coming in brimming of confidence. I, saw, I spoke to him earlier on. I saw him yesterday as well preparing in the media day. And he's very, very confident. He backs himself. And he has a sort of a point to prove in, in the sense that he was narrowly eliminated in the FC Pro Open. And he wants to redeem himself. And as we said, this is the the featured game in Group C, Young up against Edson. But of course, there are other games going on as this game is going on as well. In Group C, we have Fonseca up against Dudu. Dudu, a player that was a runner-up in an Ilipaduris beforehand as well. So he's a player that has, has had experience performing at LAN events on the biggest stages of all in South America. But there are so many important games, Casey. Even though this is round one, the group format is out in an elimination stage. So you want to make sure you get up to the best start as possible. Yeah, so if you are just tuning into the broadcast, only two from each group will make it out to the championship final Sunday. And so winning is obviously the goal here, but you only have to do it twice. And that might sound easy, yeah. but it is not. It is definitely not. And I know that it's one game at a time. They're looking to secure those two wins and not drop into that lower bracket. Of course, it's, it's very important. It's win two before you lose two to advance to championship Sunday. But of course, the top two from the remaining eight qualify for the world championships later on this season. And of course, still have their chance to get their hands on the trophy and be crowned the Conmebol e Libertadores 2024 champion. We can see the players preparing to get into the games, to get their coaches behind them. 
Funny story, Casey. We've seen in the previous rounds, the previous groups, that obviously Tuzzy Esports, they have a number of representatives in this tournament. Who coaches who? We've seen the coach have to sit out because he wants to remain impartial. Yeah, I think you have to stay unbiased because if you're looking at one group here, there's three out of four Tuzzy players. And so you don't have three coaches to go all around. So at that point, you kind of just have to say, you guys are on your own. There's no favors here. And you kind of just have to play your best game without a coach. Yep, exactly. You can see on screen there the achievements from Young. Age 21, of course, from Brazil. E World Cup Championships in 2022, finished top nine. He's a two times South American champion and EA Sports FC Pro Open representative, finishing top five, narrowly missing out, just losing to Anders in that game. He's been incredible, incredibly consistent across the last couple of years, but he would love to get his hands on the trophy. On the other half here, we do have Edson. And fun fact, so I traveled to Germany for one of the virtual Bundesliga events, and Edson won it last year. Wow. He traveled all the way from Brazil yep. and won in virtual Bundesliga. So he has won a few competitions here and there, but never e Libertadores. And so I think that that is probably a higher priority considering he's from South America, and this has just probably been a dream for his. And so to make it here, has been fantastic for him, but he is looking to secure one of those spots going into tomorrow. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think we're going to be seeing goals between these two players. You spoke about the players that Young had to overcome. He ended up winning nine goals to eight in the winner's bracket to get here against Paolo Neto, knocking him down to the loser bracket. And in his game to qualify, he played Gabriel Pien, who we saw earlier on in Group B, defeating him 10 goals to six. So he's unbeaten in the, in the winner bracket coming into today's Conmebol e Libertadores. And I will say, Ryan, you mentioned Paulo Neto. Absolute shock that he didn't make it to this stage of the competition because I think in past years, he's done really, really well. He hasn't yep. won it, but I recently just watched him play in EMLS. He made it to the stage there as well. So he's a constant player that makes it to these broadcasts, but this year, he just couldn't quite cut it. I mean, he has to go up against the likes of Young, who he also lost to in yep. the FC Pro. So yeah, Paulo Neto, unfortunate outcome for him, but uh, I think we did expect him to be here. I think it just shows the level of competition is just raising every single year. You've got newcomers that are eager to make their mark on the scene. You've got players that have performed in previous years that maybe have had sort of a down period, but now are picking it back up, getting their motivation levels back up and their performances as well. But just reaching here is a massive accomplishment, but that's not enough for the players here. They want to get that extra step further, even just making it to tomorrow to remain in the conversation to get into the FC Pro Championships at the later stages of this season, of course, fighting for the trophy tomorrow. We're almost ready to kick off our game. Of course, a featured match between Young and Edson in Group C. Fonseca and Dudu again playing in Group C as well. Group D going on simultaneously. Sebeluoni up against Gibados 10. Funny story, or funny fact, I should say, Casey. Gibaras has scored over double the goals Sebeluoni has scored wow. in the qualifiers coming up to this point, which is... Interesting. Yeah, that is a statement, to say at the least. And, of course, Baldo up against Faku Cohen in Group D. As I said, we're very, very close to getting off. Now, question for you, Ryan. As someone who's competed before, are you thinking game by game, one by one, or is your eye on all of the outcomes that could happen, the $35,000, the trophy? Are you even thinking about that at this stage? Oh, it's very difficult. I think when I first started off, for me, I'll be completely honest, my eyes were on the prize. The prize <laughs> was, oh, that was the main, the main thing I was focusing on. But of course, when you get old, you get more experience. You start to, to change your focus onto other things. We're going to be going over to game number three, Baldo versus Faku Cohen, whilst we wait for the featured match to get underway. We be Baldo in... The black strip kicking from left to right. Faku Cohen kicking from right to left. I think Casey, we spoke about Faku Cohen performing this year. He actually had to come through the loser bracket in order to make it here today. Whereas Baldo came through the winner's bracket. Faku Cohen losing against Fonseca, who's another player in this competition playing in Group C. So he had to do it through the loser bracket. So maybe that shows his mental fortitude as he pushes forward. I will say, though, Ryan, that doesn't necessarily, it didn't have any outcome on group A and B because we, we had two players come in through the loser's bracket from qualifying. Yep. Two from the upper, two from the lower. Yep. And so I'm curious if that is going to be consistent with group C and D. And so we definitely shouldn't be counting out any of those lower bracket competitors from qualifying. It's a good interception there. Doesn't fall the way off Faku Cohen. But as you said, yeah, I think we saw in group B, Gerkrak had two chances to qualify. And I think those are the painful ones, knowing that he lost the game in the winner's bracket against Resende and had another chance 
to progress. Unfortunately, it didn't fall in his favor. Our main feature game is ready. So we're going to be jumping over very shortly. Almost found the back of the net from a finesse shot. Finesse shot plus Casey, the play styles this year. I think they've added just a different element to the game in terms of the way you set up your squads, the players you have, even off the bench. The aerial plus play styles people are using to try and nullify Erling Haaland. I'm a massive fan of it. I don't know about you, but I feel like just, just having that different element of, of being able to surprise your opponent with Travellers, finesse shots, heading. I think so too. And especially as the game adapts, you constantly have to learn. And if you're stagnant as a player and you don't adapt to whatever new introductions the game has for you, you're not going to win yeah. at, at any stage. And so you definitely have to keep up with all of the different types of adaptations and metas that occur in the game. But here we are back to our featured match, which is Young versus Edson. Yeah, don't worry. To the viewers, we didn't miss anything. I know that chance came in just before we switched over, but it didn't lead to a goal scoring, or a goal, I should say, between the two players. As we said, our featured game, Young up against Edson. Young loves his player locks. He loves his back post crosses, his reverse elasticals, all the skill moves, the catalog of skill moves that he has at his disposal. His Young building forward. Couldn't find the space in the box there with the skill moves. It's going to be Edson to get his first taste of possession in this game. Giving away quickly there as Young can start an attack. Keeper's going to come for it, just about claims it. And as we're looking at some of the squads here on the pitch, we should be reminded that there aren't many restrictions in terms of this competition. The only real restriction is that you have to have only here we go. South American icons oh. and that is almost an opportunity missed there. I would be upset. That's a golden opportunity. It's not the person you want in those goal scoring situations, though. Theo Hernandez, great defensively. It's just offensively, you wouldn't really expect there to be a huge chance. But going back to our other game, Faku Cohen against Baldo. It's still nil-nil in this game. It's a common theme throughout all of our games so far in Group C and Group, C, group D. Sorry, And of course, just starting off in some of our games that were staggered. I will say, Ryan, all of these players competing in these secondary groups have been sitting in the back running friendlies and probably sitting there with their nerves. And I think that that's why we're seeing a little bit more slow of a start yeah, you become in these a, two groups. Yeah, you become a lot more tentative after watching your fellow competitors just playing out. You can maybe get a few, of course, these players are at the top level, but even just getting a few tips in terms of who works off the bench, how can you nullify the back post crosses. And here we go, Baldo in the box, the step over, the near post finish. And that is exactly the start Baldo would have wanted against Faku Cohen. He breaks the deadlock, Casey. 20 minutes in, R9 Ronaldo. Who else? Who else? I mean, you can only have South American icons, and R9 is definitely one of those icons of choice. He is a man that is scoring goals for many of our competitors here today. And fantastic finish from R9. Yeah, even just the exit there with the step over. He doesn't do it straight directly to the side. That would have slowed him down a little bit. He just does it to the angle to give him the setup for the shot and of course he had that arrows it into the roof of the net top corner great start from Baldo spoke about squad restrictions Casey yes unlimited budget any player at your disposal the only caveat to that is the icons that you use have to be from Latin America have to be from South America so you we've only really seen R9 Ronaldo we see Ronaldinho off the bench but the makeup of the squads are very, very similar. You're going to have Pateas in more or less every squad. Erling Haaland, Mbappe, Virgil van Dijk. I think those are the staples. The rest of the squad is sort of up for contention, in my opinion. Definitely. I think that as we're looking at some of the squads here, there's only a little bit of variation. And I think a lot of that variation depends on which player style plus you really work best with. And even with the fullbacks, I think we're seeing a few Ona battles as well. Because yep. She brings that little extra touch depending on how you're attacking. Um, some of these also have the long ball pass as well. And so it really just depends on how you're trying to attack in that final third. But I'm I'm impressed with these teams, especially because it's very different than what we saw in FC Pro. Yep. The low budget there, you have to get really creative. But we're seeing the best of the best teams here. Yeah, exactly. It's Baldo turning defense to attack. He's trying to find space, twisting and turning. Good defending, though, from Faku Cohen. Marshalling Baldo off the ball there. I think we've seen two sides of it. We've seen 
players using taller players at fullback, Jude Bellingham. We even saw Zerksy at right back. Whereas now we're seeing smaller fullbacks, a team of the on a value in, in right back. For me personally, I would opt for a taller fullback just to try and nullify Erling Haaland at the back post. But maybe that that works against you. You're too busy worrying know. about Haaland. And then I don't know just, if anyone can nullify yeah, Haaland at this thing. point. So I don't know if I'd waste that yeah, spot. Yeah, I, saw, I understand that. I think as we've seen Ferland Mendy as well, he's got an item that has been upgraded in game. So he's been a, a player that has been selected in that right back as well of chemistry. But I'm just too scared of having a fullback that's just way smaller than Erling Haaland. That just, it petrifies me. Yeah, I mean, it does create different chances with the type of cross that is able to be created. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think, I've seen a lot of Jude at right back, but I yeah. still don't think that he can go up against Haaland. No, that's No the one thing. can do it. Yeah. And obviously the only person who you could argue is, is himself. And you don't really want to move him out of the, <laughs> Run all the, way the offensive setup. Yep. Oh, it's a great move. Again, he's done it again. Can he go for the extra pass? He is. Space off when I thought he was going to go for the the finesse to the far post there with Arna and Ronaldo. It, it fell to Pateas heading it wide as well. I think Baldo seems very, I wouldn't say rigid, but the way he builds up his attacks work really well. We're going to hop into a replay. Fonseca up against Dudu. It's Fonseca who breaks the deadlock. A driven pass in from De Bruyne. A near post finish from Mbappe off the inside of the post. 20 minutes in. And we're jumping over again. We're able to bounce between a lot of these games. Young up against Edson. Young did take the lead. So hopefully we'll be able to see a replay of that later on. But Casey, it's a perfect start for Young. It'll give him that just sort of the relief in the sense that he's starting off as he means to go on. Definitely. I know we noticed in the first groups that everyone who scored first in the first round ended up winning that game. Yep. And so I'm curious to see if that is carrying over to these groups as well. I think it just sets you up mentally and it kind of you breathe a, a sigh of relief yeah because if you go down early it is nine and a halves and there's plenty of time but like you feel a bit more rushed you might be thinking should i be taking more risks i need to get back in there and so you always want to be going up first yeah look at the space keeper just about gets there there's a lot of space this is genuinely anti end to end we dropped, jumped in at the right time you would think it's the last 10 minutes let alone the first 20. look at mbappe on the run as well the one thing i love about the way young plays is the triggering of runs he's not afraid to to play a risky pass he knows a lot of the skill moves in game the player locks all the mechanics to try and break his opponent down and here we go building up turns with him with our nine shot cancel Pateas finds the back of the net and that is two nil to young he's got a lot of support in the crowd there I thought Casey maybe he overplayed it a little bit, which has been a common theme. We've spoke about it. Off yes. It's genuinely it's happening a lot more than I, I, I genuinely can't really understand why. But for that situation there, it worked perfectly for Young. Yeah, his patience is very, very impressive. I do feel like a lot of players, but we do have a replay here from Young and quick one there. We weren't able to see the full build up. But the thing about Young is that he is looking for the perfect opportunity. Yes. He's not just yeah. going to take any old chance. He might seem like he's through on goal, but he's got to make sure that he has the precision to do it. And sometimes it's a little bit risky, but it does work out for him yep, a lot exactly. of the time. I think he's just about going to defend this. Virgil van Dijk up against Haaland down the wing, but he's given away possession. Can Edson get a quick response? He's got De Bruyne, he's got Pateas. We couldn't find that quick snappy pass into the box. But as I was saying with Young, irrespective of the scoreline, the way he plays is always on the front foot. It always. Is. It's ob obviously, when the game reaches maybe 88 minutes, he resorts to game management, he keeps possession, which is very, very normal. But in this situation, 2-0, we've seen a lot of players in the past, they sort of rest on their laurels, they go a little bit more defensive. He's someone that just keeps on going, keeps on trying to, trying to keep on scoring more goals. That's clearly offside there. So pause is cued from Edson. Yeah, the thing about Young, I love it. He's continuously pushing forward. But I do feel sometimes it's a bit too much because yeah. he's opening up chances for a counterattack and he does concede a decent amount of goals as well. We saw it in FC Pro. Yeah, exactly. It sort of gives you, if, as, you're, as an opponent, I played against players that, that play a similar play style. It sort of leaves you with belief that you can get back into the game, regardless of the scoreline, just because you see the space. However, he makes it seem as if you've got the space and then manages to manually track the runs. He cuts the other lanes as well. So he, he does really, really well defensively just to try and nullify as many opportunities as possible. Gonna be 
Young pushing forward again. Here we go in the box. Green. And that is goal number three. 28 minutes played. Young is on fire. Absolutely on fire. I think that Henson is not quite sure what to do with himself here. The pressure is a bit too much in terms of how much Young is attacking and creating those chances. And he's just not able to stop him. Yep, he's been caught off guard. And he needs to bounce back. And another fact within Group C, Edson, the qualifiers, the knockout stages to get here, conceded the most in this group. We see a replay there. That was a green time finish from R9 to make it three goals to the good for Young. Yeah, Edson conceding the most in this group. So maybe oh, if he could have just maybe fashioned a chance there, it could have been a, a lifeline back into this game. But we mentioned nine minute halves being a theme throughout FC24. It's changed from previous years. Six minute halves, best of two. 3-0 isn't game over by any means. We've Not seen a lot of comebacks this year, irrespective of the scoreline. Especially because you can go into halftime, make a few changes. Exactly. And you can instantly be back into the game. You can easily find a way back into it. Maybe a formation change, which is what we saw from the pause. Because Edson was one of the very few players coming into this tournament, playing the 4-4-2. So I wonder if he's changed that. Dicked over the top, Erling Haaland. If it maybe fell to him for a volley instead of a header, that could have been a perfect, perfect chance to get back into it. And again, giving away possession. It is interesting though, Ryan, because Edson is known to be more of a defensive player yeah. in terms of South American yeah. play. But being a defensive player against someone like Young is very, very difficult because it doesn't allow you the chance to push forward at all. Exactly. You're so focused on nullifying Young's attack, yep. which is constant, that you have no time to get any goals for yourself. He ends up being a little bit too passive. And then before you know it, like what we're seeing right now, you're, you're down by a couple goals and your game plan has to completely change. Just look at the triggered runs here from Young. He just does so well. Just to, to second guess it or make his opponent second guess. You have to switch cursor to follow a run. You have to move the goalkeeper. Look at the space from Mendy. Driving into the box here. Erling Haaland back holes. Oh. That's it. That's the mismatch. That's the one you have to work towards. Green time. Keeper saves it. It's going to be another one. And here we go. 4 0. Wow. Just like that, Casey, it's the headset's off from, from Edson. It's, wow. He needs to get his head somewhat back into the game. Again, there's still plenty of time, but a 4-0 deficit is going to be very tough, especially against a player like Young. Yeah, Young's been incredible. It's a great start from him. He didn't give him any time to breathe or even move the goalkeeper or react to any scenario. He took the, the corner kick very quickly, moved Haaland to the near post, green timed it. And he's now found himself four goals up in 40 minutes against Edson. But as a reminder, this is the first round for yep. these groups. And so if they do lose, they're not out. They get one more chance to somehow pull it back, but it is not an easy route. It's onside. Oh my goodness. Just, I thought it was offside. I it's really high. thought it was offside, but it was just wide from Edson. It could have been a quick response. But you see what I mean with Young going forward here. We've got three minutes left of the first half. You're up by four. A lot of players will just resort just to not passing around the back but just waiting for the last attack until there is no chance for your opponent to respond before half time but he just keeps on going forward i almost feel that's where he's comfortable if yeah. he's actually sitting back i do feel like he would concede yeah because he's not comfortable doing that sort of play style and the constant attack is just what he's used to at this point and i don't i don't hate it i like that he's continuing to push forward it also makes a more enjoyable game for us exactly to approaching the last stages of the first half Give me a long throw to Erling Haaland. He's going to win that as well. Finesse shot from deep. Erling, oh, not Erling Haaland. De Bruyne blocked. And that's it, Casey. That spells the end of the first half. It's been a dominant display from Young, representing Tuzzy Esports. We can hear it in the crowd as well. He's folded up against Edson. We're going to jump over to game number two. Two, which is going on between Sebeluoni and Gibaros. We've seen a goal back from Sebeluoni. It's now 3 1. He's still losing. As I said, Gibaros scoring double the goals in the qualification system to get here compared to Sebeluoni. It was 3 0 up. And just before half time, Sebeluoni manages to get a goal back. We saw from the video, Casey, 
So Bologna's talking about how it sort of he thinks it favours him playing in Brazil compared to to the Brazilians because there's not a lot of pressure on his shoulders. Yeah, I think that they also have a chip on their shoulder as well. A little bit of we could have an opportunity here with Holland, but it was deflected wide. But yeah, I do think they're coming in here with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. But we do have a friendly guest here at the desk with us. We have Brandon. Hello, you, hello, uh, hello. What is going on? What, what is going seen? on in these games? Young, I want to go out and say, I think he's going to win it, the whole thing. Really? Hey. Okay. okay. I, don't, I don't do predictions. You don't but. do predictions. <laughs> that's zero, that's a bit. No Resende? I just think what, I, I just don't know what I'm seeing from Young right now. Look at the reps he's been putting in this year. What, top yeah. eight in the FC Pro Open, um, playing against Anders Vertigang, that's never going to be an easy game. Exactly. But I was just doing a bit of digging. I couldn't believe Edson has actually been a world finalist before, back in 2022. I think it was one of the years where the competition didn't happen, but he qualified for the World Finals and went through the playoffs and actually beat Young in the playoffs in London when it did happen. So just goes to show the level of quality in, across the whole tournament, but more importantly, Group C and D. Saying that, though, Fredersen, he's, uh, he's in a really sticky position at the moment. 4-0 down. Not looking good at all. For Young, though, more of the same. I think you guys are absolutely right. I just think it's not in his, his DNA to sit back, is it? He wants to score more goals. I don't think the Google celebration will be coming out in this game, but <laughs> maybe later on in the tournament. There's also an interesting storyline building. Faku Cohen is losing in his other matchup. That could mean that Seba Leone, fellow Argentine, could actually play him in an elimination game there in that Group D. Wow. The odds of that as well, having only three representatives from Argentina, potentially playing in an elimination game would be, yeah, unbelievable. There's a lot of Tuzzy representation as well in these yeah. two groups, isn't there? Yes. I've seen the owner of Tuzzy walking around the building. I don't, I don't know who he knows who to support. He's got enough players here. <laughs> yeah. Four nil in this game, 50 minutes on the clock. You could argue that Young has already cruised his way through to the upper bracket side in this group C. If he wins again, he'll be in Championship Sunday. A great opportunity for him. Edson looking to pull off the comeback of all comebacks. Runs into uh, that furlough Mendy again. He's been really impressive, Ryan. I mean, look, a new item in the game worth a ridiculous amount of money. If you're yep. doing budgets, he wouldn't be he wouldn't be featuring. There's a big chance. Went for five, but he's been playing really well in the right back. Yeah, he's been. I think his physical attributes, the jumping, the pace, of course, that you have. He has the, even the slide tackle play style plus of those those last ditch tackles that he can bail you out of some scenarios where you're defending backs against the wall. Here's Edson looking for a way back round. Would you say we're surprised, Casey, we haven't seen any other Brazilian icon involved? We saw Ronaldinho come off the bench a few times, not even a, a sniff of a Pele. Yeah, I just don't think that Pele really fits the style of game that this year has been presented. That's it. And there we go. Alex Poteas. I've seen a few fantastic goals from Poteas. <laughs> We've seen a lot of Holland, a few Mbappe, but she is absolutely fantastic. Sorry, <laughs> this might be the, the most quiet we've, we've seen in the arena. Genuinely, cannot, no one <laughs> just sat down. You I mean, can they're, see that they're all young fans. Yep, genuinely, they're all young fans. Maybe that could could edge on or egg on Edson. Tongue twister there. But yes, yeah, it's, it's a way back into the game. He worked it well. And Pateas in the box, as Casey said, very trustworthy. The five star skill means five star weak foot. She can do it all. She can intercept defensively. She can score goals in the box, outside the box. She's got great play styles, both plus and regular ones as well. We're going to head over to another game going on. Sebeluoni and Gibados. after we left it, it was 3-1 to Gibados. He scored another goal to restore his three-goal cushion. Well, for Gibados, it's only his second ever season compete. He only picked up the controller last year. Put pen to paper. Paul Netshoes minors who are looking to get another player through to the knockout stages tomorrow. Obviously, Nathan SR is already there. We'll come back to that game a little bit later on. We have put a potential comeback on our Hold on a minute. He's cooking Good around the ball. Movement. The keeper movement was great. They didn't necessarily pick a side, but he moved him back towards the middle of the goal just to make it harder to score. Could be a chance in the box. It's back to your point, Case. I think that the other key thing we forget is that this r is a team of the year, isn't it? He is, He's so he is quite opponent. possibly Pace. the best striker in the entire game. And well so... on Mendy. We mentioned East Dane just back to the R9. We've been speaking oh. about Haaland, just got it snatched off. Has Haaland scored every goal for you? I feel like he's, he's, been, he's been involved in everything. Have a look at a replay. And that was the goal 
We were saying, sorry, what was you good? Did he score four? Is he not scored four? He has scored four. I think three out of four was with Holland. Three out of four. Three out of four. Edson. Cole has given him boost of confidence into the final third of this game. Do not forget that if you do lose one game, you'll go down to the lower side of the bracket in the group stage. You will not be out of the tournament, though. Two losses will send you out. Two wins will send you through to a top eight tomorrow. Well, obviously, as you mentioned, Resende is in that top eight. So we're going to trigger run there on the far side. He's going to play the ball across. He's not. Speaking about Edson, he's had a few corners in this game. He hasn't really... We know how effective they are, Casey, this year. Whether you play it short and whip it to the back post, you can whip it near post. We saw Young score with Erling Haaland to make it goal number four. But Edson sort of just gives away those opportunities. It's, it's, I, I don't know to, how to explain it. And he could be conceding again. Big, big save. Corner goes as far as Pateus. Van Dijk's not the player you want there. The thing about Young, though, is that, yes, he's able to score some of those goals in the air with Holland, which is expected, but he's also switching it up. And so you never know who to really mark, because at this point, he could be running with Alex Boteas from the midfield, and yep. so he's very versatile in terms of his attack. You have to be worried about the step over directly into the box from potentially Mbappe. You have to w watch out for the back post cross to Erling Haaland. You have to watch out for a finesse shot from Pateas or De Bruyne. There's so many ways that Young can score. One more goal here would seal the deal, certainly. For Haaland, he's just such a tool, isn't he? He's like, he can flick, he, he can be defensive great for you, he can flick it down, it's the one more pass, he can cause you problems from every single corner, so it seems. There's an update for you over there. Faku Cohen has got a goal back over in Group D. As it stands, he's on his way down to a lower bracket matchup over there. That one is in its second half, it's approaching the 60th minute. A slightly more quiet a second half this one, hasn't it, for Young? He hasn't really been able to get going. Yeah, I don't know if that can be attributed to the fact that maybe Edson is falling into his ways a bit. Oh, it's beautiful. Is he on? Oh, oh see you later. That there is we go. sensational. That is sensational. Oh, Mbappe, my goodness. 4 5. 5 1, Young. I think you're on your way through to a winner's bracket game. The composure there, Casey, ridiculous. Absolute composure. I mean, adding in the extra ball roll around the keeper, there is absolutely nothing that the keeper can do in that situation. Easy tap in, and there we go. Five yeah. goals to Ooh. Young. It's not even the goal. It's the driven pass for me. Just to, It's like, again, he, he systematically knows exactly what he's trying to do. He's planned that attack out perfectly well. He's been composed, and then, again, just to top it off, the lack of care counsel around the goalkeeper, open goal finish, and it's just beautiful from Young. It's one of those as well, because he, he probably thought he was offside, so you're a little bit startled, aren't you? But still to have the composure, just to take it around the goalkeeper. 5-1, Young leads. He is making a statement for the rest of the competition. And so, is this map. It's another goal. Ugu Barros who now leads by 6-2 in that game. I mean, look, I know it's not been our main feature game on stream, but what a result. What a result. You know, I know you mentioned that he's somewhat new to the competition, but he knocked out Paulo Neto to qualify for this. And so he might be new, but he is coming in here with a vengeance and ready to play. Yep. Young again. Six. Is that a yawn? Is, is it get, <laughs> oh, 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 are, we, are we keeping you up, mate? <laughs> <laughs> are we boring you here? 6-1. Very calm and composed. He knows there's a long way to go. He came so close to getting his hands on not just the FC Pro Open for next year and also the FC Pro World Championship tickets. You'll know what an opportunity this is for him after what has been a very impressive season internationally. 6 1 for Edson. Let's just get on to the next game. I think he'll be thinking. Yeah, I've been at events before when competing with Young in the same tournaments and it seems across the years, just the experience, you can tell it's, it's like a different person. He backs himself, he's much more confident, and it's showing in it, just the way he's playing, not just in this game, but throughout the season so far. I think that international reps that he's, that he's had and the group that he had in London, certainly Look giving at this, all the, the confidence passing. in the world, Haaland should have had seven. See an update there as well in the top corner. Group D, Baldo up against Faku Cohen. Baldo still winning two goals to one. 
as it stands. Sure, Baku we'll Cohen against Sebuluoni yeah, in the sure. loser bracket. We'll get the end to that one. Ronaldinho, you mentioned maybe another Brazilian icon that could come on. Yeah. Brilliant feat from Edson, but it's not going to mean much. Now, Ryan, if you're Edson going into this next match, how are you composing yourself after something like this? Do you know what? Obviously, there's a quick turnaround between the games. For me, personally, when competing, I reacted a lot better to games like this than ones that I've lost in the last minute. Because in this game, you can sort of not switch off, but the result in your head, you obviously, you still have the belief that maybe you can score a few more goals, but unless something ridiculous happens, you know you've lost this game. So you can sort of reset and sort of just try different things, even in the last 10 minutes, maybe even if it's a, a change of personnel, or just try and be a lot more, I guess, proactive when going forward. Because I feel as if Essen's been very reserved, especially the first half. He just left Young to dictate the whole of the game. I think when you go past 3-0 as well, it's one of them, isn't it, mentally, you just just down and out. I know it's nine and a half, so I know it's long games, but you've really got to pull something out. Yeah, even that though, it didn't work out for him, but just playing it over the top, triggering a run and actually committing to paying the pass. Edson didn't do that at all, in my opinion, in the first half. He was very reserved and being that risk averse against somebody like Young is, yeah, it's a recipe for disaster. And here we go again, that's just offside. Just offside there, it's still going to be 6-1. I mean, if we were playing normal group stages, that's, that goal difference swing would be uh, <laughs> would be amazing for Young. So he'll be going through as it currently stands, I believe, to play for Seca, who is 3-2 up at what I can see against Dudu, former runner-up of the Cornwall Wheelie Libertadores. We'll try and give you the lowdown of that game as soon as we can. It is still live, there's still more time to unfold, isn't it? This one is back to the drawing board. You're in an elimination game now for Edson. And he simply has to win. If there's a wake-up call to get, I mean, <laughs> got one now. Added time of two minutes. Then we'll jump around to conclude the last couple of games. Although he had to wait a little bit longer to get his competition started here in Sao Paulo. What a start it has been for Young. Looking... To keep his six goal cushion. And then we have it. GG's to Young. What a start he has had. I mean, he, I hope he's not too tired because he's still got a few more games to play. He does. One more, and he's through to Championship Sunday. I hope that he doesn't get complacent because this next match he's going against a winner as well. And so I'm very curious how that one is going to go. Well, let's have a look at the replays. Obviously, you two had the pleasure of commentating the first half there. And it's one of those, Ryan, where he, he just ran away with it. Yep, literally, it was goal after goal. Arnaud Ronaldo, green time to cross goal. This was a, a way back into the game from Edson shortly after half time. But then this great goal there, the Lacroquette cancel round the goalkeeper, ended the game. Didn't really give him any hope after that. And of course, Young sees out the victory. Six goals to one against Edson. But jumping over to our other game in Group D. Semelioni, Brian. I mean, look, he had a top eight finish last year in the competition. Lost to Bishada, the, the player who went on to win the whole tournament. But this has not been the start he would have expected at all. Yeah, it's a rocky start. We didn't get to see, of course, the majority of the game. But, of course, we can tell from the scoreline, Gibadas has been dominant going forward. He's sort of taken on in his stride his performances from the qualification system to get here, scoring a lot of goals. As you said, Casey, knocking out Paolo on the way through his first time in this competition. One of the few names that are having their sort of debut outing here in Sao Paulo, making sure it's one to remember. We could be on for a 7-3 here. And we are indeed. Kuparos, 7-3 he leads. He'll be going through to an upper bracket game up against Baldo. If he can come out in top against Faku Cohen, I think that is a full-time result there. Baldo does win 2-1. Faku Cohen does fall down. Uh, for Senka against Dudu, we haven't really seen much of this game, to be brutally honest with you. The player of MGCF Esports has been all right so far. Four goals to two up against Dudu, who did actually feature in the first ever Conda Bawili Tadores, losing to Matias Banana back in 2021. It's been a 
quite some time since he's been back on this stage again. He'll be hoping for better than this in his next match. Yeah, he will be. 100%. I feel as if, obviously, we haven't got to see too much of it, but he's got the pedigree in this competition, as you mentioned, finishing runner-up in 2021. And even just to qualify, he won his, his game in the loser bracket 10-1, which is resounding. So he, he's shown that he can play backs against the wall when it matters most. But eight minutes left to go, Casey. It's, it's going to be tough to even try and get a few more chances against Fonseca. It will. I mean, if anything's going to happen, he needs to score ASAP and hope for a last-minute goal to tie it up and maybe go into extra time. But if I'm Fonseca, I'm sitting back and making sure that Dudu doesn't touch the ball. I know that nine minute half means that these last ten minutes will drag on a little bit more. Dudu, if he just gets a goal now, it would certainly shake up the remaining a few minutes. He doesn't need to score again, does Fosenka. Just look after the ball. Or does he want to get another one? Big overlap could be available on the far hand side. Finds Jude Bellingham, who potentially might be tucking in as a right back. By the looks of things. Certainly has been the biggest talking point here. And across most of the FC Pro Leagues is who's going to be the person to stop Erling Haaland. Do you think we'll ever find an answer for that? I don't think so. I don't think there's an answer. I don't think there's a solution. I think that Erling Haaland is unstoppable at this point. It makes us think if we were an FC Pro Open still, we'd probably ban him. <laughs> probably Possibly. Ba probably ban him for a week <laughs> or two. Ronaldinho still trying to hunt back this comeback. If there's a way around, Haaland will get a snap at it. Big save, Lloris. Needed that. If that went in, that would have given him a, a lease of life. But it seems as if Fonseca is just going to push forward and see this game out. Maybe even scoring another one. Mbappe in on goal. To seal the deal, Mbappe. What a tackle. It won't matter any time of just one minute. But Fonseca will be going through to the upper bracket. Gabaros as well will be there too. And I mean, look, you come into this one, I think anyone would say Seba Leone and Faku Cohen would have probably been your upper bracket matchup, Casey. That's not going to be the case. It is not going to be the case. But I will say, Faku Cohen was coming through. We do have a penalty. A penalty. I don't know if it's going to do much. Let's see the outcome of this one. Goes to the right, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Yeah, I think he knows it as well. A little bit too late. He scores. A little bit before that, we could be looking at an equaliser and extra time. It's our last game to conclude from this round. And then we'll be turning our attentions to our second round of play here. Group C and Group D is kicked off in, I mean, typical South American way. Goals, guys. Goals, 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 goals. And some big results as well from two players. Number one, Young, and also uh, Gabarish as well. Big results. Yep, exactly. I think Young came in with a lot of expectation on his shoulders, not just from us, but also himself, the people around him in the community, they know how well he's been playing this year. But he started off extremely well, winning six goals to one. Faku Cohen, though, that is, a, for me, that's a big upset. Especially from what we saw earlier in the year. I know it was yeah, at a very um, disappointing FC Pro Open group yep. stage, Casey. But I just think maybe that little bit more experience, those few more reps, he would have performed a bit better. Yeah, I think so as well, because he's competing against some of the best players all over the world, not just in his region. So you'd think that he'd maybe bring that back from London. But yeah, we haven't really seen that today. But again, he's still in it. He has one more chance to go through. It's going to be a hard battle to get there to Championship Sunday, but we'll see what Faku Cohen can put together. Well, we know that Giuliano has already booked a spot, Ryan, into tomorrow's top eight. The Argentinian. Yep. I'll be honest, out of the three players, I wouldn't have said it would be him. Yeah, exactly. That will be going there. We are going to be losing in Argentine. The two players that do play in the LPF will be going head to head in a knockout game, Ryan. It's a huge game, not just for the players representing, of course, the, the same country, but just being eliminated in this stage. They would have come into it with a lot of expectation on their shoulders. So, yes, yeah, for me, it's a massive, massive game. Yeah, absolutely. As we said, we've still got two more rounds to come here from the Connable E. Libertadores. We'll have a look at the bracket if we can. Group C, first and foremost. This is how things look after one game has been played. Young, ver Young versus Faseca will be a qualification match. One of those two will be booking a spot in the top eight in the next 45 minutes or so. And then Edson against Dudu, two players of rich history here in South America, go head to head. Gabarros against Baldo play in a qualification game after this one. Then Sebelioni against Faku Cohen. Two Argentines, they know each other so well. We'll be going head to head in Group D. You don't want to go anywhere. There's still plenty more matches to come. I believe we might have an interview ready with our good friend Pablo Georgia Coppolos. Is joined by Young, who's on goal scoring form. Is he feeling all right? Because he was yawning. He was yawning when he was playing. 
Hello guys, I'm here with Young. I mean, what a performance that you just had in the main stage. How does it feel to be here in Sao Paulo, Brazil? Oh, it feels amazing. It's not my home because I live in Rio, but Sao Paulo is also a big city. Um, the crowd here is amazing. The guys are supporting me. My family are also here. So I'm very excited to play the Come Board Libertadores today. You told me that your mom is here. Did she see your game? No. No, she didn't. She didn't saw. She didn't see it? No. Well, however, you now are in the winner bracket final. How do you think that you're going to prepare for the next game? Oh, I think I need to play my game. I think I'm playing very good. Usually to, to the game that we play in the stage. And now I, I think I'm going to play against Fonseca. He's a great player. He's first LAN event. Let's, let's see what's going to happen. It is his first LAN event, however, it is not your first LAN event. We saw you at the FC Pro Open, you played against Anders. I mean, you were in the biggest stage of the FC24 ecosystem. How does it feel to be in the Comeboy Libertadores now? Oh, it feels amazing. That's one of my dreams of my life, to be the Comeboy Libertadores champion. So I'm here for this. Amazing, amazing. You mean you heard it from Young. Now we're going to go into a short break. Thank you so much, Young. Best of luck, man. Good luck, all right? Take care, guys. Stay for the break.
Well, good evening from Sao Paulo. You join us here for the Con the Ball E-Libertadores. This is day one of the competition. It is group stage today as we say goodbye to eight players and congratulations to eight players who make it through to tomorrow's championship Sunday. Myself, Brandon Smith and Casey guiding you through round two of group C and D. And all we can hope for, Casey, is just more of the same goals. More of the same goals. I hope that some of them are a little bit closer matchups, but these are the games that are going to be very, very risky because Last time, they're able to lose a game. This yep. time, some of them are not. Let's go home. It's season done, isn't it, if you lose this game? Or for some players, it's congratulations. You are through to tomorrow's Championship Sunday. We saw so many goals, you're right to say, in that last game. We can have a little bit of a roundup, if we can, across all of the matches now. Any highlights we can see from those games? I think the pick of the bunch, probably, Gerbaros or Young? I mean, both scored six, seven goals. We have a lot to choose from, from Young, definitely. And a lot of uh, Holland as well, I think. So yeah. we'll see a few of those compilations here shortly. But I love this type of competition because it is just constant attacking. It's different. It's relentless. It has been relentless. We'll kick off with Group C first and foremost. We will show you some highlights soon but before that. This is what the situation currently is right now. Young versus Edison, as we saw, was the 6-1 win. That ensured that he would be going through Obviously, to that big upper matchup against Fon Seca, that's coming up very soon. And then Gabarros against Baldo is a qualification game there. And then the two Argentines, Sebelioni and Faku Cohen, going head to head. What we didn't expect, really, was it, Casey? No, we definitely did not expect that. And you don't want to be going against someone from your own nation. But we do have some highlights here. Green time finish from R9. 4-0 by 50th minute, wasn't it? There was a goal back that came late into the game for Edson, but you're 4-0 down there. You're just asking so much. This is what went wrong for Faku Cohen, who found himself 2-0 down in this game quite early on. 2-0 down. But at the end of the day, we didn't get to see much of the match, but it was a lot closer of a scoreline going into this, so I do think that he shouldn't be too sad going in. Again, we see another cross in to directly to Holland's head. I was and, about to uh, say, guess what happens there? <laughs> Shocker. Hey, hey get Holland. <laughs> wins out the back post. This was Dudu against Vaseca. It was 1-1 one, one in this game. And then after Dudu was able to go in front, Vaseca just ran away with the game. Didn't score one, scored three more. He won that game five goals to two in the end. Gert Barros, I mean, look, you've been saying about his you know, qualification story, beating Paolo Neto alongside a handful of Brazilian names to get here. Maybe he's one of those players that just doesn't have big pressure on his shoulders or expectation because we didn't really expect that performance. Yeah, I think that you come in here, especially being a previous champion, adds in extra pressure. Having good performances in the past adds that pressure. He, is not, he doesn't expect anything from this. And so he's out here having fun. And that's the best way to go into it, I think. Absolutely. Play with no pressure. Gerbaros against Baldo will be our matchup. What I love about this as well, it's the two players that have never played in the Con the Ball e Libertadores before. It just goes to show this new wave of Brazilian talent that is coming through, and especially any Brazilians or South Americans that are watching at home, this could be you next year. I'm sure some of them saw the story of Bashada Casey, like an unknown player, an unknown quantity, came through, won $35,000 and booked a spot at the World Finals last year. It just goes to show what can happen. Expect the unexpected, because you might have anticipations going into this competition. You might have a few players that are like, yeah, I think they're going to make it further. But then some of these dark horses come in and shock you. But if we can have a look at the squad restrictions very quickly to remind you at home of how this tournament is being played. Of course, on Ultimate Team, but there is a little South American twist on it. There's Baldo of Tuzzy Esports, 21 years of age. Last year, did win a South American qualifier. But this has been a standout moment for him getting to this stage. Another Tuzzy Esports representative on the other side for Netshoes Miners. They've already got one player through to the top eight. It was Nathan SR earlier today. They were gutted that Rampaza couldn't make it through. They're hoping that this man could be the man too. So if he keeps up this goal scoring form, why not? Why not indeed? I believe we're about to kick off our match up here, but we were speaking about squad restrictions. It's pretty simple, isn't it, Casey? Ultimate team, no budget. Just South American icons. South American icons. So that is R9, Ronaldinho. Probably not too many Argentine icons as they, they haven't been seen. seen haven't we? Yeah, I think that's it. We haven't even seen Pele come on to the pitch. Let us know at home in the chat as well who you would be using. South American icon in your team. If you don't say R9, you're lying. <laughs> because I think every single person 
is our nine. This is the prize pot on the line as well. It's a ridiculous amount of cash here at the Carnival of Liberty Azores. We'll speak about that in a minute. But before that, we said that you at home can get involved in the chat. They can, can't they, Casey? They could earn some decent packs. They definitely can. You could get a two players pack for watching only 15 minutes and a jumbo premium gold pack for watching 60. So make sure you guys are sitting in that chat, watching all the amazing competition and uh, you get some packs from it. Hey, it's a Saturday night, wherever you're watching or Saturday morning, if you're on the other side of the world, you could be picking up some decent packs. Uh, and let us know in the chat who you got in yours. If you did get a walkout from a two-player pack, then, then fair play. You're a, you're a very, lucky very lucky you. person. <laughs> Here's the prize pool we've been teasing you for. $100,000, Casey. This is how it's broken down. Ridiculous amount of money for a lot of these players. So much money. In first place, you're going to be going home with 35000 Second, 25000 And it is broken down between the rest of those spots as well. But we talk about money. But Brandon, those two spots in the World Championship, how much would that mean to get one of those? ridiculous and I don't think I think the question I'll say is how much do they cost because they are just priceless FC Pro World Championship tickets joining two of the names that you were with last week in Austin Texas obviously EMLS top two players there Jafonzo K1 John there already at the FC Pro World Championships the top four from the FC Pro Open that we both saw live are already there as well we are slowly but surely filling out those 32 spots for the biggest tournament of the season. We were just waiting to get the go-ahead from the admins, and then we should be all good to go. Four games taking place, as we said at this stage. We'll do our best to give you all the lowdown as it comes in. But I think the one thing we can just agree today, the play style here in South America, Casey, is ridiculous. We always speak about different countries have different play styles. They're just reckless here in South America. They just they don't care about clean sheets unless you're a Sende. Um, yes. It's been so refreshing. No, it's very, very refreshing. I think that each region does have a very specific type of play. Some are a bit more patient, but yeah, this one is constantly forward, relentless, and we're seeing a lot of goals on both ends, and I'm here for it. I know everyone in the chat is probably loving it as well. Make sure you guys are typing in the chat, whoever you're rooting for, in terms of all the players left in group C and D. I want to know, Brandon wants to know, and it's been great to watch I so far. I just don't think you can complain. You know, everyone complains that sometimes the aims are a little bit slow, a little bit bored. You, you cannot complain. Like, the amount of goals and the performances we have seen. Yes, you could maybe moan about Haaland scoring every goal, because <laughs> that's that's rather frustrating. I, I f I'm fully with you on that one. If you are somebody who plays Ultimate Team Champions and you are struggling with that most weeks, I'm sure me and Casey can agree with you on that. Yeah, and especially with the nine minute halves as well, with so many goals, it fills up the time as well. Because when you have some of these other matches that end up, you know, 2 1 with nine minutes, you're sitting there begging for a goal. And here, it's a jam packed game throughout the entirety of the match. So many chances, isn't there? Right, we are locking in. We are getting ready to go in this matchup. This is our upper bracket game. Remember, one of these two are going through to Championship Sunday. And one of the two players of Seba Leone or Faku Cohen are being eliminated here in day one of the tournament. Here we go then. We are loading in to our featured matchup and in typical FC uh, style. We're just going to a pause straight away. They have to get everything ready. They have to double check, make sure their cameras are all set up, make sure the right players are on the pitch. I get it. Last couple of changes. I think some camera setting changes are being made. As we also see the uh, the all Argentine game loading in as well. I can see Faku Cohen against Sabaglione going head to head current defending Argentinian uh, LPF champion in Sebaglione looking to back up well here we go then Cabarrus from left to right in this one hoping to continue that goal scoring form Aldo Tuzzy Esports from right to left Maybe with the first chance in the game. Team of the Mbappe finds Team of the Haaland. Back to Batayas. Two minutes is all it's taken. Two minutes at that. Fantastic start here for them. And it, I mean, it's going to propel him into the rest of this match. If I'm conceding a goal that early, I'm going to be frustrated. And that's the type of thing that you need to get in your opponent's head. Especially when you're up against a player you know has just scored seven goals. Exactly. You know exactly how good they can be going for. We'll see the chance again. You've been speaking highly of Alexa Mateus, Casey. She just always seems to be in the right place at the right time. She does. And we need to note that she's not an attacker, but she is always pushing forward and perfectly open for one of those shots. And I've seen 
at least four fantastic goals from Alexi Mateas. And so if you do not have her in your ultimate team, definitely be thinking about adding her in because Even she might gold be pricey, item. but she is fantastic. Gold I'm still decent. I think the one thing that a lot of people love about her as well, she's just, she's an ultimate sort of centre midfielder, but she's so good going forward, isn't she? She really is. I mean, even as a box to box, she does everything. Comes back on her rating in game. Baldo leads by a goal to nil here. Two minutes in is all it took him. The Barosh. Player who stopped. Palanetto on his way to get into this tournament. It does feel weird that Palanetto's not here. It does. He even, even in MLS, EMLS, he got knocked out earlier than he did last year. But he always seems to make a broadcast, so does not see him here in Brazil is very, very surprising. But he had a tough route to get here. He had to go up against Young, who he did lose to in FC Pro Open. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes the matchmaking just isn't on your side. It's tough. I think top player, as we know, Palanetto, so consistent, but just maybe missing those couple of parts in his game this year. And it's so hard when you've got just so many more players coming through. And the spot's becoming even harder to get your hands on. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the time you prepare for all the players that you know, but then some of these new guys come in and you're like, I don't know, even know what to do in this situation. And it surprises you and sometimes you just can't be ready for it. I think prime example here, isn't it? Some of these new South American names that we've never seen before in this tournament. Showing what they can do. All four matches are now underway. We'll keep you up to date with all the scores from both the upper bracket and lower bracket games. Alex Mateus fancied a shot from the edge of the box there. Didn't get dispossessed 12 minutes in. And there has been a goal in another game. We'll give it to you as soon as we can. Which way has it come? Or which group is it from? We'll let you know. Remember, Young against Faseca is our other upper bracket matchup. Young could be in the top eight in the next 30 minutes or so. Here's Pateas. Can she elastico her way around the box? Look for reverse elastico there. Still on nine. Little scoop turn inside. And a massive outpour of emotion. It's only his first goal, but he's up for it. <laughs> and you guys cannot see it, but a lot of the crowd is on their feet right now. And so we got a lot of fans, I think, on both sides of this game right here. And uh, I'm excited for the rest of this one. I think this is going to be very end-to-end. -end. I would hate to be the monitor there, because he absolutely <laughs> screamed at it. Scream right at the monitor, but brilliant build-up, wasn't it? We spoke about Fateus there. It's the little intricacies, isn't it? The reverse elasticos, the timing of the skill moves. And then it didn't... That, when R9 got the ball, the scoop turn didn't even look that that fancy, but it worked. It worked. Sometimes that is all you need to create that little bit of extra space and get into the space that you need to finish. Well, the Badger is onside. Haaland is in the box in the air. We know he's good in the air, but was asking quite a lot there, wasn't it? It was. It was a little bit of a, a lofty task there, but we do have a replay of the last goal here. Shifty movement from R9 with a massive celebration to bring him right back into the game 1-1. Just did enough, didn't he, with a little scoop. Turn from R9, team of the R9, obviously one of the icons you are allowed to use in this competition. Speaking of R9, he could be on for a second. Runs into the wall of Ruben Diaz there. I mean, look, we've got some variations with the centre-backs. We've seen Lucio involved today. We've seen Vincent Company called up a few times. I mean, it's always Virgil van Dijk plus one. Who would be your plus one there? Ooh, that's a great question. I'm thinking like I'm, I'm hearing all of these options and I'm also just thinking that none of them can stop Holland. So I'm yeah. like, just let's just throw any option in and, and hope. <laughs> Ooh, you got so much choice. Keep an eye on R9's run on the right hand side of your screen. Yeah, yeah, Torre as well, hello. Does start in this game. Another interesting pick. There's Haaland in the air. Oh, that's perfect. That is perfect FC 24. <laughs> Gerbaros take a bow. Just lofted it so nicely into Erling Haaland. All he had to do was just nod it on. Yeah, fantastic pass there in the air from Haaland. And he's never going to miss that. There's never going to be a situation where Haaland is missing that there. But fantastic vision from Givaros there to send that through. And that is putting him 2-1 in this match. One nil down, two one he leads. We were saying about it, it, it in the first goal that went in from Baldo. He knows how offensively strong 
Gabaros is, and he is feeling that now. Bellingham, Travella on the edge of the box. We know that Haaland's the score now. And it was matched up well by the goalkeeper. Yeah. Oh my days, what is Young doing? Oh. Look at that score in the right-hand corner of your screen. Young is 3-0 up. He's on a rampage. I'm sure that's not a typo. He is a man on a mission. 3-0 Young leads in. I'd love to see a timer if we can on the screen in that game. I think I've just seen... It might be 12 minutes. 12 minutes, 3-0. It might be 12 minutes, 3-0. Wow. That is, <laughs> that is ridiculous. No mercy. I feel bad for his opponents, to be honest. Here we go. Haaland! Back all square, border. Has got a goal back, and it's the same question we'll keep on asking again and again and again and again. How do you stop Erling Haaland? Even with, even with Haaland in the box defensively, you still can't stop him. You can't. You kind of just have to let it happen at this point and then hope that it also works for you. That's why a lot of these games are so high scoring back and forth, because you just have to anticipate that you're going to concede some of those, which is why mentality is so important that when you concede, you can't lose your head because it's going to happen no matter what. And you're certainly not going to keep a clean sheet. Good save. Unless you're Resende. Yeah. Then you keep a clean Unless sheet. Unless you're Resende. That's yep. the, <laughs> the only player that has gone without conceding a goal so far. He's into tomorrow's championship Sunday. Three nil win and a four nil win was enough for him. On it there from Hugo Lloris. And as we look around the ground, some more updates for you. 15 minutes into another game, Faku Cohen is beating Sevilloni two goals to nil there. Remember, that's the elimination game. Ed, uh, Edson's leading Doody by a goal to nil. That's in the first 20 minutes. And yeah, believe it or not, it's only 17 minutes on the clock in that young game. 3-0 young leads. He just looks like he's on a mission, doesn't he? Yeah, I think there's no stopping him. It would be insanity if he somehow did not go through after this round here. He's sitting pretty, and he is he's ready for Championship Sunday tomorrow. He really is. Harlan driving for Baldo. He goes on his own! Two end between these two, both desperate to do enough to get through to tomorrow's championship Sunday. Their eye is on the prize going into this one because if they win, they are through. But I'm not surprised that it's so end to end and so close. I'm not going to count Guy Barrios out at this point. I can't do it. I know that Baldo has stepped it up. And it's still only the 35th minute as well. And so there's so much time, so much game left to be played. And the crowd is uh, getting pretty riled up as well. I'd love to know the average XG between half of these <laughs> South Americans, because honestly, it is a joke. There has been a goal back in the young game. Faseca has pulled a goal back in that one. 3-1 now. I mean, that's only the 21st minute in that game. There's been four goals in it. And there's also another goal back for Seba Leone in the first half of things there against Faku Cohen. That's 2-1, and that one also in the first half. Seven minutes away from half-time here. It's going to be a corner. We'll have a real close look on Haaland in this one. Keep an eye on number nine. Not needed straight away this time. It's a corner that's wasted in the end. It was. I do feel like if you're not at least attempting to send it into Haaland on the corner, it's the best option for you. And so a lot a lot of times, I feel like in the past, going short was the main option. Well, you had the option of the Travella, didn't you? Or a, or a decent finish shot back then. You can still do it, but the success rate just isn't, it's not worthwhile, is it? Right, why risk it when it's most likely going to go in with Holland? The game constantly just, you know, changes from patch to patch and player to player that comes in. There's been an equaliser in the Doodoo game. Doodoo Edson, that's 1-1 one, one over there. That one also an elimination matchup too. Arguably even more important than this one because we will be sending someone home from that game, the end of their Libertadores tour here in Brazil. Tough for these players as well, Casey, because it's it's March and it's the end of their season. Yeah, it's it's very, very tough. The format this year has shifted a lot. And if your league has completed and you have not already qualified those spots, whether through FC Pro, you're, you're kind of done at that point. 
back to the drawing board through to the summer. At a time of just one minute. Not to be enough time to play this last attack out from Gabarros. No, there won't be. It'll be pulled back for a free kick. Speaking of surprises, Pablo Georgiakopoulos joins us back on the commentary booth again. Pabs, welcome back. I mean, you've been having the opportunity to sit and watch all four games at the same time. Which has been the most impressive game to you? Honestly, Young was, as we can see in the broadcast right now, it was 3-0 up and now Fonseca has made it 3-2. I mean, look at this breakaway by Mbappe and, I mean, Guy Barros as well. It's, all these games are just nerve-wracking. How was Young 3-0 up in 12 minutes? In 15 minutes. He was up 3-0 and now Fonseca has made it 3-2 with a 3 oh, wow. three. It's a common denominator that we could just see here. It's Highland and the play style of How, how on earth has the game swung from 3-0 to 3-3 by the 32nd minute? Every single time, it's only a 15-minute spam where one player scores three goals and the other scores three goals. There's, I mean, there's three players around Harlan. They still can't <laughs> stop him. <laughs> this is where you've got Young, though, haven't you, Casey? Confident as ever. Yep. 3 nil up, just conceded three goals. He's on the ropes now. That's what I'm saying. When you are winning by that much, I feel like your level drops a little bit. You become a little bit complacent. It, you've got to stay at that top level and be challenged in order to continue to push forward because Fonseca, he saw that and he capitalized on it. And at the end of the day, Young could lose this. It could go either way. So much time to be played, but it could go either way. The amount of fans as well he's got in this room, perhaps Young. Everyone is backing this man. They fell in love with him, especially in that match he played against Anders Vergang and the FC Pro. And they're both celebrating in each other's faces. It was uh, quite the spectacle. I actually spoke to him and he said that he, he is so happy to play here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. He did say that this is not his hometown, but he's so happy to be here in Brazil. Well, it was his biggest payday, the FC Pro, but he got $30,000 for that competition. But he didn't get the, the World Championship ticket, did he? He did not, and now he's... I feel like he's coming back for revenge, you know? I feel like he wants to that top two spot. And as we say that, he was 3-0 up, it's 3-3. You know, he might have that in the back of his mind now. Back here with the Guy Barros and Baldo game, which is still 3-2 for Baldo. You know, Casey, Guy Barros actually knocked out Pablo Neto, as we were saying earlier in the broadcast. But this has been a phenomenal showing by the youngster here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Yeah, I mean, we didn't know what to expect from him. We haven't seen too much. But even during qualifying, he was shocking us with going against some massive, massive competitors here. And he's giving Obaldo, he's giving Baldo a fantastic match. Oh, he is absolutely cooking! Wow. wow. The build-up to that was perfect. And the finish was even better right in the top corner. It's a two-goal cushion. Four, two. The good news is for both of these players, though, they've sort of got a lifeline, haven't they? If they lose, they do get a second chance. They do. They still are able to stay in. One more opportunity to possibly get one more win. And so they might not be taking too many chances here because unlike Edson, Dudu, Sebaleoni and Faku Cohen, this is their last lifeline to stay in. Well, let's jump across to this game here because I've got all this my eyes one. on this one. The good news is this one will finish a little bit later than the other game, so we should catch most of the major moments in it, but I don't know how we're at a 3-3 at halftime. Unbelievable game. Remember, this is a qualification game. Young was 3-0 up in 15 minutes. For Seca, some people might have written him off. I probably did. He's come back by the 32nd minute and made it 3 all. Yeah, I was actually talking to Ryan Rich off camera, and I was like, oh, well, here goes Young, ready to play tomorrow's Championship Sunday. Now, he, you know... You might doubt that he will be there if Fonseca has anything else to say here. Well, what a half that one is. 3-3 between the two players. We'll jump back to our main stage game. Well, that one's in half time. Plenty of action taking place here in Sao Paulo. You don't know where to look. I am curious, Brendan. He has been pushing forward so much young. Do you think he's going to shift his play style? Because obviously Fonseca has caught up to whatever he is doing with that constant pressure in the attack. Do you think he's going to shift anything or do you think his only mindset is constantly forward? I think he just needs to he needs to score ASAP. And just as I think you said it perfectly in the last game when we were commentating, it's not in his DNA to sit back and win 4-3. 
his DNA is to go and score and score and score and score and certainly not keep a clean sheet. So I think, you know, you've got Gav Gall over his shoulder, a man that knows him more than most, just to try and push him forward. When did this game turn around like this? 5-2, Baldo? Did we not just see the 4-2 happen? Yeah, we just blinked and... <laughs> <laughs> Another goal. One of the choices that I've seen from Guibarros is using Yaya Toure in the midfield. I feel like he's lacking certain stuff. What do you, you, you make of it? I mean, he's now using Jude Bellingham, team of the year, right back, and he's using Jaya Toure in the midfield. I feel like Jude Bellingham in the midfield is a little bit more of an impactful type of player. And then you could use the legs of Mendy at right back, the 92 right back. We've seen a lot of success over the weekend, and he's in every, he's in every single one of the teams that has actually won. This is, this is the, the level of difference in teams, though. There's barely any difference in half of these teams, but I'm actually quite excited that we're seeing the Barros use... Oh, he's oh, cutting hello, here. Oh, he's missed. Wow. It's cold kick. I'm actually excited to say that, yeah, Gabaros is using Lucio, Yaya Torre, and then someone new at right back. That's probably our most exciting change we've seen. But it might not be working for him. No. So <laughs> that might be the difference maker. And I know that there are a lot of similarities, but in terms of choosing your squad, a lot of time goes into it. I know that these players sit there for hours determining who they want to play with. So many if, buts, and maybes, isn't it? case of, if I don't use this player, am I going to regret it? Here's Ter Hernandez. Back to De Bruyne. Oh, no, it has to score. What a block from Lucio. That could have been 6-2. And Look at this counter. Just one the counter attack. Oh, the right and through, he loves the green time. Has to post. score. Has to score. We'll He's score. done the first post. The goalie movement was a bit too early, Brandon. And that's why Guy Barrios was able to finish first post with Haaland there. How hard is it in those moments? Because you've got a lot of time to think, perhaps. A lot of time to think about what you want to do. And most people shoot a cross goal. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you think that you're going to go second post and the opponent's not going to move it. And then you shoot first post and the, the goalkeeper stay there. And that's where you regret not being able to finish and having to compose. Hello. Wow. Big chance for Young. We're back to our second matchup. We've been keeping a close on. Three threes to score line here. It's Young with a big chance. Looks to carry that one across the goal. Able to defend it well. And I think you can hear a lot of Tussie fans. Yeah, I think it might be the loudest we've heard this entire arena right now. So this game has people on their feet for sure. Yeah, that is that game between Dudu and Edson. And that's, I can't see from here, but I mean, we definitely saw a goal because the studio just went ballistics. I can tell you now, it's Dudu that's 3-1 up in that game. Someone who was actually a runner-up of this tournament. In the first ever year it ran, losing to Matias Bonanno when it was online. Another big name. that He's actually in the Spanish broadcast. I mean, it's Haaland. One more pass. He had to I mean, finish it there. Look, just look at what this tournament does for players' careers, though, as well. Look at Matias Bonanno. Look what he went on to and do. And now he plays in Europe and obviously plays for Manchester City. Look at PH in. Won this tournament in Paraguay a few years ago. Just became an FC Pro champion. Like, South America, a, it's a breeding ground, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's really a springboard to supply people with the motivation and the confidence that they need to compete at the highest level, which is the World Championships. And I love to see the journey starting from their own region, which is South America, because a lot of the times, sometimes South America has been counted out in the past. We look at Europe, they have had a lot of, you know, results there too, but we no longer should be counting out these South American players because there's a lot of dominance here. But it was back in the day when, obviously, World Cup spots were broken down into nationalities. Brazilians was, were crying out for more and more. And, then, and it was a case of, OK, we'll prove it. And they have again and again and again in South America. They have been relentless. You think about once upon a time, it was Nicholas 99. Now look how many Argentinian players there are. And PH Zin is quite possibly one of the best players in the entire world right now, winning FC Pro. And uh, he's been a pleasure to see as well. He's, he's on the Portuguese broadcast for anyone tuning in over there. But I'm sure that he has been enjoying every second of this as well because this is his own region. Two more goals have gone in since then. Dudu went 4-1 up and then there was a goal back for Edson. That's 4-2 that game now. I'll tell you what's more impressive. Seba Leone was 2-0 down against Faku Cohen. He's 3-2 up. Wow, he's done the comeback there. And that's in the second half, that 56 minutes on the clock. To the esports matchup, I actually was speaking to Fair in the back, where the, in the players' lounge, and they were having some sort of discussions because they had to play against each other. They did not plan this at all. And also our main stage matchup. There's also been a goal back there as well. That's 5-4 now. Bordeaux is in front. 
That match certainly a lot more tight. We're going to stay with this one for the moment, though. Furlong Mendy goes up for a goal kick in the end. Let's jump across if we can. Back to our main featured stage match. Wow, Suddenly, this, game this is a game. Even more tightly contested. 5-4. Two players having debut seasons in the corner ball. We live to Zores. Clinching game, Brandon. Whoever wins here actually makes it to tomorrow. You win, two, you know, you win this game. You just got to win two more games tomorrow. I know they're quarterfinals. I know they're semi-finals. You make it sound easy. I know. <laughs> if you win two games, just win two games. Your season. Two stressful and, games and, and of FC Twenty Four. Changes like changes everything. But as you see, look some at of that the ball going through. They're going to have, have to go against the likes of Resende, Giuliano, Nathan SR, Gerig. It's not going to be easy. Especially Resende. I don't want to play Especially against Resende. him. Especially Resende. Look at the dink to Haaland. There's the flick on. Oh, There's Mateus all the time in the world. Five, five. Look at Key. Look at the motion. Who's he pointing at? There's a group of them in there roaring him on. What a moment, what a moment to come back. He's done the comeback, it's 5-5 now. He has to stay composed. The game is not over. Baldo is a really good player. And I mean, anything could happen in FC 24 now. You can see the dink here from Haaland into Alexia, and then it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. Any, I mean, with her, you can just shoot any post and they'll go in. He didn't even need to go in time. Well, what you see there is you see Virgil van Dijk get isolated and then he's out of the game. And it's whoever's his plus one for the evening that's going to try and stop him, whether that be Ruben Diaz or a hero. Just open up so much space in the middle. 5-5 five, five between these two. 15 minutes left to be played. There's going to be some light-minute drama and some got Alexia. huge reactions. Yep. Pateas in a running race. Once again. Pulled away, no Virgil van Dijk inside. Ruben Diaz get around the goal, he cuts it back. Oh, oh nine! Six, he celebrated five. on his face. So composed with that extra pass as well. I think some people maybe would have tried to get around the keeper with Alexi Pateas there, but he saw the opportunity, made the extra pass. No goalkeeper in sight. We have to remember as well that Baldo had a two-goal lead. That, it's, it's gone. With the celebration on the, in the stands, <laughs> a camera actually fell off. <laughs> One of the cameras in the stands. Wow, I mean, Givares has actually done it. He's actually came back for the 6-5, and he turned, what, an 80% goal into a 100% goal with R9, with the cutback. Look what it means. This, this Look might, at the celebration. This might be the only time where I've seen a crowd cause problems from celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> All they're doing is celebrating. The you can see it at the bottom of our screen there. You can see the admin. I hate whoever's, whoever's knocked that camera off. I don't want to see what the invoice is. <laughs> I don't want to see what that invoice is. Uh, but they're so passionate over here in Brazil. It's lovely to see. I can't imagine what it's going to be like tomorrow. If today is like this, the scenes, tomorrow's vibes are about to be insane. Especially when you've got different nationalities in there as well, just shaking things up, such as Argentina. I mean, we saw Giuliano, the Argentinian, actually make it to tomorrow. We have Seba Luoni and Paco Cohen playing against each other. I mean, wow. That's 3-3, three, three, by the way. Fonseca 4-3, Brandon oh and Casey. Oh my days. From 3-0 up to 4-3 down. I mean, if, if there's a, a place and a, a spot to get young into, it's this. You can oh. see Ronaldinho get introduced into the game. I don't know where to look. You've got some unbelievable games taking place. Definitely only 3-3 against Faku Cohen. Young 4-3 down after a 3-0 lead. If we can, Sebele only Faku Cohen can be checking there quickly. There's only 18 minutes left in the game. We just saw Young shaking his head there, so I don't think that he is liking how the likes of this game is playing out for him. I he hasn't been in this situation in this competition yet, and he needs to maybe shift up what he's been doing to date. Well, you know, actually, I was talking to Gavi Go, Young's coach, and he had told me that this was Fonseca's first land event. And Young has actually been here before, so you never know what to expect for those first timers. I mean, you have Guy Barras here going 6 5 in a qualification game. You have Fonseca going up 4 3 against Young in a qualification game. I mean, these first timers, you might have to keep an eye on them if they actually make it to tomorrow. In the nice way, it's the first time they've played outside of their game and set up their bedroom, and they're playing in this environment. And none of them are 
None of them are face. No, they rose to the occasion. They were ready for it. The lights are in, are in their faces. The fans are screaming. It's rowdy. And uh, they are not playing into any of the pressure. They're looking good. They are loving it here in Sao Paulo. Gavaros looking to conclude the game now against Baldo, maybe with this! Oh my God, look at him! And he may have just this done exactly that, 7-5! This is what we live for, this is what we live for. On our main the stage match, so that's seven goals in two games as well for him. Seven in the last one, seven in this one. He definitely does not have a problem scoring goals. It's just how many goals he could concede. He does not, but it is important to note that Baldo will not be out if he does in fact lose this game. He will have one more opportunity to possibly get one more win to move on to tomorrow's championship day. But we do have a replay here for Gui Barrios. Easy shot with R9, fantastic celebration. <laughs> it's almost as if I love it. he knows he deserves his spot. I love it. By look on his face. I love it. Just like, look at me, look at me, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here and I'm causing problems. He told me yesterday in the hotel that he was actually very excited to get going. And I mean, look at him in the biggest stage. Big win against Sevaluani and now big win versus Valdo. It's just the adrenaline, isn't it? There's been an even bigger goal as well in the other game. I think Fonseca has just scored again against wow. Young, which would make it five goals to three. And would put Young down into a, uh, a knockout bracket matchup. He will not be going through as of yet. Towards the back post it goes, two hands on it. Let's see if we can jump across either before or after the full-time whistle here. It looks like we are seeing Gabarros. We might see another one here. On through to tomorrow's knockout stages. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm him. I think he's saying I'm him. He did live in Houston for the first 13 years of his life, so he does know English, and I'm pretty sure he was saying I'm him. <laughs> or I'm here. I love the confidence. What a turner, what a sequence of events here in that in that main stage game. Good news, the camera didn't get knocked over this time. <laughs> <laughs> There's three people standing around the camera. <laughs> There's three security guards right there covering the camera now. Big, big goals and big, big storylines unfolding here. In day one off Sao Paulo. Wow, I mean, Guy has actually done the impossible. Everybody counted him out of that group. And he's, what, standing high, standing high, making it through the winner's bracket. What a player he is. It's not going to be enough time to pull three goals back. Oh, my God. Red Although, time, first post. Has got a second chance, though. Obviously, we're still waiting to find out the winner of Seven Leone, Faku Cohen. That's 3-3 three, three still as it currently stands. 82 minutes on the clock in that game. But for Gavaros, welcome to the Condor Boy Libertadores, my friend. You are in to Championship Sunday. The fifth spot finds its way to him. Last kick of the game. Big reaction, I can assure you. Go, Barros, congratulations. You are on your way to a top eight finish. For Baldo, it's back to the drawing board, but he's still got a second chance. He does. He still has a second chance, and I've been so, so impressed with Guy Barros. Well, Brandon, actually, um, I think I'm going to have a word with Guy. I'll, I'll, I'll catch you guys in a little bit, okay? We'll see you in a bit, perhaps. He's going to be speaking to that man who must be over the moon. Gabaros in the top eight here. I mean, what's happened here, Casey? What Six has three. Happened here? If you would have told me this was the scoreline in the 12th minute, I would have looked at you like, yeah, you don't know anything about FC. You don't, you don't know what you're talking about. Sounds, Insanity. It sounds ludicrous, but going up that early with that many goals, it's actually a bit dangerous. It is. Because you don't know what to do. 12 minutes up, you're 3-0 up. You don't really know how to try and play out the rest of the game. We jump across here. We may have just seen a massive winner from Semeleone of Argentina. I think he's just gone 4-3 up. He was 2-0 down against Faku Cohen. And he's just scored an 88th minute potential winner. What a round. Wow. I mean, I did not anticipate the fact that Faku Cohen would be going out at this stage of the competition. Well, as we said, Fonseca looks like he's 
winning this game against Young. But you're right to say, Casey, during the lap, no one would have expected this. Absolutely no one. And I think, again, I just think that Young became complacent. He maybe sat back a little bit and he just wasn't ready for the mentality that Fonseca came in here. He didn't give up. And that's very, very important, especially with the nine and a halves. You have plenty of time to get back. Three, even three goals, you can do it. Well, look, in the nicest way possible, it's the new kids on the block that are causing problems. Two of them are on their way to a top eight, and they're making it difficult for the household names here in South America to be amongst Championship Sunday. It'll be for second that goes through. Gavaros is also there as well. Four becomes six, and that is a huge, huge result. And a great performance of just the mental side of FC Pro. I mean, look. It was 3-0 down in 13 minutes. Anyone, anyone who could picture that in that moment. Not for him, though. Not for him. And I think that it's, I'm very interested to see how this next round is going to go for Young. Going from a game where you win 6-1, so many goals, didn't really have to try, made it look easy, to this one, which is arguably very, very frustrating for Young. And he's going to come back here with that next opportunity and, and possibly get the win. Or he could be leaving us after a first round 6-1 victory. Insane. We're going to see this match here end, and then that is the round done. This is elimination, and it looks like Faku Cohen is on his way out of the corner ball he lived to the Torres. Such a, a bright prospect from Argentina. Went 5-0 and oh back in the FC Pro in the late stages of last year. Is he on for an equaliser? Maybe so, Mbappe does get deflected, just about stays in. He's the offside Bellingham. Oh, he is. That's a killer there. For Faku Cohen, and unfortunately, a tournament to forget. Yeah, I do think that there's very different, we talked about it a lot, styles of plays between the FC Pro Open play and the South American. And sometimes the way in which you play works, and sometimes it doesn't. And which is, I think that's why he did so well, because a lot of people don't anticipate the constant attacking pressure from the South Americans. But here, everyone's doing it. Any time of two minutes, and it looks like Zeba Leone, after a top eight finish last year, in Buenos Aires, will remain in the competition against his teammate and fellow countryman, the defending Argentinian LPF champion, has just come from a really, really horrible game. You can see between the two of them, they do not want to celebrate. And for Faku Cohen, he is devastated. That was his. That was his season, Casey. That was, and also against his teammate as well. So it hurts that much more. That pitch up tells you all you need to know about what this competition means to these players here. Faku Cohen, be proud of what you've done this season still. You have written a name for yourself in this FC Pro scene. It's going to struggle, it's going to hurt. But he'll be back again for next season. Zeba Leone just about remains in the competition, but he's still not qualified yet. No, he still has one more win to go. It honestly can go any way at this point. But I think that is a massive win over Faku Cohen, who a lot of people anticipated would probably make it to Championship Sunday. Absolutely. I think you're right to say as well, just this, this pressure cooker that a lot of players are finding themselves in here in South America of you've just got to deal with all these attacking threats that are being thrown at you. It's so offensive, the style here in South America. It is goal, 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 goal. The headline news, as we said, Faku Cohen is out of the competition. Young loses. 6-3 after being 3-0 up in the game. And uh, it's the new kids on the block that have qualified to tomorrow's knockout stages. Gavaros, massive win for him uh, and for Faseca. I mean, that's probably going to be the game of his career. 3-0 down, wins it, qualifies for tomorrow. I mean, it goes down in the history books. The mentality that you need to come back after a 3-0 deficit to win it by that margin as well, so fantastic, especially against a player like Young, who's been dominating this entire year. So, so good, so, so impressive. I believe we are going to jump to an interview in a second, but we're going to look at highlights first of what we have just missed from that round. I mean, where do we start? We'll start here with... Uh, Gabarros, 5-3 down he was. Let's remember that. 5-3 down, came back to 5-5, composure there for the one more pass. A lot of players often panic in those scenarios. He didn't. Then it became 7-5. And before you know it, it was job done. And this is how the bracket will look after we see these highlights. Here we have Young versus Fonseca, who will see the three goals here very quickly. 
for Young. And again, we all thought that this game was done and dusted, but that is not how it ended up going for Young there. But we will jump over. And here is Group C. Brandon, break this one down for us. What are we looking at? Absolutely. Well, the headline news is we've just confirmed another player through to Championship Sunday. Fasekia is through, and unfortunately, Edson is out of the competition. Over in bracket D, the player we say goodbye to over there, unfortunately, is Faku Cohen, 4-3 defeat, conceding the 88th minute to his fellow countryman and teammate. And it is uh, Gabaros that is into tomorrow's knockout stages there. We've been speaking about this round. There's someone who was commentating with us who is now speaking with Gabaros. Pablo, how is he feeling? He's into Championship Sunday. Hey, guys. Hey guys, I'm here with Guy Barros, the man, the myth, the legend. I mean, you just said, you just saw the celebration there. Well, how, what did it feel? How, I mean, this is the biggest moment of your career. Everybody counted you out, but now you're back on top and you're in the winner bracket final tomorrow. Um, yeah, it feels great. I mean, it was a tough game. After going down 5-2, I thought I was going to lose it, but managed to work my way back and make a good comeback. I mean, 5-2 down. What did you tell your coach at that moment? I said, I don't think I got this. And he looked at me, he was like, no, just one goal at a time, keep your head. That's what I did. As soon as I got the first one back, I knew it was going to be all good. So, I mean, your coach tell you that you were down 5-2 and you don't worry about it. You score a goal. You ended up winning the game 8-5. What did you change exactly in order to make the comeback? Um, just the mindset. I think the tactics were the same. Uh, just trying to doubt myself a little bit when I was 5-2 down. And then as soon as I get back into the game, I just knew I, I was playing better. I was doing better. And uh, just taking my chances, that was it. Yeah, I mean, that's key battles for you. The winner bracket finalist. I mean, tomorrow, this is your first LAN event. How does it feel to be here in Sao Paulo, Brazil, competing in the biggest South America tournament? I mean, it's crazy, especially being from Brazil, getting to play in your home country. It's, it's an incredible feeling. You got your fans, you got friends, everybody watching. It's just, it's amazing. And tomorrow, you know, try to do my best and get a World Cup spot and maybe a trophy. I don't know. What would it mean for you to make a World Cup spot? Like, uh, coming from you? Everything. I mean, it's a dream come true. I think everybody that's here, that's what we're aiming for. Uh, to make a World Cup is the absolute pinnacle of the esport that we play. So. I just hope I get to do it probably this year. This year, I mean, you ha you do have a chance tomorrow. Tomorrow he will be playing in the winner's bracket uh, fight. I mean, you could go in all the way through the winner's bracket. You still have a chance to make it to the lower bracket tomorrow. However, you could catch all the action tomorrow. Fergie, Barros, Barros, thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. We're going to go into a quick break. I'll catch you guys in the next one.
Welcome back to the Carnival E Libertadores for the final time today here on Saturday. The group stages. Tomorrow we come back again for the knockouts and it's been loud, it's been a little bit noisy today and I've found the culprit. Here we go. Can't help himself. <laughs> That's nice, it's good. Yeah. We'll play with them later while the games are on. Um, it's been unbelievable, I've got to say. The atmosphere in this arena, I really hope it's coming through to you at home. It is electric. Yep. Um, just the sheer passion, the sheer emotion from some of the family members, from some of the fans, it is incredible. We can have a look at the bracket as it currently stands right now and see how things are starting to take shape. This is Group C and maybe one of the biggest shocks of the day so far, Young losing out after looking impenetrable in the yep. opening match against Edson to Fonseca. He now takes on Dudu in a qualifying match. Yep, qualify and an elimination game. Young was 3-0 yep. up against Fonseca. He was 3-0 up in 15 minutes. Fonseca scored it? six. Did he vote? Oh, it's harsh because I feel like the there, was, there was still a long way to go in that game. But Gibalas turned around his game as well, winning 8-5 against Baldo. He was losing 5-2 as well. Again. Yeah, the all-Argentine game as yeah. well, which I'll keep in my own on Facu Cohen versus Sebelioni. A lot of mutual respect there as well, both representing Tuzzi Esports. They came in today with a handful of players. Potentially, they're going to get two uh, maximum, maximum yeah. players through into the knockouts. Well, I hear you asking at home, where is the featured game? Who are we going to be focusing on for the final time today? I can reveal the featured match to you right now. We talked about it. We mentioned Young. We mentioned what he's got to do. Yep. How does he bounce back? He's taking on Dudu in our featured game here in the lower bracket fine. This is a huge game, of course, not to mention what's on the line, but I feel as if the trajectory Young's been going on this season, it seems he's been coming on leaps and bounds. He's showing his levels as the tournaments go on, as the year progresses. For him, being 3-0 up and losing 6-3... I think they're underway. ...is a massive, massive upset. They are. We're, we're basically ready to go into it. So we're going to jump straight in. We already missed a minute. We don't miss we're not going to miss a goal that quick. Yeah, they're not hanging about. They, they want to jump straight, straight in. into it. Exactly. Yeah. Dudu, a runner-up as well. Richard, in the previous E-Libertadores in 2021. Young finishing top four as his highest, highest in this tournament. Dudu on the attack. And it's just the perfect start for Dudu against Young. He's got a hefty amount of support the far side of the arena from us. I was going to ask you, do you think that he's got into this game, especially from Young's POV, a little bit too quick? You take your time. <laughs> he, he wants to rectify. And I feel like you have to look at it. There's, there's players coming in on different perspectives in this situation. Yep. Dudu won his previous game against Ezen. He won 6-3, of course, in an elimination game. Whereas Young was in the winner bracket, or the upper bracket, losing that game. So it's different sides and different types, um, shapes of mentality coming into this game. I'm very surprised. I mean, it took us by off guard. It took production by off guard. We didn't expect to get into this yep. game so fast. We had more things to show you. <laughs> yeah. But they just got kicked off straight away. And Young, he finds himself 1-0 down against Dudu here. I said in Young's first game, just the way he plays, he, he sort of falls into the the mindset of genuinely attack is better than defend. Genuinely, he just wants to score goals, irrespective of the minute of the game, the scoreline. De Bruyne into Mbappe. Good Ooh. save from Alisson. You can see the face cams at the bottom of the screen there as well. Yeah, corner as well. Dudu, we've seen Erling Haaland be extremely fruitful today from these goal scoring opportunities. Will he be selected? That is the question. Selected him, Allen. back post. Back post, it's almost going to keep us that one. Allison gets a little bit of contact as well on his way down, but he won't mind one bit. It, it's so fascinating how FC Esports can change with the snap of the fingers. We were just sat five, six yards away from the commentary position, watching all the games in the last round. And I said the sentence, I think we might be on for a young Resende final. I yep. think young... First game, 6-1 win, he was 3-0 up at point. Like, he was he were, he were in a great position. I was casting very similar sort of thoughts of what I had of Resende earlier. That was the opening goal, if he did miss it. Quick fire start from Dudu, back on the way with the live footage now. But the, the way that this has now turned, and he faces an elimination game, yes, it's a qualifying match as well, but if you lose this, your tournament's over. And Dudu is oh all goodness. over him. Harland on the strike. Ooh, corner. 
Oh, no, I'm winning the header there. The aerial plus play style coming into effect. There's another corner played short from you Dudu. You don't want Haaland off the corner. Nice. Nah, it's, uh, it's the wrong person to have. Look at the triggered run there that he's played. And the decoy. Step overs. Van Dijk steps in. Turns it over. R9 onside. Wow. Dudu off his feet. And this has been a quick fire start for the ages. Blistering start there from Dudu. A slice of fortune. The ball fell to him perfectly in the box. We have to make that count. And he did in that situation. Young, contrary to the other games, he starts off losing the first time today. If you're Tuzzy Esports, Young was the banker. Yeah. Young was the one that doesn't fail. He was the one that... He, he was the guarantee to go through. And now he finds himself 2-0 down. The other match that is going to be underway very, very shortly indeed is between Baldo and Sevaloy. And that game will be kicking off very, very shortly indeed. Another qualifying matchup. However, the pitfalls, if you do lose, unfortunately mean your tournament is over. Dudu coming forward once again. So much space. He's got the entire of Brazil to run into. And he's making oh my Sao Paulo his home oh. right now. Young, Young taking the headset off. Slaps in his chair. He's dejected. Oh. Is he defeated already? I'm We've only played 15 minutes. I'm lost for words. That pause has to come in. He has to, he has to pause it. Something's gone wrong here mentally. I don't this know. It's where the coach earns his money. Yep, literally. This is where the moment. This is poof. Wow. We're used to seeing Young go 3 0 up early on. He's 3 0 down. Too quick. Did he get into the game too quick? I think there's something in that. Uh, it's difficult to say because when you're in that situation from playing in previous times, you kind of want to rectify your losses as soon as possible. And for him, Dudu, again, coming off of a victory in his last game, it's just everything just working in his favour. The space that Young is giving is, is crazy. And, and this is the other game going on in Group D. One player qualifies, one player gets eliminated. For next shot Ooh. off the post there from... Baldo up against Seba, Luo Seba Luone, who just defeated his fellow countrymen in Fakuko in last minute as well. And Baldo's in a very similar situation to Young as well. The, the game was there, he was leading for a while, and his opponent on that occasion, Guy Barrios, came back into the match. And yeah. <laughs> I think it was six goals yeah. without a response. Guy Barrios just turned the game on its head. Chance for Seba Luone. Power shot, fake into Haaland, near post. No backlift, no need to worry, because Erling Haaland will fire Sebeloyoni into a one-goal lead after about six minutes of FC. Let's get back to our feature game, because I am fascinated, truly, to see what is happening with Young. Is he answering back into the game, or is it going from bad to worse? And we Wait. join it oh. as is oh. it is four oh goals goodness. to nil. Woo. There is a selection of fans, I think you mentioned them earlier, on the far right-hand side yep. of the arena. Elated. They are losing their minds right now. Young, this is... A, is it fair to say, Richard? Obviously, there's still time left. There's 70 minutes left. It's a... It's, I'm honestly lost for words. It's capitulation. If you're doo-doo right now, you are thinking, I've got him in a strangle. Smell, Let's just smell blood. Just keep, keep on going. The foot keep on, on going. the pressure. This is unbelievable. What a start from Every time he attacks, he scores. Exactly. But the thing, this is what I'm saying though, I didn't get to speak too much about it because the goal went in at the time I was mentioning it. Young, no matter the scoreline, no matter the moment in the game, he feels susceptible to concede. Yeah. It's weird, he's old. He might score six, but he's conceding but he's gonna 14. Concede. This is, yeah, he concedes <laughs> goals. But this is, for me, this is a major, major shock. Again, just look at the space. He's committed a fullback in Mendy upwards, but he wasn't punished that time. He the, needs to get the next goal. The problem is, you go 4 all down in 20 minutes. What do you do? The, the games are so long now with nine minute halves that if you throw bodies forward, it could turn into a cricket score. Yeah. We saw some of the qualifying results. I saw a 21 9 <laughs> at one point and a 17 8. At like absurd score lines, but Back post. that's what it this attracts to you. Patea's oh near post. Goodness. He slid in as well. It could have been a penalty. I've been in situations like this in, when competing, being down 4 0, I've, I've come back. It's just difficult. The mentality it takes. Is, is tough. We were just talking about your results um, what, five years ago now, yeah, I think years, it was. Years gone by. In the Gfinity Arena, where you were... 4-0 down. What, were it 4-5? Yeah, losing. And you came back into it. Young needs something to hold on to now. It's just a confidence boost. Getting one, obviously, one, is, he's still down by three, but yeah. it just shows that he's he's penetrable. You can still push forward and, oh, that extra pass in the this box. Hey, want it back? 
Ruben Diaz. That's what you need. Just that little bit of luck, a little bit of content, confidence just to boost you. And Young gets the goal back in this game now. He's still losing four goals to one. But that could shift the tide in his favour mentally. And it also just puts that seed yep, of doubt. It's not doubt. even been watered yet. Exactly. It's just yep, been yep. planted. A little bit of compost around it. And it's there. Yep. Starting to embed in the mind of Dudu. And also he's thinking, I can't bottle this. Exactly. I That's what I was just about to say. I've been in situations before when we're leading comfortably early on in the game. When you're already looking to, to tomorrow. Yeah. I'm not even thinking about think this about game. The game's not in my head. It's over. The, the social media post going up saying into the, into the <laughs> knockouts. I'm Thanks to all my fans. What emoji do I put here? I'm ready to tell my mum, texting her that I've won my game already. Before you know it, it's 4-3. You can watch me in action at 2pm tomorrow in the quarterfinals. Cross in. Howard wins it. Oh, nine. Oh. My gosh. Is the pendulum just starting to swing back in Young's favour? It was 4 0 down inside 22 minutes. A pause came in, the coach stepped in, and Ruben Diaz Great potentially has started something magnificent for Young. He's green timed it, it's gone past the post. What is going on? <laughs> That's two chances in quick succession for both of these players. We have a goal in the other game. Baldo up against Semeluoni, it's a response. From Baldo plays inside Erling Haaland. It's oh, oh <laughs> inside of the post. We don't see the goals until the, they come into us. Yeah, the keeper has had a howler, but it's a perfect way back in. But you'd have tempered your voice a little bit <laughs> when you saw Haaland taking the volley. Speaking of Haaland, look at the run. Oh, it's intercepted there from. Things are just starting to fall back into Young's favour. The little 50-50s, the interceptions are going. The Tuzzy East box man's favour. Mbappe in the box. Allison can't pick it up and just decides to dink out in the end. But the pressure yeah. will continue. That's a strange little dink there. Could have lost possession easily, but Duda remains in control of the ball. Ten minutes or so left to go until half time. It's been a, a great start for him. It would say the game's sort of slipping away from him slightly in the last five to ten minutes in game time. Yeah, but just the 50 50s are yeah. falling back in Young's favour. The pendulum swung. It's not swung fully, but it's just starting to chime. However, one goal. One goal is genuinely squashes alarm any bells. sort of momentum as well. Yeah. If Dudu scores it, because oh, Young. Oh, oh, of course, yeah. Such a it's a kidney blow. De Bruyne, edge of the box, Bellingham, Haaland, <laughs> left foot. Good save from Allison. Creating, and that's what he needs to do. We've seen him score corners as well today. Erling Haaland near post. This could be it. Oh, it's green it's, as that's well. Just off the inside of the post, or was it? Off the post. Yeah, just off the inside. A player lock. For Dudu to spam the counter-attack and Mbappe with the pace. Gets past Jude Bellingham. Or does he? Does just about enough to keep possession. A good corner. It's got to be said when we look back. Could that be... If that's 4-2, you go into half-time, only trailing two goals. And the one thing that we can guarantee, there is... We said it once, we'll say it again. A whole load of Tuzzy Esports fans in this building. Yep. If Young gets one more goal, oh, they start the to believe. Be roaring. Yeah, absolutely. So they've got a part to play in all this as well, as they have all day long here in the centre of Sao Paulo. It's the baking heat, and Dudu right now is cooking as Van Dyke makes a good block. Important block. Good goalkeeper movement as well there from Young, anticipating the shot across goal. They're still finesse. Oh, oh. that's beautiful. Oh my goodness, deserved the goal. The head is a manual this year, so we aimed it just on the outside of the post. That ball there, Richard, is outstanding. We're going to be seeing a replay between Baldo and Sebeluoni. We left it. And it's going to be Sebeluoni on the attack here. Well worked hard and step over in the box. Fired into the near post, and that was the goal to equalise. Mbappe with the player lock over the top. Hernandez, the defender who's been given the question. Alisson doesn't fancy it, and it's... Gonna be a corner, he's been dangerous so far. Went direct on the last one, short is the route this time around. Haaland bundled off it by Lucio. And that will do us for the first half of action here. Young one, Dudu four. However, the tail isn't simply the scoreline. Young was trailing by four goals to nil inside 20 minutes. In the second half of the first half. Yep. He looked much better, he of looked course, a little yeah. bit more composed, and he's starting to get back into this game. The other match you can see right now, Baldo versus Seba Leone. That is currently underway with just under 10 minutes left to go before half-time. As Baldo from left to right, it's yellow and black strip, all in red. From right to left will be Seba Leone from Argentina. Mbappe. Great. Burst into the space. Good save, though, again. 
That's the speed we should get with Mbappe. It makes him dangerous in the attacking third. A corner though for Baldo. Going to be whipped into the box. De Bruyne over it. Let's look at Erling Haaland controlled manually there. It's gone to the back post. Ooh, back to De Bruyne. Have another goal. Crosses in again. Hernandez gets uh -oh. up. All his fast. Potatoes! Good wow. save from Allison. Allison was down for a while there. I thought it was almost a guaranteed goal. Corner two be played in. Haaland lurking in a dangerous area to the near post. Nothing on this occasion. Nothing came from the corner, but things are happening in the commentary booth as it's my privilege to welcome Casey back in for the final time today. A couple of really interesting games to, to round out the group standings here of the Conor Ellipsidores. Get your opinion of it just after this attack comes in from Baldo. Mbappe to the back post, but it's going to run too far for a direct shot. Let's see how this does wind up, nothing coming of it, I don't think. Have I spoken too early? Potentially, Onya Patel, keeper comes off the line. Jude Bellingham waiting. We've had enough of that. Let's get back to the <laughs> featured game. Casey, okay, so what have you thought of the two games so far? Yeah, I mean, I mean, biggest thing here, shocking that Young is going into this game 4-1 down. I do think there's plenty of time left to be played, but the fact that Young is in this position after starting off so strong is insane. In, in terms of the other game, very, very end-to-end. -end. I know that Seba Leone scored first, Baldo scored two, and then Seba's back. So, like, anyone can possibly take that one. They are both very evenly matched from end-to-end. -end. And uh, I don't know, but this this young versus Dudu game, don't know what to make of it. It's been a, a blistering start for Dudu. Young on the attack here. Play a walk. Goal. Mbappe, goal. Back in the game. The coach is getting in That's there. He He's up that. for it. 4-2, game well and truly back on. Yep, I was just about to mention something I realised. Young, before scoring the first goal in this game, conceded 10 without response across the two games. Obviously, the game against Fonseca, he's leading 3-0, conceded 6 without response. This game as well, 4-0 down in the first 20. But now these two are all important goals, coming at key moments as well, just after half-time, can give him that belief, that boost of confidence. We saw how much it meant to the coach as well, Casey. He knows if he can just keep on going and keep on pushing forward, he's right back into this game. Yeah, I think that as a coach of Young, you need to know that he has competed at the top level and he has what it takes to come back from a deficit like this. He's competed at the FC Pro Open and done very, very well. Competed against some of the best. And I'm definitely not counting him out here in the 51st minute. It's fallen, it's fallen to him. Could have been a perfect chance or perfect way to get back into it. Pause is cued by Dudu. He's noticed something that's not working perfectly. I think for Dudu, irrespective of how the game's going now, he still needs to keep on going forward, Casey. If he starts to rest on his laurels thinking that the two-goal lead is safe, that's where he'll get punished. Safe is definitely not the word I would think of in this situation. Especially against Young. Especially against Young, who will continue to push forward relentlessly. And so if I'm Dudu, I need to keep all of my concentration and composure in this match. It's hard to say the Nundo in. Oh, that could have been a penalty. That Fields. would have been a penalty. It's a mistimed tackle. Didn't connect onto Jude Bellingham. Young would have been sort of hoping that if it didn't lead to a chance, at least a, a penalty. You, you got to look at Young as well, the way that he's playing it. He feels as though he's well and truly back in this game and probably the favourite from here to go on and win. It sounds crazy to say that he's trailing by two goals, but just the level of experience, the level of competition that he has had in the past, even six months, the FC Pro Open, the best players on the planet converging. He was part of that crew as he comes forward yet again here. Rando Nazario out wide, Pateas just trying to force it through the gap there was Young and Dudu, I mean, he's not registered anything in the second half. He's not registered a glove yep. on Young. It's been one way he's got to show. He's got to respect him. He's lost respect right now, mm -hmm. has Young. He, he needs to lay something back, whether it's a shot on target, whether it's a little bit of possession play, as he's doing now. Just giving him the fear and, and making him think he still has to defend. He yeah. can't just go, through, go for it and not be susceptible to be counted on as well. And these are the moments, Dudu needs to make it count. As you said, it's not even necessarily just scoring, because obviously you can't score every attack you have. It's just the fear factor and just making him it's sort of it. overthink. Mbappe, great That's shot. It. Three goal cushion reinstated. After a 15 minute spell from half time to the hour, he never looked in the game. Yeah, it did feel like momentum was shifting a bit towards Young after halftime here, but 
I think that Dudu stopped that momentum, and he's about to shift this game on his head. It's not to say that Young is not out of the game, because there's plenty of time left to be played, but uh, a cushion like that, Dudu has to be feeling much better, especially against an attacking player like Young. Yep, exactly. That's the replay. If you want to see it again, just a driven pass into Mbappe, a turn and a roof into the top of the net to restore the three-goal lead. Do you think he can still get back into this game? There's still time? There is still time. There is yep. still time, but I think he probably concedes another couple, does Young, because of the way that he's going to be pushing on and continuing to push the agenda, you've got to say. This is the other match that's taking place right now. Bolo versus Seba Leone, an all Tuzzy Esports affair. At least one player will be going through from Tuzzy Esports. However, they would have expected four or five, given the sheer amount of bodies that they had present at the Conmore Elam Tadores 2024. They obviously won it last year with Bashada, a crowning moment. Two players, three players in fact, apologies, at the FC Pro Open Finals with Faku Cohen, Young and Happy. That is one thing that I like about Tuzi Esports is that they take players from all over the world to kind of compile an army to bring to competitions like this, and it's great to see. Back on board with our featured matchup here. Young versus Dudu, Mbappe, edge of the box. Lucio stands him down, but the ball doesn't clear. A couple of step overs from the Parisian. Potentially just one hill too many for Young. The start was just too poor. Conceding four goals in 20 minutes. It would have had to be a miracle, Ryan. I don't know if it's going to come true for him. He still has time. He just needs to make sure that if there is a next goal, it has to fall in his favour. He gets possession back there. Turn from Haaland. A bit of a heavy touch. Mbappe makes the run off the ball. Look, Haaland back post. Teo Hernandez comes across. Ball all scooped in. Haaland just way too much on it. He's looking for the right opportunities, but it's just not quite clicking for him here. If you're Dudu in that situation as well, Ryan, it's just small wins, right? Mm -hmm. You can see even that's the, another attack that he's yeah, lost. Exactly. Even the crowd they celebrated just that the possession switch back in Dudu's favour. Oh no. Ooh. Bit dangerous that. Possession given away. We're going to go back into our other game, though. There was a roar and there was a goal falling on the favour of Seba Luoni. Whipped in, headed across with Erlen Haaland. A little bit of a, a keepy up in session there with Alexia Pateas in the box, but she finds the back of the net. Goalkeeper taking out the equation. A little bit of movement, moved the wrong way, and it was always going to be an easy finish on that particular occasion. Chance for Dudu, 27 to come forward again. It's a crunching tackle from Ruben Diaz. And Possession will be turned over. He's got to be aggressive. He's got to be fearless here. Young, if he wants to turn this game around. Three Space. goals in 20 minutes. He's doable. This has got to go in, oh, yeah. and it will go in. 5-3. Wow. I mean, it's deflected right off of Allison as well. It's got to hurt to concede a goal like that, but that it's solidifying the fact that this might not be swinging the way of Young. Not over yet, Ryan Pessoa. It's a big goal. You take a look at the replay as well. Young building up, a threaded pass in. A great time. save. It's just unfortunate that it's just fallen back into the net. But again, Young won't complain. 5-3. He's just down by two. And we always say, Richard and, and Casey, two goal leads, as cliche as it sounds, the most dangerous to have in FC24. Especially when you play nine minute halves. Yeah, and especially when you're at the stakes are, are this high. Nerves. And you've got a hundred. <laughs> your friends and family yeah. preying on your opponent's downfall and praying that you can pull something out of the bag that would simply blow the roof off of the arena here in the heart of Sao Paulo, Brazil. You're watching the Conmebol e Libertadores Grand Finals. Today, the group stage. Tomorrow, the knockouts. We have six players already confirmed, locked and loaded to come back tomorrow. We've got to find the final two to round out the top eight. 
over the next 10 minutes. Eternal glory waits, potentially for one of these two players. Who will snatch it? Let's find out. Oh, that's great control sprint down the line. Just went off the pitch there from Dudu. Young gets possession back. 15 minutes to go, Casey. Yeah, I so I was just watching the player cams there. I would have loved to have heard the audio of both our coaches because they're both so intently. <gasps> oh, fantastic opportunity there, Allison just diverted it, but we do have a corner here for Young. But yeah, like I was saying, they were so intently listening to their coaches, yeah. and I would have loved to have heard what they were saying, because you could tell that they both have so much trust in both of them, and obviously both probably had very different tactics going into this latter half of the game. But at this stage of the game, I think that having a coach in your corner, not everyone has, but it's very, very important. Jude Bellingham, straight Great. through the gap. Oh, it's the directness from Young. Two times there, Dudu. The save there, of course, is that's just as good as a goal. You just saw the coach on that restart from Dudu just getting into him as well. Yeah, I think he'll be telling him, you can play for the out ball. There's a clear mismatch. Erling Haaland against Frimpong. Look, he's playing it again. It's a guaranteed win. It's just about making sure that there's players around the you. seconds. Yeah, exactly. Players around you to help you keep possession. Because, you know, the constant press is going to kick in. The players are going to start surrounding your players on the ball, man marking off of the ball as well. Haaland back post, Frimpong over it. Does he decide Back to cross? Home. He does. Howland's up. Jude Bellingham does well to oh, man mark. It's a massive, massive win in the air. Good composure from Dudu just to spread their play, bring Bellingham into it, and start to potentially oh. Oh, find oh, yourself an attack. In these situations, I think it's very difficult. I know there's. It looks as if there's not a lot of time, but in nine minute halves, there's plenty. And here we go. Turn back. Sometimes it's okay to go forward. Mbappe in on goal. Ball roll around it. the keeper. It's got what to be. a tackle oh, from Van Dyke. It's got to be. Bodies on the line for Young to keep himself alive. His heart is beating, but Great he's dribbling. very, very slow right now. Looking for the killer blow is Dudu. That could have been it. Should have been it. Erling Haaland, he's just. He's a menace. He has to have in the team. He's a bully. He's Erling Haaland, and he's bullying Young oh, right now. What a save from Allison! It's not done. There is time. This attack probably has to go. He has to twist. And Jude Bellingham, an inspired substitution in at right back. Oh. Could have been a mistake. Lucio again back to the goalkeeper. Just aim for Erling Haaland. What a ball. It's going to feel instead an incredible ball. It's not done this, Casey. It is not done this, but it is slowly dwindling down here for Young. Any last hope? Ronaldinho. Gotta go now. Ronaldinho towards the byline. Borrell scoops scoop. in. Gets the better of it. Jude! <gasps> Two Game and a on. half minutes to play. Game on. Has he left it too late? It's standing room only. Here in Sao Paulo. Young, what do you have? Good sir. What a last game to watch of the day. <laughs> Remarkable. I'm gonna see, I'm, I'm nervous for both. <laughs> it was four nil down. It went to five. Dudu was leading, he was comfortable. But Young since half time, even when he was trailing by such big margins, always was staying in the game ever so slightly. Yeah. He's got about three or four minutes left in game time. That's it. He's got one attack. He's got a good attack. One, at the, I think, at the most, and he has to make it count. Young's been fruitful in front of goal throughout the E Libertadores today and this season, the FC Pro season as well. He needs a goal. They're underway. Let's get into it. Here on the main stage. Erling Haaland out wide, Dudu. What is the referee gonna give us? Is it two, two is it three? It's one. one. Oh, it doesn't have a lot of time. Time is against him. Yeah, this is it, it's done. Back, Back to, to the, the keeper, keeper. Allison will clear long, and it will clear Young out of the Cardinal Elipsadores. Dudu goes in to the top eight, and look at these scenes. Oh, this, this is unbelievable, I wish you could see it. Hopefully they can pan over. There's a section of fans, as you can see, unbelievable. Let those words do more than we could. Wow.
truly incredible emotion. Here at the Cumberland Ball E Libertadores 2024 Grand Finals. Young was one of the favourites coming into it. He will not be lifting the biggest trophy that South American FC has to offer. He is eliminated. This game is still underway. Sebaglione leading four goals to two against Baldo. However, with that Haaland knocked down, it could be five. We've got a pause in play. We can reflect on what we've just seen, Casey. Ooh. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. I think that no one would have thought that after that 6-1 victory first round for Young, that it would have ended up like this. No one would have seen it. But hats off to Dudu for being able to keep Young off and being able to defend against the pressure that we all know that Young brings. Brian, what's your take on it? Yeah, I've obviously echo everything Casey says. For Young, it's very difficult because he went through the, he won his first game. So we had two bats of the cherry to qualify for tomorrow. He ended up losing the first one after being 3-0 up. 6-3. Loses this game as well. He was 4-0 down at a point. It's a tough loss to take and I think you can see he's already just walked off. It's going to be devastating for him to bounce back from this. But for Duda, huge congratulations. Into tomorrow, into the top eight. You saw how much it means to him as well. He again lost his first game. He had to win two in a row. Backs against the wall so he showed he could do it when it matters most as well. We've still got FC left to play. Only a few minutes remaining here and the group stages to be concluded. Shocking more than anything. I think that's the only word. Yeah. You were 4 0 down inside 20 minutes. I think it's it was always chasing. It's inexcusable for him. You yeah. can't you can't do that. You yeah. can't go 4 0 down Not in that, and that. expect yourself to turn it around. I think you saw as well when he scored that the last goal he scored. He knew. He was he was he was dejected because he thought, yeah. wow. I why, have myself, I left it so yeah, late? why have I left it so late? Number one, but number two is why did I put myself in a position to have to chase that big of a margin for that long of a game against a, a level of competitor like Dudu? It's, it's going to be tough to bounce back. He almost done it, but it just yeah, wasn't enough. Just didn't have enough time left. The clock was against him, and unfortunately, his time is up. Sevilloni, the Argentine. One of these two players will be Tuzzi oh. Esports last wow. at the tournament. Sebaglione 5-2 up with eight minutes left to play. Big reaction incredible from Seba. Shot. You're a fan of the power shot. I am. Richard. We don't see it enough. Yeah. You have to, of course, you have to manually aim it, but that was aimed to perfection. Bottom corner, Casey. Jude Bellingham, five goals to two now giving Sebaluoni a comfortable lead in this last 10 minutes. Yeah, very comfortable cushion here. And it'll be nice because that'll mean that there will be two Argentines going through to Championship Sunday. Him and Juliano will be moving on forward because there was only three of them, but two out of the three are going through, potentially. It's not a bad little 66%. Uh, You're good at math. <laughs> We're going to have the opportunity after this game has finished to reflect back on what has been a remarkable day here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And this is only day one, hoisted into the box, but Alisson will always claim, as, as dominant as Haaland is, sometimes he can't jump that high. I'm still, I'm still just... I find it hard to believe what we've seen. I think we had everyone that you spoke to when you said, who do you think is going to win? Who do you think is going to be in the conversation to win? Young was first or second pick. Yeah, and it's, it's the first time I've, I've pretty much heard Brandon Smith give a prediction. In, in all the years... <laughs> he said I've Young was going to win. He said Young. Yeah. So he's at a 0% success rate. Curse. With, <laughs> the Brandon Smith curse, you don't want to be on that side of things. It's, it's unfortunate, but yeah, on a serious note, the Young, it's, it's difficult to digest him going out because of how good he is. I know Dude is incredible as well, but Young is just, from what we've it's seen this year, it's crazy. He's at a crazy, crazy level. Not only this tournament, but the wider impacts on the rest of the season. Yeah, that's what I mean. There's no other opportunity now to make the World Championships for him. So, yeah, it's a bit you're of a ahead, to follow. You're looking ahead to the remainder of the year. Yeah. It's, it's a real, it, it's a tough pill to swallow. And at this moment, he probably doesn't. It's not kicked in yet. It's just the dejection of being eliminated in the fashion that he was by a goal. And also probably realising that you didn't play as good as you wanted to. And also, again, 
linking back to the FC Pro Open, is so close because he was just right there for making yeah. it again. So that's twice. It's, obviously, this page is, is still different. He still had to go the distance from tomorrow if he still made it there. But it's still tough to, to swallow. But 71, he in on goal again. Put the cherry on top of the cake. Keeper commits. Four on around him. Six goals to two. The oh, celebration God. comes out. <laughs> Genuinely, the whole arena, silence. And he said it. He's from Argentina. He says the pressure will be on all of the Brazilians to perform. No pressure on his side, and he's shown it. Tell you what he will have tomorrow. Tulsi Esports backing him. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, considering half the arena is here supporting Tulsi Esports. Even if he is not from Brazil, I think that he still has that backing, which is very, very nice to see. I don't know. I've really enjoyed watching Seba play throughout this competition. I didn't know what to expect when he came into it, but I'm very, very pleasantly surprised. Finesse. Yeah. Oh, keeper saves it. Wouldn't have meant anything anyway. There's a corner. Couple of seconds left to be played. Sebeluoni advances into day two. The top eight players. Anyone who's gone through, huge congratulations, because it's been truly grueling to get through this group stages. All 16 players have been elite, not only in mentality, but also in performance. So for the eight players who have made it through, you have to say huge congratulations. Commiserations to the eight that have fallen at this stage. Sebelione is the final player to add his name to the knockout bracket for tomorrow. It's in touch and distance now. There's Genuinely, it's two, three games. Is it three? Two wins away. What a semi-final. Yeah, to, oh, I'm, I'm well, talking to about the to make World it. Championship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two, two wins, wins away. Within reach. Three to win it. And he will have his eyes on the prize, will Sebelione. A domestic league champion for Argentina. And when you look at what he has done and how he has played to the level that he has over the course of today um, and also even qualifying to get to this stage, a serious contender to potentially go all the way. Let's have a look at some of the best moments from that last round right now. Is this was Young and Doodoo. -Doo. It's a compilation, right? Yep, it is. It's, uh, <laughs> it's an onslaught the first 20 minutes from Doodoo. -Doo. This is goal number two as well. Graham dribbling into the box. Fortunately, he fell his way, but he made use of the opportunity, Casey, and he went 2-0 up early on. He did, early on. But it's not to say that Young didn't try to get back into it. Again, time was just not on his side. And when you start off that slow, it's a hard hill to get back up. Here that he scores again, Dudu with R9. Yep. And it just wasn't quite enough for Young. But here we have Baldo and Seba Leone, who at the beginning of this game was very, very end-to-end. -end back and forth throughout the entirety of this game. But it was Sebeleone who ended up on top for this one here. So back-to-back -back game all way to the end. Sebeleone just pulled out in the second half, showed his quality and showed that true winning mentality after trailing for numerous times in this match as well. You saw the power shot fake there. As he well. loves it. It's yeah. something that he's certainly bringing to his game. This was for me, one of the pick of the bunch, if it's the goal that I think it could be. No, it's not. The next one is the goal <laughs> that I think it could be. Um, it's the power shot from Duke Bellingham, Haaland, a menace down the byline. Oh, it's a mistake. A mistake. Ronald Nazario puts it into the back of the net. It's this goal, the one that will yeah, be the Yeah, this is your favourite. The power shot. I'll let you take it away, Rich. Go on. Yeah, just the power shot, just the snapness of it, the power shot plus animation. You can get the shot away so very quickly and the icing on top of what has been a beautiful cake. Sebelione goes through. That is what this Group C has given you. Francesca beating Young to qualify and Dudu like, once again beating Young. Let's have a look at Group D and see how that has taken shape. Guy Barrios, maybe one of the players who we didn't particularly expect to we didn't know what to expect from him. Sebelione also going through into the knockout tomorrow. Casey, it's been an unbelievable day. Do you think when you look at potentially some of those individual players, could be Guy Barrios maybe, Dudu, the confidence they've got, 
Yeah, I don't know. Going into tomorrow, a lot of players had different journeys today. And so I'm not sure what to expect going into this. I was very impressed with Guy Barrios because he came from the lower bracket and ended up winning it the quickest yeah. in terms of Group D. And so very, very impressed with him overall. I don't know about you, Ryan. What yeah. stood out for you? I'd say it has to be Resende for me. Yeah. It was seven goals scored, zero conceded. He, it's that he didn't break a sweat and he's into the top eight already. So I'm expecting a lot from him tomorrow. We also have to be impressed by Dudu. He upset the apple cat, it's going to be said, knocking out Young in this tournament. And it's my pleasure to bring Rodrigo into the English broadcast as he is joined with Dudu right now. I loved how you said Rodrigo. So I'm Rodrigo from the jumping out of the Brazilian stream into the English stream to talk to Dudu. I'm gonna talk to you guys in English, I'm gonna talk to him in Portuguese, and I'm gonna go back to you guys in English. Dudu, you got your spot into tomorrow's semi-final, quarter-final, and all that. You're still in the run for the trophy. But before the matches, when we talk to all the players, not only the English casters or the Brazilian casters, when we talk to all the players, they were the ones actually saying, Young is the one to beat. Young gonna win the whole thing. Young is the boogeyman. You took down the boogeyman. How do you feel about it? Você chegou aqui, jogou, venceu, ainda está na disputa. E quando a gente conversava com todos os jogadores, os jogadores falavam que o Yang é o bicho papão. Pro, pro rolê todo, o Yang é o bicho papão. Você foi lá, derrubou o bicho papão. E aí, qual o sentimento? Eu estou muito feliz, é, porque o Yang, para mim, é um dos jogadores de referências no cenário. Ele foi um jogador que no Pro Open se destacou muito junto com o PHzinho, então é uma referência, fez uma campanha, campanha brilhante. E ele vinha como favorito de, depois de ter uma temporada tão regular como foi a dele. E eu estou muito feliz, é um sentimento, tanto que a minha comemoração mostra muito isso. É um, ganhar dele, para mim, foi um sentimento muito bom. So he was telling me. I'm really happy about it. He, because of all his recent accomplishments, he was the one to beat for sure. I'm really happy to beat him. And my celebration was just because I'm so happy for taking down the boogeyman, o bicho papão, Young, here in the El Libertadores. Also, I have a question from the one Brandon Smith. He was saying, you play tomorrow against Pedro Rezende, he hasn't, like, no one was able to score on him at all. Like, he's unbeaten. It's your first match tomorrow. Do you have anything prepared? Os casters estavam comentando, o Brandon perguntou, amanhã você enfrenta o Rezende. Ninguém marcou no Rezende. É a sua primeira partida. Tem alguma coisa preparada, uma surpresa para enfrentar o cara que não tomou gol no campeonato ainda? É, primeiro, eu queria parabenizar ele por isso, porque não tomar nenhum gol... É, de uma competição tão difícil como essa é um, algum feito muito bom. É, mas a, a gente vai ter algo preparado para amanhã, eu vou estar pronto. E eu tenho certeza que vai ser um grande jogo. O Rezende é um cara fenomenal, tanto como pessoa, como atleta. É um cara que vem há anos é, tando, é, no cenário, ganhando conquistas. Então, acho que amanhã vai ser um grande jogo. Ele está dizendo que ele está muito feliz de jogar o Rezende. É um grande, grande desafio de não ser escorado. Eu acho que ele é o único que não foi capaz de escorar. E ele vai estar pronto amanhã. Isso é bravo. Eu vou estar pronto. É isso que o Dudu está dizendo. Ele vai estar pronto amanhã. Ele vai pensar sobre alguma estratégia para jogar contra o Rezende amanhã. E esperando o melhor. Congratulations again. Parabéns. Back to you, Richard. Thank you very much, Rodrigo. Yeah, great stuff to hear, not only from Rodrigo, but also from Dudu as well. I mean, reaction straight away. That game versus Resende is going to be an absolute firecracker. Early prediction for that one? No comment. I no can't. comment? I no cannot. Comment. Okay. I cannot. Well, let's have a look at the rest of the bracket then as well. We can start to see how these matches are going to take shape. Nathan SR will take on Seba Leone. Resende versus Dudu. Guy Barrios versus Werek and Francesco versus Juliano. You look at that bracket, the top eight, you win that, you go to the semi-finals, you get to the grand final, as you can see in big gold letters at the bottom, both finalists qualify 
to the FC Pro World Championship. That's what it's all about and the eternal glory that comes with it. You can see how tomorrow is going to take shape. Both quarterfinals taking place at the same time. Quarterfinals one and two, quarterfinals three and four, and then the semi, semi and grand final will be played individually shortly afterwards. It's been an unbelievable day here at the group. So Ryan, what have you made of it? It's been incredible. Not just the games that we've seen, but the atmosphere, the arena, the way everyone just celebrates, not even just goals. Saves from goalkeepers, corners being claimed. It's just been incredible. Casey, final thoughts before we get off today. The Brazilian passion is absolutely unmatched. So excited that they, you know, knocked down cameras and they are just here <laughs> yeah. ready to root for yeah. their players, root for their favorite players, for their country, and I love it. Absolutely, and thank you to you at home for getting involved and keeping up to date with everything that has been happening. And also a big thank you to all of our sponsors and partners who make the Carnival Ilpidores the best tournament in South America. Thank you to you guys for making this possible. It's been a truly remarkable day and this is only day one. We will be back tomorrow, same time, same place, to crown the Conmebol e Libertadores 2024 champion. From all us three here, from Pabs, from Brandon Smith, we will see you tomorrow.